This is the SCUF Team of the Major, a super team built with four of the top performers from Major 5, as voted by you, the fans. Starting things off is Simp of the Atlanta Phase. Simp had a fantastic tournament, contributing to Phase's dominant run through the winner's bracket before losing a close series to the New York Subliners in the finals. One series that's worth highlighting is Phase's winner's final matchup against Minnesota Rocker. Simp was unstoppable during the Phase sweep, especially on Search and Destroy, where he topped the lobby with 12 kills and only one death to his name. Despite failing to lift the trophy at the end of it all, FaZe enters the championship as the top seed. And with Sim firing on all cylinders, they're easily the favorites to win it all. The second member of the team of the Major is Selium of the Atlanta FaZe. Day in and day out, Selium continues to give his all, and this Major was no different. A series worth highlighting is the team's 3-1 victory over Toronto Ultra. Selium was lighting up the kill feed, dropping two 31 and 27 games across two maps of hardpoint. Heading into the championships, FaZe fans will be looking towards last season's MVP to be the difference maker as the team looks to lift the title at the end of the season. Next up is Scrap of Toronto Ultra. A frontrunner rookie of the year continues to amaze with a killer performance on home soil. On Ultra's run to a fourth place finish, Scrap showed his ability to slay out, especially in their qualifier against the LA Thieves. In their 3-1 victory, Scrap was unstoppable, dropping 30 bombs on control and both maps of hardpoint. Despite the team falling short this tournament, Scrap is going to be a household name for years to come. 
Finishing up the team of the major is the tournament MVP Hydra of the New York Subliners. After losing in the first round, the Subliners made an absolutely insane run in the lower bracket, eventually defeating Atlanta Faze in the finals. The reason? Hydra. He had one of the best single performances in CDL history, finishing the event with a ridiculous 1.3 overall KD. The series to highlight is the grand finals against Atlanta Faze. Hydra was the difference maker throughout the series, especially on Hotel Hardpoint, where Hydra went 32 and 17 to even up the series. With their second title this season, New York is a top contender heading into the championship, and a big part of that is the beast himself, Hydra. That's your Scuff Team of the Major for Major 5. So what's your name? Where are you from? I'm... I'm... I'm Max. And I'm from New York. Detroit... Rappers. This looks like the Little Mermaid. The yeah, Tridents. We're gonna go with the Trident. Miami Tridents. <laughs> Chicago Blue Huskies. I've seen this before, but I, like, I don't know what it stands for. I don't know, Air Force. <laughs> yeah, I <it's> not. <laughs> AF. Something as f right? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. All right. Los Angeles scripts. What? I don't know. LA scripts, bro. LA scripts. That is L LA, uh, California, baby, uh, West Coast. Lots of sports, lots of love. Um, just the 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 LA sports team. Yeah, that's a Boston Bulls eyes. I like that answer. The Boston Bulls eyes for sure. Boston, yeah, Boston, Boston Bulls, Bulls eyes. Boston Bulls eyes. Boston Bulls eyes. Radiation. <laughs> say like Area, for, what, area what 41. Area 41. What's the 41? Let's say Alien Place. Is that what it's called? Area I don't 41? Know. I have no idea. Is that what it's called? Area 41. <laughs> the Area 41 aliens. Yep. Uh, this one's giving me seizures. Um, San Diego seizures. What? The <clears throat> Phoenix Target. Um, the Los Angeles Purple Fighters. Uh, the goat head. Uh, Some of the farmland um, in town. Farmland goat heads. Uh, Omaha. Place, I mean, X. Box. City? Boston Crosses. I don't know. The Boston Crosses. <laughs> I guess. The Boston Crosses. <laughs> X marks a spot of uh, Houston. What are these? I've never seen these in my life. Um, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Green guys, four leaf clover, but I don't know. It's like Dallas. It's Dallas Stars of some sort, right? Half Stars. Uh, I already said I already say Baltimore. Why am I? Why is that the only city I know? Um, <laughs> let's say. You can go states if you want. Oh, okay, okay. Iowa. Rangers. Um, that's a hard one. It's very hard. Um, the Las Vegas yeah. Casino Players. 
um, it must be Flor Orlando, the, the ovals. I'm gonna make it up. I'm gonna say <laughs> Chicago roosters. It's a squirrel. Squirrel of Scranton. Scranton squirrels. I love that. <laughs> time of electronic sports. Competitors from all around the world come to play Call of Duty. And there's no better place to find an all-star champ than in our Call of Duty League Championship event in Las Vegas, Nevada. And while you're at it, put on your Call of Duty Sunday best in-game with the stupendous King Skin. I'm here to win. That's tickety-boo with us. I don't know if you guys saw the first map, but I was feeling great. <laughs> we noticed, Octane, and we think it's just swell. We love you guys. Even if you're an Optic fan, we love you. We love you too, Scrap. You too can watch these electronic sports athletes play in person. Holy cow. My whole team know that it's do or die. By the top I see newer highs. It's going way, way, way. What do you think about that? A spark of a champion. What spark these kids have? You know what they say, a controller in hand is worth two on the heading. Don't settle for anything less than a good old-fashioned Call of Duty League championship. We'll see you there for a jolly old time. Link, and you'll miss it. What have we just seen? When I reach the top, you gotta dig in. All the scrims, matches, and majors all come down this is it. to just one shot. Destined for greatness, that's what I choose. It's Champs Weekend for the Call of Duty League. Confidence First in kill. Team. A split second all it takes can make the difference a matter of second. between victory one of the best. or catastrophe. They need a new playbook. In Las Vegas, we finally arrived, baby. you have to play the odds. One more time. But what happens when the numbers are stacked against you? It's done. The house always wins. It. Unless it doesn't. Surprise, baby. Las Vegas is where dreams come true. But only if you feel lucky enough to go for it all. This might get scary. Life comes at you fast in the CDL. What? If you're faster, play. you got a shot. Surprise, and this weekend, you could be more than just a winner. You could be a champion. Las Vegas, how are we feeling? Welcome in, everyone. This is day one of the championship week in the Call of Duty League 2023 season comes to an end as we close it out at the Thomas and Max Center downtown. Welcome in one and all as we prepare for the biggest event in Call of Duty. This, the 10th champs, and we have a star-studded lineup here on the desk to break down all of the action. Eight teams remain, $2.3 million, and four rings will be handed out on the end of Sunday. It doesn't get bigger than this, and already you can feel the energy in the building. Shout out to the early birds, everyone who is here bright and early to kick off the biggest event of the year. We've got Clayster, the three-time champion, joining Alley Cat and Nameless. And Clayster, we got to start with you. You were at the very first champs back at Black Ops 2. This is now number 10. How are we feeling coming into the weekend? I'm feeling great. I had to get Legion to champs somehow, right? And to, <laughs> share, <laughs> done. to share the desk with you three beautiful people, I'm happy to just be here. And there you can just see some of the greatness that lays in front of you. 14 pro season, three rings on this man's trophy case, and of course, 1.2 in the bank. Woo. Clay, this event though, you only have eight teams. How has this evolved? How much pressure is on these players coming into the weekend? There is an incredible amount of pressure on all the players at Champs. Champs elevates everything to 11. Everything gets turned up just a little bit. I'm excited to see the matches. The pressure is on, Allie, but so are the storylines. They're at an all-time high. What is the pulse check there with the community? The pulse check is insane. There's so many. There's the roster change at Boston Breach. There, how is Optic Texas going to perform as well as can LA Thieves go back-to-back -back world champs? Nameless, who's your favorite coming in? How we feeling? 
feeling about champs? I mean, I'm going to go with Atlanta phase. New York Subliners, the last finalist. They've been looking incredible. And s and wins championships. They've been godlike in that mode for the last couple of events. I'm excited to see who gets that trophy, man. Champs is a different beast. These are our three experts on the desk breaking down all the action. I'm Puckett, your host, but out front, we have two of my favorites. I Hold Shift is there with Lottie. Lottie, what's going on out there? Thanks so much, Chris. I'm Shift with me, LVP. We're going to see us running around the venue all weekend long, and it's going to be a vibe. It's going to be crazy. Right now, we're outside all the booths. I think we're actually outside the CDL official merch store. There are so many fans in the building here at Las Vegas absolutely incredible but there is so much to play for including a massive trophy and a massive prize pool i mean come on multiple millions of dollars on the line no place that we'd rather be than right here in vegas and you can already see day one the place is packed we'll catch you guys all weekend long we, we certainly will and ship we're gonna be backstage yes, talking to all the players talking about the veto process getting all that behind the scenes action but that's gonna do it from us right now we're gonna head on over back to the desk chris it's back to you Thank you, you incredible humans. You will see those two breaking down all the action with the fans, but we have some games to talk about, and we got to start by talking about the team that won the most recent event. We had five majors, and this team won major number one and major five, both unexpectedly. I want to start with you, Clayster. What did the subliner show us in Toronto? Because this team lost in the winner's bracket, then went on that ridiculous elimination bracket run all the way to the trophy. Yeah, I was a part of that run they had, and after they lost that first round, they became untouchable. It's awesome to see the composure that the Subliners team has, and to see Hydra really grow into that leadership, mature role, and really keep these guys together. It's awesome to see. I can't wait to see how they perform this weekend. I completely agree, and I think Ant made a really good point at the last major, the fact that they just keep getting better. Their coaching staff, they're continuously putting in the work, and it's coming to the fruits of their labor at this point. New York Subliners, I mean, they are the, one of the most dominant hardpoint teams when it comes to land, so easily a favorite heading into today. Last year, we saw the team that won the last major also won the World Championship. New York Subliners trying to be the team to do it here in 2023, but if you look at their season across the board, Nameless, this is a squad that's always been unpredictable. When yeah. we think they're weak, they win. When we think they're going to be on top, they get 9 through 12. What's the season <laughs> been like? You got a nice start and a strong finish. Yeah, you know, it's the ebbs and flows of a Call of Duty season. It's very difficult to win multiple events. So hats off to the New York subliners. But when you talk about their season overall, right, like they had to figure out that search and destroy. Majors 2, 3, and 4, it was not great. When you're talking about 1 and 10. They figured it out sort of at Major 4. The clutches were coming in. They're giving up those rounds. That did not happen. They win a lot of their search and destroys throughout that run. And then versus that Atlanta phase, they secured three of those in the grand final to take it, right? So New York looking incredibly strong, and they have the best player in the world. After winning the last event, they jump up into the number three seed. That sets a first round matchup against the Minnesota Rocker. But you'll see at the top of this list is Atlanta phase, the squad that retook the number one seed away from Optic Texas with their performance in Toronto. This team, they've raised a trophy back in Boston. They've been to multiple grand finals, and they were the most successful team in in recent history, four years in a row, they are entering COD champs with the number one seed. This is unprecedented amount of success. You're talking about the pinnacle of consistency. Number one seed four years in a row. Yeah. I think they make grand finals four years in a row at champs. We're talking about a 1.5 average placing, and they're trying to get that better this event. <laughs> It's insane. Atlanta Vegas, I mean, it's just insanity. I think we're all just so numb to the fact that they consistently, like they say, place that 1.5. They're always going to be put into that top three. I think for the past two years, they've consistently at every major placed top three. And they have a chip on this year as well, as well as getting better at respawn. That has been their weak point this entire season, still being number one seed. So for the Atlanta Vegas, I mean, you just got to talk about the duo, Simp and Ibizi. When they came into the scene, they overturned the way that teams were building their rosters. Their goal was to make a sub duo that could fight up against Sip and Ibizi, and they have continued those woes throughout the last four years. Easily a favorite on the day. Yeah, I mean, if they win this world championship, it's solidified they're the greatest team of all time, and they'll, those two guys would shoot up to be the best players ever, right? Like, this is unprecedented in Call of Duty. Their placings are unbelievable, and we just talked about a New York team that has two first place finishes, and they're third in the standings. Just put that into perspective, what Atlanta Phase is doing. It's incredible. I think the Vegas bookies already have this team as the clear favorite that's just statistics speaking but if you are listening to the fans they think this team is going to be the squad raising the trophy at the end of the week and optic texas had the number one seed they had back-to-back -back perfect online qualifiers 
back-to-back -back grand finals appearances. Then Toronto, you bomb out in six games. You're losing to a team who's not even here, the Florida Mutineers. Quaster, what's up with Optic right now? Are they still a team to beat? Of course they're still a team to beat, but when you look at last event and their sub duo literally had the worst event that those players have ever had. Uh, this game and Call of Duty nowadays is built around your sub players. If these guys can get back to the form we all know that they can get to, they're definitely a contender this year. You have to sign it off as just a bad event, right? Probably the worst timing to have a bad event heading into chance, but there's no other explanation. I mean, you're talking about back-to-back -back perfect qualifiers, favorites going into major number five. For Optic Texas, the biggest question mark again is just what version are we going to get today? This team has made countless roster changes. They removed their coach mid-season. They gave the control to the players, and they've had some nice peaks. Back-to-back -back grand finals is probably the highlight of the year. Yeah. Nameless, are you worried about this team at all? I'm incredibly worried about this team. You know, I was talking to, you know, Clay about this backstage. It's like the sub players have to show up, and obviously every team you need your sub players to fry, but with them, it just seems like there's a lot of pressure. Look at the drop off that they have when those guys don't play well, right? So uh, Shotzi and Hoof, those guys are going to have to be on top of their game. And, you know, you're compromised after the losses that you had. It's not like it was close game fives. You lost 3-0, 3-0, and you lost some lockdown maps, some maps that you were setting records on, right? So how do you respond with adversity in front of you? We'll see Optic if they can bounce back here. Everybody gets a mulligan. Don't do it at champs is my <laughs> word of advice. Optic has learned that in the past. They are still a front running team coming into our final event of the year, as is a squad reigning from Toronto. And if you asked me if this was possible two years ago, I'd tell you, probably not. Two rookies on a grand finals roster potentially here. We'll see if Toronto can make the run. Clayster though, this is some ridiculous talent. And I don't think I've seen rookies work in as a team this well in recent history. Yeah, honestly, Scrap has been playing phenomenal all year. The way he came in this year, which is the confidence and swagger, I love that out of the kid. Honestly, it reminds me of me a little bit when I first came in the league. And for him to walk the walk and talk the talk and win an event this year, it's awesome. We're talking about MVP candidate. We're talking about Rookie of the Year candidate. And then bringing in Hixie, who brings in that fundamental, foundational building blocks that they need. Honestly, if, if any team's going to take it, maybe Toronto. Yeah. I mean, I'm right there with you. Toronto Ultra, I feel like at the last major, they kind of beat themselves. Uh, when it came to Atlanta Phase Series, when they first got sent down, they put Expo in that map number three. It was a big question mark across the board, and they got slammed 3-0 on it. And then they moved to that hard point. They lost both hard points in the series against an Atlanta Phase that's been struggling in that game mode. So I think Toronto just learned from their mistakes heading into champs. I think, like Clay said, they're easily still one of the teams in that conversation. They picked up Charlie Hixie, and they went on to win their first tournament with them in Texas in enemy territory. Toronto has done it in front of the haters. They weren't able to do it in front of their fans, but now they've got the pressure on their shoulders. How do you think this team is going to be able to perform? Because they're going up against the reigning champions yeah. in LA Thieves, namely. I mean, they played twice recently, six and one map counts. So they're definitely very comfortable yeah. against LA. You know, a lot of the maps that they like to play, LA also like to play, right? So for Toronto Ultra, it's going to come down to that control where they've been excellent all season. Uh, just one final point on Toronto is that they are really a team's team, right? They have great fundamentals, but talking about fundamentals, LA these. That's a team that has been at the top of that for quite some time. And this squad showed it to us at the end of Vanguard. They closed out with the final major victory, then won back to back with the 22 World Championship title going their way. Clayster, they enter this tournament as a question mark. A lot of people saying this matchup is a coin toss. How are you feeling about the Thieves? They've won an event back at Columbus. They broke the champs curse. No team has won champs and won an event the next year with the same squadron. So these guys coming out, breaking the champs curse, going for the back-to-back -back champs win. It's hard to go back-to-back. -back. Yeah. Not many people have done it. And so these guys are really trying to go for that back-to-back. -back. And you look at those stats, obviously a little bit of drop-off this year compared to last year. But really, they're the team that is always going to show up on land. You can never count Thieves out. Hey, Allie, who's the most dangerous from that squad? I mean, everyone's got good numbers, but let's help the fans focus in. Who is going to oh, be the killer today? Got to focus on Kylo Ken simply because he just comes different when it's champs time. Facts. Look out for the bandana. All right. We have our bracket set up for everyone at home. Take your screenshot now. And if you haven't already, get your predictions in while you can, because we have FaZe taking on Seattle Surge. Toronto faces off against LA Thieves in one of the closest battles we'll see in a winner's round one. Optic faces a brand new look from Boston Breach as Snoopy enters the lineup, and we've got subliners taking on Minnesota Rocker.
We've got the fans voting, and they have told us who they think is going to win it. Optic is the clear <laughs> favorite. Faze, though, despite the booze in the crowd, 25% near nameless. Yeah, I mean, you know, Clay could talk about this as well. As a competitor, you look for anything and everything to give you that extra fire to prove people wrong. And a graphic like this, especially for a team like Toronto Ultra, is going to light an absolute fire. And then also, if you're Snoopy, you see a point, too. <laughs> I can do no wrong. I mean, if I'm on the right side of this fan vote, I'm taking it very very personal. Oh, yes. <laughs> Toronto disrespected with a 6.4. They're going to be playing with a little fire. May let the fans know what they think about it later. They, of course, are going to be playing for all the money in this incredible trophy. Let's take a look at this bad boy, Clayster. You've raced three of them throughout your career. What's it like lifting this thing? I've raced it a couple times. It's a feeling unlike any other. It's what we all chase as competitors every single year. It's what I'm still chasing right now. Lifting that chance trophy validates all of your hard work, everything you've put in over the year and over multiple years even. So so really, it's just the, the prime validation for a competitor. And it's not just the validation. It comes with a nice ooh, check ooh, as ooh. well. Allie, break it down for me. Everyone who's here is getting paid. It's a whole lot of cash. I mean, even if you get DFR, you're taking 40 grand home. So most teams obviously want to hit to that left side. But I mean, that is a lot of money to celebrate at the end of the day on Sunday. One million? <laughs> <laughs> what? I know no. I'm partying with Quick us Sunday. Sunday. Can I get a time machine? <laughs> All right, that is a look at the prize pool. Reminder, it's not just the players who can win. Everyone watching at home can get in on the action. Nameless, you are crushing it with our expert analyst pick so yes, far. You'll lead the rest of the talent. How's this. your bracket looking? Listen, my bracket's looking fantastic. The tournament hasn't started yet, but... 10K? I, I, I won the... I, I won last... I'm not telling you. What do you mean you're not You got your, bra oh, you got your bracket sharing. submitted yet? Did you yet? copy your bracket? Are I mean, you I won last time. It was pretty good. Crazy. It was pretty good. Copy his notes, and you have a chance of winning some money. And, of course, lock in, because we have an awesome day of action. Action. Let's take a look at the schedule and everything that is coming our way. Clay, I'm fired up for this one. We got the Subliners facing off against the Rocker. Atlanta versus Surge is a matchup of one versus eight that I think could be a lot closer than a lot of people predict. This game is all about matchups. You could be the first seed and the last seed, but if you match up well against that number one seed, you can beat them. It's Call of Duty. It's any given Sunday, and I think FaZe's hardest matchup is the Seattle yeah. Surge. And of course, while you are watching, make sure you link your account. Ali, look at the goods we got this time around. Skirt! Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, you dropped this. I mean, I know a couple people that would be running that uh, pretty quickly. But yeah, make sure you get your blue blueprints, watch and earn throughout the entirety of the weekend on either Twitch or YouTube. We got to go to a break. When we come back, COD Champs 2023 continues. Don't go anywhere. This is the Call of Duty League. I'm Miles Ross and welcome to Touch Grass Champs Edition. I'm here with this beautiful GMC Hummer EV to pick up accuracy of Seattle Surge. Accuracy with another monster clutch. Ice in a vase indeed. Nobody does it better than accuracy. Seattle Surge secured the final spot at Champs, which is just around the corner. Everything's on the line. Because that's your moment to like immortalize yourself. No one can ever take that away from you, world champion. Let's go get the Iceman. Let's see if we can get him to chill. 
even the world's greatest Call of Duty players have to get outdoors once in a while, so we're on a journey to reconnect them with nature in the revolutionary GMC Hummer EV. Let's go touch some grass. Dude, welcome to the GMC Hummer EV. This car is sick, man. It's cool, right? Dude, it's smooth sailing, super sick. Like, I feel like I'm rolling around like a big boss, you know? This thing is a unit. It's fast, it's really powerful. Everywhere we go, it turns heads. I can see myself whipping this for sure. Let's get straight into business. Major five, what happened? Man, you're coming in hot, huh? Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it! Legion gets the 3-0! As for Seattle though, that is tough. You gotta sit back and watch. We had some rough performances in the online qualifiers. We lost like four round 11 matches. Yep. Those are some heartbreakers, man. We needed to try to get that one moment to like reignite the spark and like get that swagger back. I think the swagger is a really good part because like you are one of the swaggiest teams in the league by far. Look at the swagger on that stage. Like you guys are a top caliber team that is going through a tough year. You still qualify for champs. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> We've got the biggest champs of all time coming up. Record-breaking sales, the biggest arena we've ever had. Everything is huge. Yeah. You made it. What does this one mean to you? I mean, you've come close before. That World War II season, you got second at champs. Yes, that, man, that's a heartbreaker. To be so yeah. close and then have it taken away. There's the trophy! I think there's literally a clip of me shedding a tear. After the confetti pop, I literally took a bunch of the confetti put it in my backpack and I was like, this is gonna be my motivation for the next like two years that I was going to events. I'd open my backpack at tournaments, get my controller out and see that confetti and be like, I wanna change that. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, I'd like I to love remember that. it. Yeah. Wow. Winning champs, it means the world. The best COD is played at champs. We play our rivals basically round one, us versus FaZe. Every time we play them, it's an absolute war. One of my favorite series, when you guys met them in Texas. Here he comes! Shut him down! The outer search, it simply was not enough. That match, that's ingrained in my soul. That's how hard that L was. Yeah. <laughs> Make no say, that's the best series we have seen all year, far none, without question. Best all of duty that has been played. We match up round one versus them and put on a show for everyone. That's what Champs is about, man. It's the highest stakes, highest pressure, always the best COD is played at COD Champs. That's just the way it goes. Oh, I can't wait. You are one of the older players in the league. Yeah. I mean, how old are you now? I am 26. I was signed the first contract in the whole league, won a couple of chips. Seattle Surge are your major three champions. I feel like I've been around the card scene since the birth of it. When it comes to legacy, what do you want to leave behind? I want everyone that has come in contact with me in the league to know that I was someone that worked hard, gave them my all. Cod is the ruthless game. Things can change the snap of the finger. If you're not gonna come in every day and you know try to make the most of it, like what are you doing? No one has said it better than that, man. Oh, this is beautiful. I didn't even know there was this much water over here. It's nice to get out here. Okay, Lamar, we're gonna touch some grass. Yeah. First, we have another feature of the car to test. Okay. This is the crab walk. All right, check this out. Whoa, that was sick. Here we go, crab walk. No one's ever drove down this road yeah. this way. Dude, we're literally gliding. gliding. It's like we're sliding on ice. The car's got movement, bro. The car has got better movement than me. <laughs> <laughs> This is the best day of work for a long Jill. time. Yo. Dude, this is what I want <laughs> after a major. Like, I don't want to sit in a dark room alone. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, we're here to touch some grass. That's a good thing to unwind, like kind of get yourself back in tune and get some stress out. Cause man, it's highs and lows in this space and there's some heartbreakers and everything's so fast paced. You really feel the emotion. If we could end our story with the world championship, I mean, that would be unreal. You can look back and be like, at a certain point in time, you were the greatest in the world at something.
and you're tuning in for the grand finals welcome we got a lot of games and we got to catch you up with how we got here let's start with the very beginning ladies and gentlemen it is championship sunday live from raleigh north carolina that trophy on the line Moving for the kill, Priest is going to be taken care of. You still got numbers out for Ultra Hydra doing the very best he possibly can, and it's pretty damn good so far. The New York Subliners have shocked the lead. The New York Subliners are your major one champions. Hello, one and all, and welcome to the Call of Duty League Major Two coming at you from Beantown. Oh, it's right Hatch! One v three. Heroes in. Is anyone there? Over the top. Oh my God! Dashi crosses him up. They just got it done. The way they. two champions Atlanta face all righty Texas this is what makes God great Jay Marky B is here and Marky B is a kill away from a crew Toronto Ultra are your major three champions it is officially time for major four of the 2023 Call of Duty League season the games just keep getting better and better oh my goodness me it's a knife fight underwater Thieves. And that's another for the trophy cabinet. Welcome to Toronto, Canada. It is a Phoenix that has risen. Right next to him. He's able to hit the shot. You think the trade might oh. come in? Matches have been getting better and better. New York have done it. This is going to get rowdy. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL, and the GMC Hummer EV pickup, the world's first all-electric super truck. Upgrade your game with a Scott, the official controller of the Call of Duty League. And we are back. It's time to kick off Champs Week and with the first battle as we are going to be starting things off here in the Thomas and Mack Center with our winner's bracket. Double elimination means you get two lives, but this first matchup, you're basically doubling your money guaranteed. You're guaranteed a top <laughs> six finish if you win here in the opening round, and we get a rematch of a battle we just saw a few weeks ago. Welcome back, everybody. It's Puckett. Clayster is joining us alongside Alley Cat and Nameless. And Clayster, we watched this battle just two weeks ago when we were in Toronto. It was an elimination final, and the New York Subliners were able to take down Minnesota Rocker. It was a hot 3-0. Walk me through what you saw from the Subliners and what the Rocker needs to do differently in your eyes. I honestly rate Rocker really highly, especially after their roster changes, bringing in a Tatch, moving Fame back to a sub. I think they're a really well put together team, but they just struggle against teams like FaZe and teams like Subliners. And I think that they're gonna have a hard time in this first match, unless their sub duo really shows up. Ben's and fame really need to go hard this event. Yeah. I think it kind of goes to the sorry, I think it kind of goes to the pace of play when it comes to Minnesota Rocker when they go up against those teams because you're talking about New York with Hydra and Kismet, they are just in your face constantly. And that's why in this matchup, Rocker unfortunately is one in five. So when it comes obviously there's many opportunity for the Minnesota Rocker because this is the most practice they have gotten with fame and attached in their respective roles on the same roster. So could they come out and surprise us all? Absolutely. The problem is though, is that they just can't keep up with the slaying. Nameless, what I find so interesting about this rocker squad is just how it's built. You've got one of the old guards, a guy who started 10 years ago playing in champs with Attach. Now you've got two guys from the UK in Vance and Cami, and of course you're rounding out the lineup with a rookie. You brought Fame yep. in from your challengers team. You made him play AR. Now he's back on SMG. Yep. How strong is this team right now? You know, it's a strong squad, right? Like uh, the tenacity is there. They didn't have much practice going into that last major. Obviously did what they needed to do. They get a top three finish. And they lose to a team that's been together all year that then went on to go win the tournament. Uh, for the Monster Energy pregame, start off strong on Mercado. Hardpoint 4-2 and two this season. A plus 41 differential is the highest in the league. That's very impressive. And then for maps two and three, they just played these against New York, right? So so you have the film to go back and look at. Also, that Mercado Search and Destroy is a map that Fame has been incredible on, so I'm expecting them to have a bounce back. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Minnesota comes in here and upsets New York. It really isn't, right? Like, if New York go back to, you know, into their hole where they weren't good at Search and Destroy, Right. Minnesota is a team that can win those S&Ds and steal the series. So it's going to get interesting if they show up. Speaking of a search and destroys, though, you saw Skies 19 snipes at the last event. That was 13 more than any other. Placer, Clay, you caught a few of them. Tell me about New York and what this team
team brings to Search and Destroy in particular. Their Search and Destroy is one of the hardest to play against in the entire CDL. Playing against them this year, the two hardest teams for us to play in Search were FaZe and New York. They just are, get you off rhythm so much that you're thinking, oh, there's going to be somebody flanking, there's somebody flanking. And then when you least expect it, Kismich flanking every time. And then you got Caesar with the snipes. He was on fire at the last event with the boomstick, really not missing at all, getting two pieces. I mean, one of the highlights right there was a two piece against us. Yeah. So when you're sniping like that and you're able to get those first bloods with that consistency, it opens up the map for your rest of your team and it makes it so much easier to win searches. Yeah, but mind you, like these guys at majors two, three, and four, one in 10 in that game mode. It really wasn't until this last major they were able to figure it out and go on their run. So a lot of pressure is on that sniper, but also Hydra to make those plays. Allie, this match is just moments away. So let's take a look here at our Monster Energy pregame tips. What do you got for the subliners if they want to make another run to a trophy? Oh, well, you know, Hydra just continued to do Hydra things as he has done <laughs> all year long. The most consistent, best player in the game. And he's put Search and Destroy under his belt as well and exposed their weak form in Asilo Control. Minnesota has lost six of their last seven. At one point, that was their best control map and mode. We will see that in the series once again. And it's a repeat of the last time these two teams matched up in New York subliners. Kind of completed a challenge with a 3-0 in the series and a 3-1 on control. All right. Well, we've had a lot of numbers this year. We've done all of the statistic keeping throughout the year. Let's take a look at the maps these teams decided they feel they have the advantage on. When it came to the bands, it looks like Embassy and Fortress removed. You're going to see Embassy and LSC will remove for Search and Destroy. Allie, how does this series break down now knowing we got Mercado, Mercado, Elisilo, Hydro, then Hotel. To be honest, New York is looking to get this done in four. I see that Hydro in game number four, they're looking to lock that up as kind of a safety net, even if they don't win that Elisilo control. Considering, I think they will because they're 2-1 versus Minnesota on it, but also they're heading into that Mercado hard point where they are the best hold and break team. So Minnesota Rocker, it's a very, very tall hill to climb. This is going to be a tough opening matchup. Cloyster, though, I want no stats. I want pure heart. This is champs. It's always different at this event. How do you see this first series playing out? I look at that map set and I get terrified for Minnesota. Those look like a lot of New York's really good maps and maps that I do not want to play them on. Uh, get ready for a lot of pre-nades on the first two maps. Mercado, nadespots.com all day. All right, so you're calling New York? Oh, New York. Allie? New York, easy. Nameless, yeah. give me the series count. I'm going New York subliners. I think it gets done in a 3-1 fashion. I got too much faith in that team and what Hydra's been able to do. They get it done. Subliners just won in Toronto. I couldn't count them out in this first battle. I got subliners as well. Crowd, you guys agree? Let us know as we send it out to the man on the stage, my guy Blaze. What's up, Las Vegas and Call of Duty fans all around the world? It is champs. And I'm ready to get this started. Coming to the stage first, it's the boys in purple looking to ice their competition. But let's see what they can do, because here comes Minnesota.
give you goosebumps. I don't know what will. The Rocker trying to rock the stage and get an upset in round one against the previous champions. We'll see if they can do it. This is a team that the fans have decided have a 0.8% chance of winning. Let's see if they can defy the odds. Let's bring out the major five champs. Let's see if they can defy the odds. Las Vegas, help me welcome your major five champions. Minnesota Rocker. I think it's time to get the first match started, Blaze. It's time to get it started, Allie. Las Vegas, you ready? <laughs> Lando, study. Let's go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the hottest ticket in town. We are live here from Las Vegas to kick off CDL Champs 2023. And, buddy, we're starting things off with the defending major five champions now facing off against the Minnesota Rocker. I know Naples is talking about it. The environment here is absurd. Like, oh, yeah. This is loud. This oh, is awesome. yeah. This is only day one as well. We yeah. just got to Vegas. It's hot as hell as well <laughs> when we got to Vegas. I'm sweating ever since I touched the ground, but this event is going to be insane. And we are starting off with a banger New York versus Minnesota. We saw it at Major Five. New York got the better of them in a clean 3 0, and they walk away with the championship at the very end. But these two weeks of practice for both of these teams, it's the most important practice all year long. That's what we talked about, right? I mean, if you are the Minnesota Rocker, you're coming into this matchup saying, you know what, we are one in five versus this team on the year, but we know what to do. We know roughly what situation we're going to be in. And also when it comes to the practice, Jay, they've had some great practice coming into this. Oh event. yeah, because they're on the lower side of the bracket. You're not going to be scrimming against Optic Texas, the Subliners, Boston Breach. None of those guys are going to be playing against. You're playing against the top side. That's Toronto Ultra. That's the LA Thieves. That's Atlanta Face. So Minnesota Rocker, they have been getting some great, great practice going into this event. And they have known for quite some time who their number one matchup is. That's the subliners. So when you know two weeks in advance, you probably know what maps you're going to play. So look at the preparation to be prepared on all these maps in this series. It's going to be a blast. We're kicking off our tournament. We're kicking off champs with the good old Mercado Las Almas. It's going to be a blast. It's going to be a fun one. But Jay, I want to dive really quick into a bit more of the Minnesota Rocker side, right? Because we're yeah. talking about this battle, we're discussing how New York are the heavy favorites, but if there is a chance for Rocker to come away with the upset, right? To start off this tournament in the best way possible, you and I were chatting about it in the back. How valuable and how necessary is this game one for the Rockers? Oh, game one is everything because New York decided to big dog them in this series and choose Team B. So maps two through four are all in favor of the subliners. The fact that you were Minnesota Rocker, you take Team A, you choose the map number one that you're going to play, Mercado Hardpoint has to be a lockdown because the Mercado S&D, we saw that last time matched up, it was 6-1 for New York. The LSC low control, the Dest touched on it. Last seven times that they have played it, they have lost six of them. So that used to be their bread and butter. They have fell off drastically there and New York will be able to capitalize on it. So if you are the rocker, 
They got to take this map, number one. And I think Clay on the desk, he said it perfectly. It's got to be through the SMGs. If okay. you think about when Minnesota Rocker were able to get two top three placements all year, it's always been in the SMGs. Bans and Afro at the beginning, 1.2s. And in the last event, again, Bans making play after play. So they got to be ready for this environment and this game because it's so crucial for their tournament life. And at the same time, though, it is also a spot that obviously is never going to be comfortable for a team. You have to come into champs. You have to instantly probably take this opening hard point. But we do look at the Minnesota side. You're looking at quite a few veterans who oh, have yeah. been in this spot oh, yeah. many times before. We're talking about Bance and Cami who have been in COD Champs Grand Finals. We're talking about Attach who has won a Call of Duty World Championship back when he was 18. Now he's a veteran. If there was a team that could come out with the composure, who could come out with the fight, it very well could be this Minnesota side. But at the same time, Jay, this team in New York, my God, they look unstoppable at Major 5. Here we go, Vegas! We're kicking off champs here on Mercado Las Almas. Let's get it. And it's going to be the subline starting off on the better side. So no pre-nades off the rip. They're more focused on maintaining the left side of the mini-map. But Fane with the SMG applies that pressure early on. But New York, no. We're at the P1. Neither one of these squads are going to get a lot of this time. We're more focused on winning these gunfights for the next hill. And with only 30 seconds left, New York to look to be in full control. Yeah, they look to be in a good spot overall. Still 25 seconds to fight for at P1. But if you have looked statistically at what really Minnesota's key to success has been, it's actually not been at this hard point. So as you said, a great opportunity for New York. And if recency tells you anything, Minnesota could struggle at the break moving forward. They managed to get a few down and take a look at player number for in the alley. Bance, they've got numbers right now. Do Rocker. And this is the perfect opportunity right here for Rocker. They get 16 seconds off of P1. They find the final gunfight off the skies, off the rotation. That's now three dead. Minnesota Rocker around the middle of the pack when it comes to winning rotations oh. on this map. But they make the first one look easy. And now they're going to chain it to this some P2 time. New York need to find a break early on. Oh, it's a 19 spree. Minnesota coming out and say, New York, how do you do? quickly engaged and now attach finds himself on the five spree we talked about the prior sub but he has been dominant especially lately with that ar gets a little bit hairy drops off the spree does not have the cruise missile and new york thankfully break with 30 to go and you would take that if you are rocker you get at least a good 20 to 25 seconds at the p2 and now you're forced to rotate early on towards p3 but you're still gonna have a nice little lead going into that one Gunfights trading back and forth over towards Yellow Van, and it's going to be Hydra coming out on top it with two. So now Minnesota, they are getting a couple close spawns. Vance is going to be all the way across the map, so it's going to be a battle, a 3v3 for this rotation. Yep, currently Minnesota with control. We'll see if they can continue to lock it down or if the subliners can find that early pick. That is what they're looking for, whether through nades or whether through the guns, maybe even a knife. Who knows what could come to play here to kick us off on Mercado, but... A minor advantage. Can that continue to build? Two players quickly fall for New York. It's all up the skies in Kismet now. Kismet's out of the fight. Caesar, last man up. And Minnesota Rocker. You can just tell that the practice has been playing dividend in their gameplay so far. They're usually seven in hold percentage, but that's now two hills. They've been able to get some much, much needed time to keep the lead the way they have it. But trades going back and forth. It's all left up to Cami. Now it's Fame in a 1v1 versus Priesta. Can he win this gunfight for his team? He cannot. Subline is fine to break. And with only 20 seconds left, Priesta has that free time. He's relying on his teammates off the rotation. This is a battle right here. This is, but I was going to say, Vance, he's got check his right. Oh. Not able to win it and now as we prepare for some extra time over at the barbershop it's attach again who is destroying everybody jay the rest of his teammates have four or five six kills he has 13. he is coming out to play and had it not been for two crucial 1v1s this is minnesota who are up massively he knows what it's like to play in this environment and he's showing it early on as rocker able to find three in the feed they control back alley they know where the subliners are gonna apply the pressure unfortunately bands loses that first gunfight so subliners are in a position to try to break but fame with the sng he finds two minnesota right now just keeping the kill stagnant not allowing the subliners to get a clean three to four dead to lead to the break it just feels like every time every hard point that we visit they're either getting the first 30 or the last 30 right now they're they're going for the full 60, yet to be really all that contested over at Barbershop. But who other than Attach? You need him in a big 1v1, and he is there to deliver. Continues to dominate, and now we prepare for the rotation. A big one already, Jay, if you're New York. Yeah, Minnesota going to find themselves up by 60 points. So it has to be a great hole from the subliners, and it has to start with Hydra. Unfortunately, he cannot find a second kill onto Fame. 
So now it's Kismet's turn. He does take down one. It's gonna be the subliners winning the rotation over towards P5. And now this is where you have to set up beautifully to get yourself back into this game. It feels like if you're New York as well, Jay, like, you gotta stay composed. Like, you're already seeing Minnesota come out, dominate in ways that you're just not familiar with. And now that's gonna be three down that's off too the easy. Rip. That is three down already. We're talking about how New York, hey, this could be an opening, you know, a chance for them to really get back in this game. And before we can even utter the sentence, Minnesota rush right on forward. Attacks now on five again. Can this be the cruise missile? Not gonna happen. No streaks, no problem. Minnesota still very much so in, in the league. And the crazy thing is, the subliners are the number one whole team on this map. They usually have their setups down to the T, where it's very difficult to break. But Rocker, they're playing it super patient, finding the correct timings. And that's what's been leading to them. Currently up by 49 points, but great shots out of Priesta. We're going over to the second hill in towards the Cantinas. It's gonna be towards the top side and Subliner's gonna be here early, but look at the route that Attach is currently taking. He's gonna get the timing because one player drops. He's here for the pinch. Priesta takes him down. New York still holds. And you got a few New York players on sprees. I know Sky's gonna be in the cruise missile. Priesta now on five. The hill is broken and there you go. For the Subliners, we're talking about the blueprint. How do you get back in this game? It came off of the early break over at Cantina, a hard point where you can lock down a ton of time. And just like that, Jay, I mean, what? If the final 30 goes to them, we are literally at a tie game. Yeah, we're literally going to be at a tie game. So now you just focus on that next hill. Minnesota have a position with Cami and Vance holding down Barbershop Alley. Cami and Vance combined for three. So New York now are going to be slow off the rotation. And with only 15 seconds left, Minnesota know that they had back alley. We can apply the pressure through this side and potentially contest it, but no, they're just going to value their life and think about that rotation. But also, Kismet is ahead of the game. He wins a huge one-on-one -on -one versus Attach, and now he's in a situation where he has to play his life until his teammates get to him. Momentum starting to build right now for New York. Kismet in a big spot. He ends up falling. Sweat off the brow. If you're rocker, you were player count, and you were trying to figure out where the subliners players were, and now here comes the streak. Now that to deal with. Can Minnesota weather the storm? Trophies look to be out, and it looks like they will survive. Unfortunately, until Cammy dies by a car bomb, so he'll be out of the picture. And for the moment, it is currently a 2v2. Quite a few New York players off of respawn. Yeah, it's only fame and attach here. And a couple players from the subline are spawning out behind them. But attacks case takes care of two. Faze finds another. And would look to be an instant break coming in from the subliners. Minnesota hold on strong. So now with only 20 seconds left, they are playing outstanding in this map number one. Now we're going into our second half of rotations and Rocker currently find themselves up by 50, potentially 60 points. And Jay, that last hard point, it just feels like for Minnesota, I mean, not every hard point is created the same. Like, you needed to get that confidence oh, yeah. because obviously we started to see subliners building up an advantage, starting to make a comeback. That last hard point has got to be a solid one for you, but there you see the team nade. Currently, time left vacant as we continue to battle for the bottom side of the map. Right now, Rocker is in possession of it, and they're still winning the transition kill. That's a big kill from Vance as well. They're more focused on maintaining head side. If you can get a lot of this beat one time, you're basically going to be able to call a game. But you don't want to drop at the same time two to three dead because it's going to allow the subliners to apply that pressure on through tunnel. Trades are going back and forth. Famous early off the rotation, but he loses the one-on-one -on -one to Priesta, and the next man is up. Vance finds him. So Minnesota are chaining the P one time with the spawns. They are looking to close out the game at the next hill. Yeah, it looks like this game is absolutely in their hands. Let's step aside and see how the comms are sounding in a crucial moment in this series. A check-in quickly with the Rocker. I spawned here, I spawned here. Is he hitting tunnel? Uh, yeah, he's gonna hit tunnel, 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 one shot. Oh, he's still coming, he's still coming. Okay, okay. Hydra was absolutely tunnel. Do you have a streak? No, 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 I do not. So I spawned out, uh, you guys okay. on P4 side? Yeah, I'm close before. I'm close before. Yeah, I'm gonna tunnel. Could be deep cactus, guys. Yeah, I'm right now. He's tunnel. Get past him, cuz. Hydra's still tunnel. No, no, he's, he's, uh, yeah, he's close. Kismet's mid, Kismet's in P1. Yeah, I'm behind him. Just let us know, let us know where you want us to go. I'm top, I am top. I'm gonna try and work his tunnel. Oh, one shot dead. Nice, nice, nice. I killed him. I killed him. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Time dead. Time dead. Nice. Good shit. Over in the inner staircase. Inner staircase, one shot. Yeah, dead, dead, dead. Nice, nice, nice. You got me cars. Yeah, that's good. Tunnel dead. Let's get top, get top. I have mid. 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 I have
so I'm already full. No, oh, he's behind me. Case is in fork, okay? He's, he's on the god hitting fork, okay? Uh, one's okay, close right. short, one's close short, challenge. Close short, yeah, close short. That's two, that's two, that's two. Nice. Yeah, I'm gonna middle. All righty, Minnesota 234, New York 152. However, the lead right now looks to try to be ended. It looks to be thwarted. Big kills coming in from Hydra. Jay, it feels like one more break for Rocker, and this one's over. Yeah, one opportunity is all they need. One break, and advance and attach finding two. This might be it. This could There's be only it. Two players on the subliners left in the point. Skies, the trade is going to be in. Last player is going to be towards the top. They have yet to take care of him as Hydra staying alive. Eventually, Kismet gets back into the play, and the subliners hold on for the final 30 seconds. And now you're in a situation where if you are Rocker, you have one player committing towards this junk time. If he wins this one on one, he could potentially win the game. But no, Hyde just sniffs him out. He has a cruise missile to work with. And now it's all about this barbershop hill. And New York, they're starting off with these initial fights. Minnesota have to clutch on up. But Hydra is bringing in the cruise missile. They also find two, making three off a spawn. They know exactly no. where they are, but it's a team kill. A team kill comes forward. Skies is down and Attach wins the fight off the rim. This is your opportunity, Minnesota. This is your chance to close them out here. Ten more points to go. That's all they need. The subliners are applying pressure through every single alley. Sky starts off with the first, but everyone's dropping through mid. Minnesota are going to do it. It looks like it. One more attack falls. One more point to go. One more point to go. New York, they're hanging on by a thread. They are hanging push. on. They are hanging on. Minnesota know all they need is one second. One, two pieces, all that it's needed. And right now, Bance with the trigger discipline, he's gonna go for it. Him and Cammy through back alley trying to make it happen. You can tell the communication is there. Cammy trying to make a little bit of an effort toward the front. Bance finding players in the back. He ends up dropping. That's another two down. New York still alive. Here comes Attach. Here comes Attach. The pitch is in. He needs to find a double. Not gonna happen. And now it's about the rotation. Minnesota are here. Subliner's gotta go. Subliner's gotta go. You gotta give up that time. And doesn't look like they're going to be there in time. Minnesota Rock are fully set up, but they lose the fight. Attach makes it happen. He finds the final two, and Rocker take map one. Well, that's all it took. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it takes to walk away with the opening hard point if you're Rocker. Oh my god. It wasn't the closest based off of the score hard point that we've seen, Jay, but I tell you what, man. I mean, a few 1v1s go differently. I mean, if Minnesota doesn't have the massive lead that they have, yeah. this is a New York comeback. It is. It is. But every single time Minnesota Rocker knew they needed one opportunity. They were slow on their breaks. That eventually is what leads to the W. Subliners are number one in break percentage on this map. They are number one in hold percentage. And those are two things, but they couldn't really find a lot of success, which leads to the L on map number one versus Rocker. Obviously, we got to talk about the world champ on that side, Attach. What a performance in map number one. Look at the Real time time. setting the tone. Look at the time. He's just doing it all, man. Almost double positive. Two minutes in hill. He knows what it's like to be here, and he allowed his teammates to go up 1 0. That's like, that's like Jokic numbers, like stat oh, sheet stuff. Up, the time work. Up. I love to see that. Coming in from Mr. Dylan Price, recently bought, brought back into the lineup. And my God, do they need him. Just an incredible start off to this game, Jay. It really did feel like Minnesota caught New York off guard. Yep. You know, we're talking about the ability, how you need to come out, you need, you need to win the opening hard point. Rocker, a lot of veteran experience, a chance to maybe come out and surprise. And they absolutely did that. You said it, right? This has to be a game one victory for Minnesota. And they came out. And they grabbed it. More specifically, Attach came out and seized it. Yeah, and it wasn't really that easy as well because Subliners right off the rip of the game. They won a couple key gun fights. They were holding the right side of the map going into P2, but Rocker were able to find an instant break. Every time it was a hill overturns Cantinas, New York were the team set up early. But then with about 25 to 30 seconds left, Minnesota Rocker found the break by playing it super patient. The SMGs finding openings on the map. That eventually leads to the dub. So now with Rocker up 1-0, you are in the advantage in this series because you have already played the subliners on the next two maps coming up. You know what it was like on Mercado s &D. It was all about those first floods. It was 6-1 to one in favor of the subliners. That was eventually the ending game score, 6-1 to one for New York. So if you are Minnesota Rocker, 
we had I had the opportunity to talk with Attach on our podcast yeah. podcast, and he told me their two main focuses are S and D and control. They feel like their hard point game is about 50-50. They can square up with any team. But if you can start securing these S and Ds and get back to your bread and butter in controls, this team is definitely has opportunities to try to walk away with this chip. So oh, I'd love to see it. Just everybody, a number of different jerseys here in the venue, everybody going nuts. You have to absolutely love to see a performance like that coming through from our underdogs. There is the map results, 252-26. We talked about it. Mr. Tash going for 29 and 19. And now, well, the reason, Jay, why we're talking about this so much, how important this opening hard point was, and you obviously you discussed it, was the next few maps that we're about to have. Search, destroy, and Mercado, as you discussed. Dominant, really dominance on display in oh, yeah. New York. But we gotta get back to that conversation of Minnesota, how much practice that they have been doing. You have to imagine when it comes down to the vetoes, you know that the subliners want to play you on Mercado. Oh, yeah. This is a roster that very well could be in the lab throughout these last few weeks on this map. You gotta be in the lab, especially with the teams that you were scrimming against. We're talking about Toronto Ultra, Atlanta Phase, who are the second best Mercado SD team that we have in the league. So you're getting some great reps. You know exactly what cost you the last time around, and that was New York just throwing them so many different looks. On their very first attacking round, the they go yeah. off to B. Right. And now you're forcing Minnesota Rocker to now change their defensive setup, put players on that side of the map. On their first defensive round, they don't stack towards hedge. They know that they're going to have a trophy, but they play towards middle. They just have so many different looks. Minnesota has to be ready for those mid-game adjustments. Yeah, they absolutely have to. Trying to learn from some of your prior mistakes is going to be huge, but Tell you what, man, this is uh, this is a guy that it's never going to be fun to load up against. I know Clay was talking about it earlier on the desk. Hydra has been been hitting unbelievable numbers. Oh, yeah. In search, destroy, Jay. What? And Major 5, he was at like a 1.79 something Ooh. absurd. I'm being told we have an audio bite here from Mr. Paco himself. Let's go ahead and take a listen. You just recently took over like number one S and DKD so far throughout the entire year. Like, where does that come from? Like, where, what has allowed for you to catapult yourself into being, I guess, considered one of the, if not the best S and D player on the game right now? Uh, I've been working on my S and D a lot. Uh, just myself, watching a lot of S and D by myself at home at like until 2 a.m. Just literally watching what other people are doing. What should I do when they are doing this? And I feel like as a team, we worked on S and D a lot. Uh, with Troy, with Javed, all my coaches, my team. So we're just on point. So it just makes my job easier to, to do on the map. You'd love to hear that coming in from somebody who, Jay, has all the skill in the world. You know, you're coming into your third season. If you're a Hydra, you're right now you're an MVP candidate. And a lot of that's because of the work that he's been putting on in the back end. Oh, yeah. Search and Destroy has been his mode for quite some time, at least for the last two majors. He's been taking his game to a whole different level. When I had a conversation with Hydra, I told him, he said, why am I so good at Search and Destroy? I said, the reason what I'm looking at is because you have the raw talent to put yourself in any position to win any gunfight. But when you have that power position, it's all about staying alive in that scenario and not giving up your life for free. And I feel like he's been doing that all of Major 4, all of Major 5, and that's what now makes him the best Search and Destroy player player in the game and now with this team down 0-1 you gotta rely on him to try to bring it back and I guess the question that comes to mind is like if you're Minnesota how do you do you game game plan for no. somebody like I do no. whenever you game play for one player individually if that one guy isn't doing what you expect him to do your whole game plan is out the window so you have to make sure you're playing to your team's strength and you can already see it early into this round number run for Minnesota Rocker. It's a default setup. Let's spread. Let's make sure no one's going on the deep flank. No one's trying to take mid-map control. And at least the first blood with them now getting the bomb down at A. Hydra looking to strike. Does not see Cammy laying on his belly. So that is a quick two there for the Cam man. An instant 4v2 advantage for Minnesota. And it only continues to build. p Dog put the sniper to good use. But that is the only moment of success that you have in round one for New York. Minnesota, a commanding start. And that's a great tone setter right there for Rocker. You spread map. Now New York are going to be a little bit nervous trying to hit those routes to go on those flanks. Because the way that they just came out in that round number one. Rocker now up 1-0. They need an answer on the defensive end because they're going up against the subliners with the number one attacking team. 74% chance at winning on the attacking side. What can Minnesota do to change that up? I think another thing that we touched on kind of in the pregame was the importance of first bloods for Minnesota, right? That has been one of their biggest issues all season long. Cammy starts it off, obviously finds a 3K, but that first blood was massive. Into round two we go, flipping up the sides. New York now on the attack, but 
It was a lovely start there for Kismet, but two quick trades into favoring Minnesota in the end. And now we've got ourselves a 2v2, Attach and Fame versus Hydra yeah, Disguise. Fame already invests his dead silence as well. So he's slowly working his way up through the back alley. He's giving the info onto Attach as he's just throwing shoulders through the map, making sure the bomb doesn't go down. But Hydra, he gets that info. He's going to put pressure over towards B. Attach is just getting away with his life, playing this beautifully so far. Quite a few players investing dead silence. Hydra has a high oh! attach! How in, how in the world did he just come away with that? Champ's attach is something different. Wasn't here last season and is trying to show why he deserves to be in the starting lineup. Deserves to be in the brightest of spots. Is he about to walk away with another? Yes! Attach just makes the plays happen. It looked to be a freebie for Hydra, but he gets the info, gets the snap, and wins the one-on-one. -on -one. Then he reads the last player beautifully on Sky, super patient through back banana alley. Wins that one-on-one. -on -one. Fame doesn't even have to shoot a bullet. We were asking if Attach is going to be ready for the moment. Obviously, the guy's a world champion. He showed it in map number one, and he's not slowing down so far in map two. It's also a lovely sight to see if you're a Minnesota fan because it's Cammy in round one with a 3K. It's Attach in round number two that ends up coming away with the triple himself. We're talking so much about the SMGs that right now for Minnesota, it's the ARs who are frying. Vance looking in the position to try and come away out on top, but this time it is Kismet again toward bottom Cantina that comes out on top. We'll see if New York can finally etch a round number one up on the board is they will sit firmly on defense, waiting for the bomb rotation. Yeah, the bomb's gonna start rotating over towards B. Attach at least has some info. The player's playing in towards courtyard, but it's all gonna fall into the hands of Hydra. Soul Man in towards 10. Gets a couple sounds used there around the corner, but it's not when the first gun fight. So now if you are a Minnesota Rocker, you even up the numbers, you're making it 3v3. You have Cammy watching that mid-map cross. Let's just get this bomb down. It's also another massive gunfight, Jay, that Attach wins. It's not a trade. They end up evening up the numbers, and Cammy finds another through mid-map. Every single kill that he's found has oh. come in a spot like this. Kismet finds his second of the round, and now they're going to need him. Dead silence engaged as Minnesota have got that bomb down, 30 seconds to defend it. Kismet again with another. Now it's Fame left in a 1v2. He does have Death Silence, but it's not invested. He goes for the child, wins the one-on-one, -on -one, but cannot find the second onto Skies. In a perfect position to play the trade for the subliners. They retake successfully over at B. It all started with taking down Kami through mid-map. And then in that position that Attach was in, in top 10, you probably just want to play your life in that scenario. Throw a couple shoulders, don't give up your life for free. But unfortunately, he drops and then puts Fame in a very difficult situation. Skies is able to win the one-on-one -on -one to allow New York to get the first. I believe that was, I think it was, uh, was it Kismet? Then first blood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done three in total. Yep. So that's yep. what, three? Out of the first three rounds, we've had... Somebody get three kills. So we'll Triple. see if that trend can continue. A lot of hat tricks so far. We'll see who can maybe put their name up on that board. As Minnesota have got to be ready for all these nades. Everybody in the venue a little curious about what maybe the other side of Cantina is going to look like after this round is over. Craters surrounding over toward that A site when in reality, we're in a different spot of the map, Jay. And this is a completely different setup right here for Rocker because last time they played, the soul man at B was always Bance, but this time you switch it up, you put Fame in this position. So now, he's in such a crucial spot, he knows that the pressure's gonna come in towards 10. He's playing this corner, can he find the first blood? Wonderful patience being established from Fame. New York, it just feels like they've been waiting here for such a long time. And now it's giving Rocker the opportunity to regroup and re-engage. Fame gives it a double, and it's a triple on top of it. Cammy delivers Skies with the snipe. Not gonna be there. Patience pays off here in round four. And Rocker have definitely done their homework. They know that Kismet likes to be the island player over towards A, especially when they're applying pressure over towards B, but Fame, he's not nervous for the moment. Wins the one-on-one -on -one versus Priesta. Finds a second onto Hydra. And just shuts down that play right there from the subliners. Telling you, man, the practice in the last two weeks for Minnesota Rocker has been on point, and it's been showing so far. They're playing some stellar Call of Duty. They are indeed.
Excellent work so far from the Rocker, coming away with the crucial kills, a veteran-like play. Coming in from the rookie, as we said, in round number four. New York in desperate need of an answer, and that is the way to get right back in this round, get right back on this map, an instant 4v2, but you still have Attach and Cami alive. This next kill very well could dictate how the remainder of it goes. Aggression there from Hydra established, and from there, it is all up to Attach. Now a 1v3. Can't cut him out, though. Can't cut him out. He finds the first kill onto Hydra. That's the most important one, but Priest with the repositioning takes control of the middle of the map. They trap Attach, and New York subline is with the aggression over towards Hedge. They're able to stop the bleeding four now. But what a scary gunfight right here for Hydra. He's able to win it versus Cami. Throws down a couple shots to attach to try to play his life as long as he can, but his teammates eventually find that final kill. Subliners down 3-2. I think of that moment, right, if you're Hydra, you're just like, you're looking at that scoreboard. Well, obviously, he's not, but we are. We're seeing, yeah, like, yeah. he's got, you know, he's one in four right now. We talked about it. He has been unbelievable in search destroying as of late. Props to the Minnesota Rocker. Well, obviously, not allowed for him to have any of those crazy sprays, but just felt like in that kill where he wants to go through the doorway. He's just trying to get going. Try to get a little bit in sequence. He's now into this next round we go. Minnesota once again answering off the rip, and it's Cami with another first blood jet. Oh, Cami takes down Priesta. Such a crucial fight because we've had such a new minimap. Hydra already invested that dead silence. He's going to be behind them in through dark, and he is going to get spotted by Bane. He wow. gives the comm to attach. They take down Hydra. Now it's a 4v2. Skies does take down one, but the trade is there. Now it's all up to the Kismet. Minnesota Rocker on the back of the first blood. Play for the information. Allow the teammates to help each other in those scenarios and walk away with the round again. Now up 4-2. And how about you, Jake? But it kind of builds upon the point that we made last round, where it feels like Hydra's trying to get going. He's yeah. trying to make plays. We talk so often in SD about how, at times, it could be Kismet who's the one making flanks. Hydra's like, no, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Invest that dead silence, as you talked about. And he has shut down again. Minnesota have absolutely done their homework. They have been waiting eagerly for this series. And as we said, the last match that they played at Major 5 was versus this New York team. And so with that in mind, they've got a lot of research to work off of. Into the next round we go. And thankfully for Minnesota, you have got nobody here at this B site. Yeah, there's no one over towards 10, but at least Skies is able to get that shoulder in and spot them on the left side of the map. So as teammates know where the pressure are coming in, but everyone's going to be laid off the rotation. They're still thinking that the pressure's going to be over towards Cantinas, but the bomb is going to get freely painted for Minnesota Rocker. Now it's a 4v4 retake with 45 seconds. And we're looking at that score. This is the swing round, right? This is one for New York that you have to grab. You are in threat of going down 2-0 to zero versus Rocker. You're going to have to come away with something special. Retake about to go down as Minnesota prepare, waiting for the members of the subliners to enter in toward their reticle. Can they walk away with the first one? No, Hydra, an excellent answer. Dives right on in, but it's Pants, who's there to trade. One last player alive, Priesta. 15 seconds to go. He's gonna pull off something amazing. Pull off a miracle. Time continues to tick, and this will be the round. Minnesota now up five to two. That's just a perfect play call right there for Rocker. They apply the pressure over towards 10. I thought Skies, when he threw that shoulder, he was going to give the info to his teammates so they can slowly start to work that retake a little bit earlier. But by the time they applied pressure to get in towards the site, you saw Attach, he was all the way across the map watching that deep flank. He finds the timing to reposition through the middle of the map, find that first blood, and start off right in the trade engagement. It leads to Minnesota winning the round and now finding themselves at game point. New York have to figure something out because Minnesota, oh. they are making the adjustments and it might be a nade to do it. The play was touched on how many free nades that we're going to see. So far, not a what? ton on Mercado, but how in the world does that gunfight not get finished off? We'll have to leave that for oh. later time. p Dog with a snap. And now it's all up to Fane. Makes it a 1v2. Still plenty of time on that clock, but it's about to go down. Now 45 to work with, two players to face off against. This is not going to be an easy site to retake, but he's got information. Does not work out. New York able to stay alive for the moment. Yeah, big nade to start it off, man. They needed that one to start off with that first blood. You apply the pressure over towards Hedge. You come out on top in the majority of those engagements, and then Fame in the 1v3 does take down one, but once the bomb is down, 
Skies gets that info that he's applying the pressure through tunnel. Priest through top balk. Go for the double team, child, to stay alive a little bit longer in this search and destroy. So now the subliners are down 5-3. But just the way that Minnesota Rocker have been playing on the attacking rounds, some pressure over towards A, some pressure over towards B. If you're the subliners, it's got to be a full-on split. Well, Chance, a lot of stuff that you talked about the last time these teams faced off, right? I mean, so many looks is what really won New York the game so far for Minnesota. It's been the exact same. Nate over the top gets Hydra out of the fight. Well, Vance is shooting dead bodies. It just feels like with Hydra, you got to put an extra few bullets just to make sure that the man is down. Trades continue to go back and forth, but this time it's Fame who falls. New York even up numbers. Yeah, it's a 3v3, and you have Kismet. Already runs out of that dead silence. He's working that deep flank to try to take down Cami. But time is starting to tick. Uh-oh, Cami gets the right timing. He takes down the first, but Kismet's there for the trade. 25 seconds, 2v2. And right now for Minnesota, you have the information. You know they can only come in from one of two ways. Attach watching one angle. Bant's watching the other. It's a crossfire, but now it's a 1v1. Bant is there to deliver. And Rocker now firmly in control. Now up two to zero in the series. Just like we all predicted, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like we predicted, Lando. Minnesota Rocker, Mercado, so far this morning, this afternoon, has been their playground. They've taken it map number one, the search and destroy. They had so many different looks that the subliners were not prepared for. And even though they did lose that first blood battle, they were clutching up in these engagements. Fame was making plays. Cami starts it off with three. Attached with multiple one-on-one -on -one clutch gunfights. Minnesota Rocker are looking like a well-oiled machine right now. Teamwork on full display. Now they're up 2-0 in the series. Now, I don't want to talk too much about what was being discussed in the green room, but we were hearing that during the veto process, Minnesota looked a little shaky. Oh, yeah. Potentially, maybe didn't really know what was coming. Jay, they knew exactly what was oh, going yeah. on. They're playing some mind games right now. Back-to-back -back Mercados. We're talking about how New York are absolutely the favorite and already our defending Major 5 champions, Jay, are down 0-2. One map away from already being in the elimination bracket. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this, man. Obviously, everybody was expecting New York to be able to win this series, not be down 0-2. But Minnesota came to play today, man. We're at chance for a reason. Anything can happen. And the craziest part is that these teams have a lot of history on this map that's about to be on your screens before we head to that LSC low on control. We got to hit a quick commercial break, but make sure and stay tuned. Can Minnesota walk away with the 3-0? Or can New York, our defending champions, finally wake up we'll have to find out we'll be right back right after this
The CDL is brought to you by your favorite Orange Bandicoot. What do we got? Pre-order Crash Team Rumble today. Available June 20th. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. All righty, friends. Welcome back to CDL Champs 2023. We're just in our first series, and we're already witnessing what could be one of the more wild upsets of the tournament, maybe even of this season. Our defending major five champions, the New York Subliners, Jay, are down 0-2 versus the Minnesota Rocker, who just lost to this very team 0-3 just weeks ago, and now we have our Game 3 up next. Are you feeling a sweep, or do you think this is for New York to wake up? I just think the way that Minnesota have been playing so far in this series, the practice has been shown. Yeah. They know exactly what they need to do. They know exactly the maps they're going to play against the subliners, and El Asilo was the biggest one that was circled yep. because they know New York are not messing with them on Expo. You don't want to play New York on Hotel. So El Asilo was already locked as soon as this matchup was in the books. So if you are Minnesota Rocker, up 2-0 in this series, definitely caught a couple people off guard. You have the opportunity to close it out in three because this used to be your best control map. You were 10-0 before you started losing a couple. Six out of the last seven times that they have played it, they have taken an L. But when you are practicing against the number one control team in Toronto Ultra, the number two El Asilo control team in Atlanta phase, you best believe they are ready for this map. That's exactly right. As we said, practice-wise for Minnesota, you're coming into this match and you know what that swing map is going to be. And as you discussed, right, they're faced off against teams on the other side of the bracket. Just a wonderful opportunity here for Minnesota to play a map that I'm sure they have been working on day in and day out. But now for the subliners, you have to rely on Old Faithful. You have to rely on a map that you've taken pretty consistently versus this Minnesota team as of late. And right into round one we go. It is New York on the attacking side. It's the Bulldog. Let's, okay. Looks to get things going. A lovely little three to zero start for him as we are halfway through at A. Yeah, kids had a slow start in that map number one. He's looking to bounce back. Try to allow his teammates to start off the reverse sweep. That's already two segments done at the A point. New York are currently up by three lives, so Rocker, they're just going to decide to chalk this one up, play for the exit kills. Subliners are setting the time. It's all about fighting for that map control. And look how patient Skies is playing in towards White. He knows that his teammates are all on the opposite side of the map, but that's a power position that you have to hold. Yeah, it's great work from New York to just be aware of each other's arrows, the comms. Absolutely fantastic right now. Problem being, Hydra's out of the fight. So that's now going to allow for Skies to maybe have to reposition. A few of your players are dropping past that 50-yard line. So all of that wonderful play, all of that patience ends up going to a bit of a collapse. But we'll see if they can build upon it. They'll have to work out of their spawn. Great kills coming in from Hydra. Quite a bit of damage. Lands that nade. At least it looks like it. However, Rocker come through and deliver another quick triple. New York now in their base. Sky's the only man who's past that 50-yard line yeah, now. Yeah, Cammy's just finessing in towards White. He was able to find five in a row. Earns himself at least close to the cruise missile. If he can pick one else up, he takes down Hydra. Can't find the kill on the Kismet, but job already done. That's 40 seconds wiped off the clock. And you know your teammates still have full map control, but... Just in case it gets a little scary, you got that cruise missile to work with. Only a minute left. Subliners have full field control, so they can start to put pressure from the front end. Oh. But as long as your rocker trading efficiently, that's another three dead in the feed. They are doing what they need to do to win this defense. And just a subtle detail, in that little player cam, you can see Fame. He's actually screen peeking, looking at his teammates. That's something that Bantz loves to do traditionally. You can tell Rocker right now are grouped up, and they're ready for every single little bit of attack that New York looks to make. This has been picked your perfect defense so far throughout these last few minutes but this is the chance this is the opening for new york that will pause the time at 39 seconds oh hydra's able to find two he's still finessing he's still dancing around bs and d but fame wins the one-on-one -on -one. and attached through the back end takes down skies so with only 30 seconds left Potentially the final push coming in from the subliners. Kismet and Priest to start it off. Now you can get on that B point, stop the clock, but it's all about these next wave of fights. And look at the route that Bance is currently trying to go on. Bance currently in a gun engagement, trying to win that one versus Sky. He's not able to do so. It's a name that ends up taking down Mr. Benjamin, but it's Cammy with the streak over the top. The man is at nine and four. Peace and early here in round one. New York doing everything they can, trying to utilize the smoke to be their cover. Time currently paused at 17 and change. They continue to build it up, but it's two quick ones there for the Rocker. Any segment is big right now for New York. Does not feel like this round is going to go their way, but they continue to dive deep. They continue to work hard, but attach 
comes through with the few, and that very well should be it, Jay. He just shut it all down by himself. He found all four kills with that AR in hand. Doesn't matter, up close and personal, he makes it happen. Fame with the final two. You have a couple players from the subliners going on flanks, but now it's the soul man here. It's Hydra, he gets taken down. And Minnesota Rocker, for two minutes and 15 seconds, hold down the B point. When it got a little bit scary, Cammy invests that cruise missile. You take down Kismet. But then it was all on attach, man. He gets four in those final moments to secure the round for Rocker. They used to be the best team on defense. They struggled as of recent, but that's the team that we know of old. Rocker, up 1-0. Yes, yeah, you said, Rocker, their defense at the start of the season, around 80%. And then in their last few losses, it's actually gone down to around 25%. But that is vintage stuff here from Minnesota. We were talking about New York. It's been Old Faithful. I guess you could say rather it's been more of a recent one for them that they've been taking versus Rocker. In reality, this is Old Faithful from Minnesota. This is a team that at one point was 10-0 on this map. And right now, they're relying upon it to possibly deliver a 3-0 versus the subliners. Job done in our opening round. But can they do it on attack? A lot of this game could be decided in this round, potentially. If Fame can earn this streak, a cruise missile on attack, you will take it one away. Yeah, he's just playing his life. He knows how crucial this one-on-one -on -one gunfight is gonna be. With his teammates dropping around the map. Just check a nice little corner. And play for one gunfight. This is all that is needed. Subliners fully pushed up all the way through A side, and Hydra wins the up close and personal to take down Fame. Shuts down that cruise progression. But at least it opens up a lane for Minnesota to now apply the pressure over towards B. But every single player drops with side attach. It's going to be easy to get these guys all spawned. But you got to be able to stop that clock. Time to wrap back and get towards that. Oh my god, attach again. Goes low. Hits him with the old drop shot. Vance finally puts up his third kill here so far of the game. Was that one, I believe, heading into this round? So we're talking about slaying. You need it so often on LOC low just to get out of your base. You're starting to see collaborations, some kills coming in across the board. And from there, that is what allows you to hop on that A objective time. By no means still in a great position. New York could go for the late contest. That appears to be the case. Hydra with one, trying to go for a pre-fire. New York do not want to allow for this one to go the opposite direction. Don't want to try to get this one up for free. Steph players contesting it, but you also don't want to lose these gunfights too quickly and allow Minnesota Rocker to go for the chain over towards B, but that's going to be A out the way. They tied it up in the lives column. Now subliners have to hold strong on their defense over towards B for a minute. You already have skies in a position towards white. You have full control of back 10. It's all of Minnesota trying to apply the pressure through the back end. And Vance in a crucial position, but that nade takes him down. He was trying to spawn New York on the opposite side of the map. But once he gets taken care of, New York no need to worry. They still in full control. And Cam even should get spot out as well. That just goes to show how important the Vance can be on the map. He stays alive. Minnesota have a little bit more reinforcements to maybe make a play to the back side of the mountain, to the back side of the spawn there from the subliners. But 35 seconds still to go. Can New York continue to hunker down, to lock it down? Rocker end up finding two in stride. So this next gunfight's going to be massive. Kismet trying to even up the numbers while it's fame going for info. Yeah, Priest knows that at least a player has to be close to me. I got to back up. Try to play my life as long as I can because my teammates are spawning across the map. Fame takes care of him, but New York still do a great job of trading efficiently. Priest and Hydra combined for two. Now the sole man here is going to be Fame. With only 15 seconds left, he has to go big. And he gets sniffed out by Kismet, and this is looking like a subliners round. Yeah, it absolutely does. Final few lives are up for Minnesota. Maybe one last contest at this. Yeah, Tatch, he ends up falling in stride. Final resting place is going to be at the soccer field. And thankfully for New York, they're able to find an answer. Back-to-back -back defenses so far here on LSE Low. Now, if you are the subliners, you're currently up by two segments. So if it does go to that round number five, you will have that defense. But on the attacking side, we saw early pressure over towards A. They got those initial gunfights. They were able to extend the time all the way to two minutes and 15 seconds. But they just couldn't find an opportunity over towards B. So the game plan probably is going to be a little bit different for the subliners. You find the kills at the right time, especially right off the rip. Let's try to transition over and capture that beat point because that's a lot more difficult to get done. Let's see what the attempt looks to be. Looks like it is going to be somewhat standard off the rip. Try to look for some control for bottom warehouse. Maybe get some players into A, maybe transition over toward that B zone, which as we said is the more difficult of the two. The more prized possession on this map is to get B out of the way. But 
right now for New York. They're not really oh dealing my. with a whole lot of house money at the moment. Big gunfights coming in once more from the Rook. Bam trying to cause some havoc really all across the map into warehouse he flies. And from there it is Bantz who wins another one. We've been talking so much about the ARs. Okay. Parker. Right now it's the SMGs who are having themselves some fun. And he's starting to turn up. Like you said, in round number one, he was sitting at one and nine, but now that's two in a row. Seven kill to his name. We know what Benjamin Vance is known for, and that's the plays and the routes that he likes to hit. Subliners have been yet to complete that first segment over towards A. They're trying to transition over towards B, but finally they take care of Vance. They can try to apply the pressure through the front end, but as long as Minnesota Rocker have tower control, oh. have to commit over towards this B point. And that kill on the Hydra was huge. Problem being attached doesn't stay alive for much longer, so Right now for New York, the speed of spawns continues to flow toward the top side of the map. Right into B we go, and now it's Priesta looking for a bit of information. Tarzan, as he climbs up the mountain, eventually does fall. But thankfully the time still is paused. Right now for New York, they're just hanging on to a few crucial lives just to stay intact. The player on that zone ends up falling, and from there, we're now left with 24 seconds. New York have got to get something going. Yeah, they're over to a day. Hydra knows. We're not going to be able to get towards B. Let's just transition to the easy one. There's only 24 seconds left. You have to just clutch up in these fights. Fame has it one shot. Vance is going to fly for the kill. And now it's Prisa, the only guy here. He gets cut down. And there's only 20 seconds left. Subliners have two segments done. But you cannot lose the round like this because Minnesota are going to take back the lead. Yeah, that's the problem, right? You have really nothing done on the objective side if you're the subliners. There's kind of a no-duh type of situation for Minnesota. They instantly recognize the push has got to be made over at A. But thankfully for New York, they've won a few fights out of spawns. Right now, it is Hydra and Skies, the Valpals, who are trying to lead the charge and to keep this round going collectively on a five spree as we will gain another minute on the clock as New York desperately continue to search for the first attack of the game. Yeah, they're able to extend the time, but for how long? Because there's only a minute left. You only have 11 lives remaining. Only have one or two more good pushes to make this attempt happen over towards B. She don't really have a lot of map control. Fame takes down one. Fame takes down the second and Bance with the third. New York forced to hit the reset button beside Skies. And with only 45 seconds left, Rocker just need one more hold. This gunfight. This is massive right now for Skies. He's got a lot of work to do. Not only needs to find this kill, but also needs to kind of establish himself in top party, continue to be a beacon for in, for attention. But right now it's Hatch, he's just having a blast. He's hanging out on the back side of the map. This guy's eventually pieces him. That's gonna be two right now for New York. They found that opening. They've got three players surrounding this objective. Right now for Rocker, they're put in a spot where they're gonna have to contest Jay. Oh yeah, and Fame, he's trying to find the opening through the flank. But that's already the second segment done. Not a single player from Rocker is near the point. Fame eventually does take down Priest oh! And unfortunately, the team named for Hydra, but it does not matter. The subliners needed one opportunity. They get three dead. They know that fame was in the back of their space. They leave him alone. They stack the point and eventually leads to the round win. At the very end of that round, subliners able to clutch on up. Now put themselves up to one. I can imagine sitting in the back. You know, we have the opportunity to see the coaches and stuff. You know, they're watching the game, trying to strategize, figure things out. I think in that moment, when that nade lands, we see the team kill. I think Cinder and D-Roll, their heart had to drop 100%. in that moment. Just like, wait, okay, a team still happens? Okay, cool, we still got the round. Sweat off the brow if you're a New York fan. As they do grab our first attack of the game. Can they build upon it? Can they get us out of LSC load nice and early? Or can Minnesota pull off some magic again? It's gonna have to be through the attacking side here. And already it is Vance eager to get to work. Yeah, Rocker had to start off with this one. It's gonna be back-to-back -back attack aggressive. They wanna try to close it out in 3-0. Already 30 seconds knocked off the game clock. Subline is in full control of Radiant Tower towards A. So you're forcing Minnesota to apply the pressure up through field. Cami does take down one. Cami goes for the second as well. So Minnesota have the opportunity to try to close out this B. Yeah, this is exactly what you want to do right now after Minnesota. Get B out of the way. At least chip away at a few of those segments. Currently doing a great job. Player number 70, Kizzard. He ends up falling back inside of the base. So you're doing everything that you have to right now if you're Rocker. And right now, I believe it's Cammy, yeah, who's actually over toward Top Mountain. He continues to find players in stride. Jay, he has been so solid in this series. He's been on like multiple four or five sprees, had a few cruise missiles come in, and right now, he's looking for another. New York end up finding two, but 
for Minnesota if they just continue to wipe away time to be. Yeah, that's at least the second segment done, but now Subliners have full map control. That's a clean three dead. They're forcing all of Rocker to try to fight out of their base. Band starts it off with the first. But the rest of his teammates still got to check their corners. The Subliners are great on defense. With only 20 seconds left, they're trying to force that game four. Fame, understandably so, has to bring in the cruise missile. Information is all that he will have. Cammy desperately hunting for something, but he ends up getting dropped as well. Rocker working from their base, but there is a man who still remains, and that is Vance bringing out the AR, keeping the game afloat. They jump on B. Can they gain this extra minute? Vance falls. Cammy too. Can they get over toward A? It looks like they have Minnesota hanging on by a thread as New York continue to style this map is over. And the subliners stay alive. They come out in LSC low. They know what it's like to play against Minnesota Rocker on this map. And all it really took was that one attacking round to close out this entire one. To keep them alive in this series. It was just beautiful adjustments from both squads. Great mid-map presence, great slaying from the Minnesota Rocker. They had like three cruise missiles throughout the entirety of the map, but they still could not get the objective done as the subliners walk away with the control up 3-1. Now down 2-1 in the series. And now it gets a little scary for me if you are a Rocker because the subliners choosing Team B, we knew that they were gonna be able to choose map number two, map number three, and map number four. Right. And as we go into the map number four, it's gonna be Hydro Hardpoint where the subliners are basically the number one team on the map. Exactly right, my friend. And, you know, we talk so often about New York when it comes down to their success. It always comes down to control, always. right? They're 25 and 2 in series. When they win the control, they get the job done here. And I know we're talking about that next map, but it just feels like for me, buddy, in this one, it just came down to the attack, right? Yeah. They find that opening, they win that. Now they're in a position to lock things up on the following defense. Just great job across the board. What do you see there? Nah, I was just looking at the time remaining on the clock. Like, Minnesota Rocker, they found themselves in multiple scenarios, but they could have walked away with an attack ground. But subliners, when they applied the pressure, when you allowed them to put themselves in certain positions to get one and get out with the life, that's what made it super difficult for Rocker to try to find a, clue, a clean two to three dead, take some map control, try to complete that B point. Subliners are two major champions for a reason. Yeah. They know exactly what it's like to be in this position. The series is never done until it's done. With them winning the control, they have a date on that high. Yeah, it's just it's wild, right? Because we're talking about instantly, right after the first two maps, Minnesota feeling good, yeah. all momentum at their side. And just with that one map, it feels like the entirety of the series has shifted, just given the talent that New York has, given the massive disparity it felt like between both of these teams coming into this series. But Talk to me a little bit more about Hydro Hardpoint. What have you seen so far from both of these teams? New York, Minnesota, who do you think comes out on top? Give me the reason why. Oh, the reason why I believe New York are probably going to take this map is because they're number one on rotations. That means they're getting their better side of the map every right. single time. And they're also second in hold percentage. Their SMGs love to hit the water routes. We know what Kismet likes to do, so that's something you have to definitely pay attention to if you are a rocker. And then for Minnesota, the way that they have to get it done is the same way they got it done in map number one. That was all about the breaks, man. You win a couple key rotations, that's perfect, but if you can break the perfect setups coming in out of subliners, and that's the way you did it in map number one, you have the ability to do it in this map number four to close out the series. Now, I don't know, like, does it almost feel like to you, though, in, in some ways this is a bit of a positive for Rocker to play Hydro? Again, kind of maybe stats out of the way a bit, but on, on, at times on Hydro, like, this is a chance where you can kind of slow down the game. It's so much focus on the spawns. Maybe an opportunity to catch a few of those aggressive play styles out in the open. Is is there any merit to that? It's a positive thing going forward if they win the series. If right. you go, if you walk away with this in a 3-1 and you haven't really played Hydra a lot with this roster, you're feeling fantastic. They're only one and one ever since Attach has entered the lineup. They played it twice. Yeah. Lost once, they won once. So they know what it's like to play on this map. But when you're playing a team like New York on Hydro, and if you beat them on it, that's gonna with instill a whole bunch of confidence going forward throughout the rest of the tournament versus teams that they weren't expecting to play Hydro. If you beat the best team on Hydro, why not? That's exactly right. And another thing that we can discuss when it comes down to really both of these sides, but specifically Hydro and the boys of the New York subliners, you and I had the chance to chat with the subliners ahead of that major 5W. Yeah. What did Coach Center constantly talk to us about?
confidence. confidence. And what, what what really does it take when you're going through an elimination bracket run like New York did at Major 5? It takes confidence. You've had your fair share of some wild <laughs> elimination bracket runs. New York have done the same. It is so much about relying on your teammates and really just kind of getting the momentum flowing. And right now, New York has the momentum. Yeah, you just took the last map, and they know. They have won two majors this year. We know what it's like to hold a trophy at the very end. We're never out until the series officially says three on the opposite side. So you best believe Troy High Cow Michael Sender <laughs> is giving them the speech. He's hyping up Hydra. He knows that that guy is different. Getting him a little bit gassed up going into this map number four. Who's a good boy, Hydra? You're a good boy. <laughs> Let's go. Let's try to win us some Hydro HP. Let's get ourselves right back in this series. I'll tell you what, it also would be kind of fun to kick off champs with a good old game five. Ooh. You and I, we have a history with those. Bryce and Tom, we're looking at you guys. But to Hydro HP, we fly. Jay, we're taking a look at the records. You can see the numbers absolutely favoring New York as this is their map choice. But if there's two players you're looking at, one from New York, one from Minnesota, who's that going to be? I think it's got to be attached for Minnesota. He set the turn early in that map, number one HP. And then on the opposite side, it has to be Skies for me. The other main AR for this roster had a slow start in that control, even though it leads to the W. They didn't really have the best performance in that map number one. So the ARs in those power positions, it's going to be some crucial one-on-one -on -one fights between those two players. So Jay, I want to talk about Hydro for a moment, right? we got a lot of new viewers watching champs. Obviously, when it comes down to this event, incredibly excited to have you guys. What is Hydro all about? What are teams looking at right now on the map? Uh, right now, what you're mainly paying attention to, we know, in a majority of these hard points, the P1 is always going to be scrappy. It's all about the gunfights going into the next hill. And right now, Minnesota Rocker, even though they're not getting time off of this P1, there is no need to dependent because P2 is a money hill. You just cannot allow any players from the subliners to slip through. Multiple water routes that you have to try to pay attention to, but screw the water. We're just going to go right through the front. The subliners take down two. They're trying to flip the spawns, but at least Minnesota Rockers still staying alive on the right side of the map gets that spawn for Vance to win that rotation towards next. Yep, New York hit all the time at P1, but you're not angry about that if you're Minnesota. As you said, given that you're going to have that hard point up next. Hydra looking to make the play. Oh, oh my, my god! See you later, Bant, and it's a break instantly Easy. from New York. As solid as you'd like. My god, what a break that was, Jay. I'm speechless. That's just a clean four dead right there from the subliners. Now it's time for kids <laughs> to go like for a, a swim. They even had a stun come over the top and kill oh, yeah. somebody. Priest took one down with a stun as well. <laughs> So now, if you are Minnesota, the game is shaking up a little bit. We're expecting an answer over towards B2, but with the subliners finding an oh, instant God. break, and with only 20 seconds left, you are now forced to give this one up. Rotate early over towards P3. Put your team in the proper setup to get some much-needed time to try to get back into this game. It's like if you're in the Minnesota comms, you just hear everybody just with a sign, and you're like, oh, my. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, I guess we gonna, we're going to try to rotate. Maybe, I don't, I don't know, maybe try to recontest this a bit. But my goodness, already off the rip. New York up major rocker. Well, now you're going to have to be the ones that stay composed. Skies gifted a free two-piece. And from there, it's time for Hydra to get going. And now Minnesota have to get out of the hill again. They know that the the pressure's coming in. Teammates are spawning all the way across the map. We have to clutch up in a couple of these gunfights, and Cammy's the man to do it. He takes down two. Hydra takes down two of his own. And with Priest in this position, they get the close back spawns. Hydra just did it all to break this hill individually. And now he's applying pressure through the front end. The French Phenom is starting to take over. And this is why many currently call him the best player in the game, starting to level up his performance. And right now, having himself a swim. Hydra looking to hydrate. And right now for New York, they eventually do get wiped off the point, but they have made their presence felt so far here on Hydro. Now the path is where we're going to rotate. And it is Hydro trying to be a thorn in their side. That's now going to be five in a row and really a Minnesota team that's going to be filled with anxiety, filled with stress, trying to figure out where he is. Finally cut down, but it's a cruise missile regardless. Yeah, cruise missile now earned for Hydra. And now if you are a Minnesota Rocker, you didn't really have an opportunity to put yourself in the best setup because you were trying to locate where Hydra was going to apply the pressure from. But this is some much, much needed time for them to get back into this one. Do the subliners decide to invest that cruise missile? Most likely not because that player's in some great positions. Oh, Hydra and Kismet already combined for two. Make it three. The spawns now flip. Another break for the subliners. And this is the subliners that we saw at Major 5J, yep. a team that is so, so scary when it comes down to their breaks. Hydra causing some problems through the water. He was lighting everybody up. You see Kismet on three. Skies gifted another double. Flying through the air. He's looking like Spider-Man. Oh, oh, he gets the third. 
New York are styling so far throughout this game. Nearly up 100 points as Minnesota go on retreat, tail between their legs. Can they finally lock down a hard point, Jay? It doesn't look like it's going to be the case, though, because Skies and Kismet already find themselves behind enemy lines. Now Hydra at least takes down one, but there's three players here from the subliners trying to go for a break. It's all on fame. He does take down two. He's waiting for his teammates to get back into the play, and so far that has led to a great hold. The rookie is making it happen for Minnesota to try to get back into this game, but when I say that, subliners right through the front for another break. That's the problem, right, for Minnesota. It just feels like they're having to work for every single second. As you said, Fame comes away with a lovely double, locking down time. Then the rest of his teammates end up dropping. Bance comes away with a few kills, but it doesn't matter. New York are constantly placed inside of that objective. It's going to be a 100-point lead as we get ready for the second side of rotations. And really, if you're Minnesota, you're just trying to keep your head on straight. Just try to focus and... Hopefully, Jay have a much more successful start to the second set of hardpoint. Yeah, it has to be in their hold percentage because they are winning a rotation every single time. Every single hill so far, they have been the team early on. Just came down to the setups and New York finding those openings, finding those initial gunfights to find the break. But now currently down by 100 points. You currently find at least Vance in a position trying to hold down these P2 spawns. He gets the timing once he finds that kill. His teammate spawns up all on the right side. With the subline is the lead they currently have, they can play for this remaining 40 seconds. They can play for all this time at P1 because they know that Minnesota have two things that they have to focus on. Yeah, like for New York, like you've eaten your vegetables, you've done all the hard work. Now it's just a matter of really do whatever you'd like. You have the ability to play with house money at the moment. And right now they're looking for another break over at P2. Minnesota beginning to crumble like the foundation that they see. <laughs> Applying the pressure, another cruise missile for the French Phenom as New York now have got that spawn ready to go. P2 is about to be their home. Yeah, this game is basically locked up for the subliners. They are doing everything that they need to do. On the first rotation of hard points, it was all about the break. So far, on the second rotation, it's been the rotations where they're the team early set up. Priesta, Hydra, and Kismet already combined for three. They're going to be able to breach that 200 point mark. But it's only a matter of time before they're able to force that game five. Oh, and Hydra. Look at his numbers, Jay. He's 20 and 8. Feet kicked up. Oh, here comes some more. <laughs> Quick little engagement, Minnesota. They just got to They just gotta go. Green light engaged, but they just continue to not win the trades. Kismet. Now he's on four in a row. New York. Not a chance to necessarily win it here, but it's not gonna be all that much further once this hard point comes to a close. We talk about momentum. We're talking about a team who's got to dig deep, got to be ready. Minnesota delivered a nice little blow, but New York, a knockout punch here in game number four. Can Minnesota even reach 70 points, Jay? I don't, I don't think that's possible. I don't think it's possible, but at least they do win a couple key gun fights off the rotation. And they're fully set up over towards this P3 again. But now Priesta on the route. Trying to flip these spawns for his teammates. He knows they're applying the pressure through the front end. All they need is one break to close okay. out this game. He gets the first gunfight. Cruz missile invested. Hydra takes him down. Subliners are in. They're going to close out the game. Yeah, it just feels like you're faced off against a guy who's been like grinding in a few different games. New York, they have every single attribute, every single thing going in their favor. And that very well could be the knockout blow of this series. A 100-point club here in game four as New York are more awake than they've ever been. Game five to kick us off in Vegas, Jay. Remember the question you just asked me before the match started? Is Minnesota going to decide to play Hydra <laughs> in the rest of this series? Well, after that performance, Never it's again. probably not going to be seen for that organization for the rest of this <laughs> tournament. The Subliners, best team on Hydro, now extends their record to 10 and three. You just saw the way, how easy the map was for them. It's not like the Minnesota were doing P2. anything bad. The first P2. The first P2, right off the rip, man. They get like 20 seconds off of P1. Minnesota are like, all right, it's all good. Don't worry, we got the rotation. We're gonna be fully set up with about 20 seconds to put ourselves in the best possible setup. But every single time they had that opportunity, Subliners found the break time and time again to now force the game number five. We knew that these guys had fight in them, but that map number four was a beat down. So now if you are a Minnesota rocker, 
Got to go backstage, hit the hard regain, because this map five is everything. Oh, yeah, this is going to be unbelievable. I cannot wait to see how this series will conclude. Minnesota started off looking phenomenal, but New York are defending champions. They've woken up here in game three and delivered one of the more impressive Ws that we've seen on the season. A dominant Hydro dub. Who will walk away with the series and move on? We will find out right after this break. The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL, and the GMC Hummer EV pickup, the world's first all-electric super truck.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty Championship 2023. It's time to take a look at our scuff play of the game and what has been a wild series to kick us off. And Jay, we're taking a look at that man, Hydra. Got the pregame speech from Coach Sender, and he took off here in game four. Yeah, he said, I love you, because he knows what this young man is capable of. Hydra in full takeover mode in this map number four. It all started with that one-on-one -on -one versus Vance towards the back of P2. And at that point, he just doesn't slow down. This is another rotation where Minnesota thought that they had the advantage, but just still looking for where Hydra is. Yeah. And when they get over towards the next hill, Hydra finds three to break it by his damn self. This guy is just unbelievable when he's playing at this level. And that showed in the scoreboard, 250 to 66, to now force the game number five. All hail Hydra. <laughs> that guy knows what's up. Understandably so. I mean, maybe we could, uh, I don't know. Get a few more of those signs, potentially, if he walks away with the series. He definitely deserves it, as we said, an MVP candidate, judged by many as the best player in the game, has himself an unreal performance there in the Hydro, and hopefully looks to help deliver this Subliners team a Game 5 dub, which, as we said, Jay, right now, this man leads all players in overall SD KD on the season. Do you look to him to... I mean, be that same impact player for New York, or are you looking at someone else? No, he's definitely a guy who has the ability to take over on Hotel s and Talking about the flanks up through Shandy. Super fast attacking rounds where you're getting in power positions like couches over towards bedroom. Hydra has the ability to set the tone nice and early. But you see the map two attached, the world champion, 10 and 5, 2.0 KD. They didn't have that best. Actually, no one from Minnesota had the best map number four. Yeah. You got to completely <laughs> shake that one off because it's all about the game five. First one of chance, baby. Let's get it. Yeah, let's go, Vegas. Let's hope this is one of many here on the weekend. It's time to find out, can Minnesota deliver us with the stunner or can New York get the reverse sweep? Hydra answering early with the first blood. Backs up and gives a little high five to P-Dog who finds one in stride. Thankfully for Rocker, they at least are able to drop one in the meantime, but are still down in man advantage. Yeah, it's attached advance now. Left to try to clutch on up. You see the game plan from the subliners. That's just all stack, hit a conga line right up through the diner. They take down attached. Now it's Vance left in the 1v3. Ooh. Too many players from the subliners in your line of sight. As Hyde just starts it off with the first blood, Priesta with the second. And then just keep themselves in the man advantage the entirety of the time. Great teamwork for New York on full display in round number one. You can tell Bayes in that situation. It's like, okay, I guarantee I'm going to see somebody. Yeah. Then he sees everybody. Yep. So uh, in a spot like that, you can tell for New York, feeling good. Paco, no, he just delivered a crucial blow there to Bayes. Round one, going the way of New York. I tell you what, man, for Minnesota, obviously you want to try to win as many rounds as possible, but oh, yeah. it feels like round two, round three, you got to get something going your direction. You need to see something positive pop up on the scoreboard for once. And did we just see Hydra with a sniper in hand? Like, this guy's just different. We always were talking about Skies, his impact with the sniper. Yeah. So far, it's been Priest in map number two, Hydra now in map number five. Skies is trying to get out with his life. He does have that bomb in hand, and he's able to do so with great team shots coming in out of Kismet. Right now, the subliners, they're getting all the information. They know exactly how Minnesota are playing this. It's all about the adjustments from now. Take a look at player number eight as well. Priest of Rock and Dead Silence is just going to be below fame in a situation like that. So players just moments away from potentially going for the engagement. First blood, as we said, means so much in this game mode and in a game five. As everything goes on pause for a moment, chaos about to ensue, Jay. Yeah, Kismet invested that dead silence, takes full couches control. Right now, Minnesota Rocker just playing this beautifully on defense. They're going to run right into what Minnesota needs them to do. It's going to fall into the hands of Bance. He at least finds the first blood. You do have one player in Priesta with full bedroom control, but it's about stopping this bomb plan, and unfortunately, Kami cannot. So New York have the opportunity as Hydra finds the third with the snipe attached in the 1v3. It's all up to Mr. Price, puts in some shots, but surely this cannot go his way. An unbelievably clutch player, but 35 seconds to go. A to retake. Surely there's just no way. And with time continuing to dwindle, I think he realizes as well, maybe better to hold off. Not feed New York more. Not feed Hydra more. Looking for anybody to showcase a leg, showcase an arm. Finally gets the engagement, but it's New York again who comes out on top. 
two very solid rounds. And that was such a slow round for both teams. New York, you can just tell in their attack, they were trying to see what Minnesota were going to do. It was early pressure up towards the A-bomb. You got Skies to back down, but they were not worried about losing that positioning. They wrap their way back over towards A. They find the trade on towards Bands. Priest takes full control of Bedroom. And then Hydra, it doesn't matter what gun he has in his hand, he's going to be able to find at least one kill as the subliners take two in a row. Now up 2-0. As we said, another round for Minnesota. You got to get on the board. Bant's the only player with a kill through our first two that it obviously has to change. Fame, who has been an unbelievable SD player on Hotel, quickly tagged up. A nade over the top is going to give New York numbers for the moment, but it's Cami who comes away with the double. And just like that, we're talking about twos. Now it's a 2v2. Bomb drop, but still plenty of time on the round. And Cami and Bant, versus Kisman and Priesta. Bomb going to be down in towards main arch. Still a lot of time for Minnesota to work with. Bands have messed that dead silence. Trying to find the timing in towards bedroom. Kisman is not going to get any sound cues that he's in his positioning. But now with Bands here, probably want to go oh. for the chow, and he does. Kismet makes him pay for it. Now it's Cami in a 1v2. And that's so frustrating, right? If you're Cami, you don't even end up finding Kismet as the trade. Kismet with a huge 1v1 delivers yet another blow that Minnesota cannot handle. In the clutch, New York come out on top again as they continue to stack up the chips. Last six out of seven times the subliners have played Hotel S&D. They have found a W. They have played this map so much as of recent because this is one that they know they have to square up versus every single team. So far, that is three rounds in a row for New York. To now try to complete this reverse sweep, Minnesota Rocker have to have a response here. And this is the round that I love out of them. When they force that through the middle of the map, you have attached watching that cross over towards A to not allow any players to sneak on by in towards bedroom. But it might not work in their favor because the New York subliners, they're applying the pressure in towards Diner, Hydra. I thought he found a time, but the rookie takes him down. Minnesota, man advantage. Just see that one route that Hydra takes is maybe the one angle that Rocker were not prepared for. Quite a bit of blood splattered already in this round. Minnesota finally able to get on the board, and the crowd is loving it, Jay. Yeah, that's a much needed one right there for Rocker. Stacked through the map. Wise crosses towards both sides in a position to where you're instantly able to go for a trade. The guns engagements go down. Minnesota Rocker now able to stop the bleeding, but now they're back on the attacking side. It's been multiple first bloods from the subliner so far, two on their defense. Want to try to slow this one down, play for your info, but most importantly, play for that first kill. That's the thing we talk about when it comes down to this map five. Minnesota, their map choice, but for New York, there's a lot of VOD to watch. Yeah. I mean, this team has played it so many times. They've played it 14 times since Major 4. They've won six of their last seven Hotel S&Ds. Rocker, can you start to really weed out the strategy, start to figure things out? As I'm sure, the brain is moving. The strategy's starting to be learned. This Rocker will get that bomb down on B for free. Now it's a 4v4 retake. Subliners have three players applying pressure through the back end. One player in Kismet invested that dead silence going for the super long route. Special leads to fame, finding the first blood onto Skies. Now Priest that Hydra had to slow down, and Kismet could not win the one-on-one. -on -one. So now Hydra and Priesta need a miracle to happen because it's not easy to break in towards the kitchen. Yeah, it's all up to P-Dog. He gets silenced. Minnesota, Jay, they come into that round with the plan and knew exactly what they wanted to do. Rush right in the kitchen, get the bomb down. Make New York come to us before they can start to figure out what we're doing. And once they get there, it's the rookie who comes away with the first blood. And that's just another situation right there where subliners get all the info early into the round. Same thing like map number two when Skies watch them cross over towards B. You got to be quicker on that retake situation. You cannot allow that bomb to go down for free. At least open a couple doors, make it a little bit scary for the Rocker players. By the time they get there, a lot of too many one-on-one -on -one gunfights, which eventually leads to Rocker. Chaining two in a row now. Back into this search and destroy. Bang! Subline is going for the 2-2 two -two split. Hydra again with the sniper in hand finds the first blood. I could literally just do it all, Jay. As we Everything. Said, SMG, he and Sky have been trading, having that sniper out. Wonderful work here from the French Phenom. Now it's 6-3. and three. 
I would love to see a seven. We are in Vegas after all. Can he manage to snap? Rocker down in numbers and really the only player in here is distance up. This is gonna be player number two. Cammy hanging out in luggage. Thankfully is still remaining. Dolphin dives to safety. So Rocker, do not drop that second member just yet. Yeah, they just gotta make sure they're holding down Cammy in his positioning. Because with those doors open, he may be able to spot any time that they try to go for that bomb plant. Fame saves the nade. He's able to get Kismet off oh. it now, but what happens to attach? Fortunately, he nades himself, and now it's a 2v4. Yeah, and Fane should surely get sniffed out. He ends up getting eventually left now in a 1v4. Yeah, the pinch is there. If we have a replay, we'd love to see it. That is Tough. absolutely, Jay, where that round comes to a close. Oh, yeah. Once Attach takes him, take care of himself, New York, no, we're in a 4v2. We got the positioning of at least one player towards bottom bed, and we also know where Cami is towards bottom luggers. So let's just try to go for this bomb plant. Keep ourselves in the man advantage. Let's take a replay, look at it again. Attach is already out. Yeah, he's already dead. All right, that's the final two from Skies. Subliners take the round. They're now up 4-2. But Attach is going to be beating himself up for that one. That could not happen, especially in this moment. Yeah, in a situation like this, now down two to four, Minnesota starting to build some momentum, trying to even things up at three. Had such a wonderful start to this series, and they're going to need him to be on point. Now from this point forward, Bance, aggressive as you'd like. Watch as that trophy get placed down. He's still looking for his first COD Champs trophy. But with Daddy Pop, he's at least getting quite a bit of map positioning, and he's also gifted the first blood. Excellent start for Rocker J. Big first kill right there out of Bates. Now that Dead Silence does reset, they have the ability to cover more ground without being heard. But now in the 4v3, let's just get this bomb down. Let's force New York to retake in this scenario. All the players from the subliners invest that Dead Silence. They know oh! that Bates is in his positioning. Kismet again wins that one-on-one -on -one to make it a 3v3. And it's, it's been versus Bates, I think, in both occasions. Yeah. Kismet! Unreal in a spot like that, but still a job to do. 3v3, time continues to tick. Cammy brought low, Fame ends up answering. However, he drops. Now are the 2v2, Cammy a big one. Rocker, hold on. Despite some heroics in top bed from Kiz, Minnesota lock it down in a round that they had to take, Jake. That's a crucial one indeed, my friend. Vance tossed it off with the first blood. You get the bomb down, you force New York to go for the retake. But then everyone was playing their life beautifully. Fame in towards Eldes. He wasn't popping up until Cammy needed help. He finds that kill. The trade is there. But then every single player from Minnesota wins a one-on-one -on -one gunfight to take the round. Now down 4-3. Such a back and forth search and destroy that we have had on our hands. But it's going to be the subliners on the attack. Going back to the 2-2 split. Old reliable. But this time it's Hydra with the SMG. Hydra. Clearly hungry, he's hanging out in the restaurant. He now will become the owner of it. Tosses out some utility, gets some map positioning, but from there, the rest of the round is gonna come down to the other arrows on the map. He does at least lure attach into the top side of the map. Meanwhile, it could be the bomb that's rotating. Looked like a lot of min-map pressure, and now we begin to shift over into the restaurant. First pick still yet to be found. Still a decent amount of time on the clock. Yeah, and Skies is just putting out a couple shots over towards A. He's just trying to keep Minnesota at bay. Continuously having the 2-2 split. They don't know where the pressure's coming in, but Fame with the first blood on the free stuff. Finds the second kill onto Hydra. What? Don't know how he wins that, but Minnesota now in the 4v2, make it a 4v1. Fame does it all through the middle of the mat to take down three. Minnesota Rocker with down 0-3. They have tied the game at bat four. That's up oh, close and personal versus yes. Hydra with an SMG. <laughs> you do that? not see that happen. The rookie is not afraid of the moment. Minnesota tie the game up. That's a kill that's basically like worth five. Like you should add like a plus five. You should earn a cruise missile for that one. <laughs> Especially versus that guy. Fame not affected by the brightest stage that he has ever seen. Gets a hat trick. And look at that scoreline now. Minnesota right back in it. In the round nine we go. Rocker once again will have that objective on their back. As Vance looks to lead the charge. We find another first blood here. Oh, and he's making plays, man. He's covering so much ground. I don't know if the subline is going to be able to read this positioning. 
as the bomb is now going to get planted over towards A. It's another retake for New York. Every time that Minnesota have got the bomb down, they have found success. Can New York try to turn it around here? A few players in through couches, been crossed. Was watched there from Kismet. Vance looking for information. Cami has got to stay alive. Brought down low. Kismet there to start things off. Fame again, as solid as you'd like. A statue ends up dropping another. New York currently inside of the bomb site. As Bance looks for info, you got players from Minnesota all over this site looking for information. Time continues to tick. Oh, he finds oh. nothing. They find all three. New York. They find all three on the retake. What just happened? That cannot happen. There was only 15 to 20 seconds left. All the players from New York had no info on where anyone from Minnesota was playing. Once you put down a couple shots through luggage, you at least get the positioning of one player. But Prisa, once he wins that first gun fight, you know the second guy isn't towards luggage. You stack the bodies just in case you try to go for the defuse and eventually find the final. But that's a round that Minnesota Rocker definitely want back. You can't give that one up. It now puts the subliners at game point. What do we think, Vegas? Is it done here? Or are we headed to around 11? Minnesota, one they gift away. They cannot afford to make another mistake and one as valuable as that. New York on the attack, looking for info. First blood would mean everything right now, especially for the Minnesota side. In Minnesota, they're going back to old reliable. Let's just stack it with the map, watch the cross over towards bedroom. Put down a couple oh. shots on the cross, but that's just teamwork on full display right there from the subliners. Early shots from Skies, leads to Hydra fighting the first blood, oh, and there's too many bodies for Bands in his positioning. It's now a 4v2. The rookie and Cami left to clutch up. Fame, he's gonna be ready. He's gonna be ready. Oh, Priesta wins another. It's all on to Cami. No upset today. New York says, place your bets on us. Down 0-2. And they fire back with the reverse sweep to kick us off here at Champs. And that's how we start Champs 2023. Two-time major champions go down 0-2 versus the team that they just 3 0 two weeks ago. But they, jo they know job is not done until the series is three for the opposite side. They start the fight back in the control. They close out 3-1. The Hydra hard point was an absolute slammage. But when you got to the game five, it was just the early success from the subliners to go up 3-0, have a nice little comfortable lead, knowing how Minnesota likes to play the map, and then make the adjustments going forward. Hydra with the snipe, Priesta with multiple first bloods, Subliners are two-time champ for a reason, and it was on full display there. They complete the reverse sweep for our first series at champs, man. This yeah. is only number one. That's bro. exactly right. I know. We felt like we casted like two different series. Yeah. Minnesota start, New York's finish. But I remiss, I'd be remiss, Jay, to not bring up. We obviously need to highlight New York. Oh, yeah. But right now, we should be in round 11. Right? Oh, yeah. We should be in round 11 had that play for Minnesota. 100%. Not gone down. They, Minnesota, they're going to beat themselves up for that one because it's only 15 seconds left. They have to defuse the bomb. At least one player has to drop his gun to stick that bomb defuse. When you put down a couple bullets through a door, at least New York get the info that no one has an angle to at least watch the bomb. Yeah. They all have to eventually go for the chow. And then at that point, subliners win all those gunfights in that moment. That was the decider factor in this entire series. Yeah, that's the best way that we could possibly have to start off champs, a lovely little game five. But that's gonna do it for myself and Jay as we now toss it over to the main stage. We've got Blaze with our guy, Priestley. Hey, once again, everybody, welcome to Con Champs, okay? Give it up for the New York Subliners. I got P-Dog on the main stage and, you know, you guys won major five in this series, down 0-2. You would have lost that, you would have been down horrendously. But how are you feeling right now after that comeback? I mean, it feels great to start off a tournament like that. Uh, you know, we, def we definitely didn't want to lose uh, the round one. So coming out and doing that, we got the blood flowing and uh, I think that's going to lead it into our next matches for sure. Yeah, I think it definitely will. Now, I don't know how well aware you are when it comes down to your control stats and when you win that map, how you guys take over series. After you locked in that control, talk to me about your mindset, the comms going into game four and five. Were you guys fully confident right there? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, to be honest, Mercado uh, can be an iffy map for us sometimes. This is kind of a coin flip in certain situations. And uh, honestly, they came out and played it well. But going into the third map, we kind of just knew we were going to bring it back. Like, all of us went to the back. None of us lost full. We were super confident. Like, we just knew. Like, we yep. all had the trust that we were going to make that comeback. Yeah, man. And we all saw it on the stage, okay? And Priest, when it comes down to your skill and gameplay throughout the season, it has been magnificent. Watch you on the come up once again. Talk to me about what you want to say to the fans out there, the subliner fans, your personal fans out here while you're here at Champs. Yeah, man. Shout out to all the fans, my family, my friends, everyone out here. I mean, you guys are going insane. This arena is sick, man. I, I'm excited to keep playing. It's so sick, okay? Keep up the energy all weekend long. That's going to do it for me and Priest on the stage. Chris, take it away. Thank you so much, boys, and congratulations to New York. The city will be celebrating a reverse sweep from the subliners to open up COD Champs. Welcome back, everybody. This is your analyst desk. We've got Namwis, we've got Alley Cat, and the three-time is joining us this week. And Clayster, I want to start with you. You played the subliner squad. They 3 0 you. Minnesota, they were up 2-0, though. How does the subliners squad bounce back and rattle off 3-0 again? I think the subliners in previous iterations of this team, they would have lost full. They would have been broken after going down 0-2. But honestly, it's a testament to the growth of this team, the maturity in this team. They've come back from worse, and you can see it right now. Right there in that interview, Priest just said, none of us lost full. We all knew we were going to win. We just had to bounce back, and it showed right there, three now, straight. Absolutely. Now, Allie, we got to talk a lot about New York. But first, can we give some credit to Minnesota? Yes, because this whole absolutely. desk, we all picked New York. Some people even said 3-0. Minnesota came out with games one and two. No, that was an incredible performance from Minnesota Rocker. I think their biggest misstep in that series had to be letting that Hydro Hardpoint come through. I mean, we've seen what New York and what Kismet and Hydro specifically have done on that map and mode. And I mean, they're 5 and 11 as well for the Minnesota Rocker. I think they test their luck when it comes to the hotel or something else. Uh, personally, I even said it before the series started that that Hydro Hardpoint was going to be kind of the safety net for New York subliners. And clearly, 250 to 68, it gave them the most momentum that they needed into that game number five. And most importantly, they drew hotel for their game five. And Nameless, this has been the bread and butter of the New York squad over the last two weeks. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like in this map set, Chris, you're OK with splitting those hard points, right? Like, you got one of them. It comes down to, can we win both search and destroys? And we get to that game five. And New York have three fantastic search and destroy maps, Mercado, Hotel, and Asilo. And if you're Minnesota, you got rid of Asilo, and you picked hotel in this series. They picked that map number five. They could have played Fortress and made it sort of a toss up. I think that that is maybe a missed opportunity for them. Uh, but like we said, there's a lot of preparation that goes into these games and they pushed them to a game number five, Chris. This is a major championship squad. Minnesota definitely played up to their competition. New York is coming out. New York powers forward. They will be playing against the winner of Optic Texas or Boston Breach in the next round of the winner's bracket. But we're going to see Minnesota now drop down to that elimination bracket. Allie, if they're going to stay alive in this tournament, who look good on day one that you want to see return on day two? I think they all had their moments throughout this entire series. I think we saw Cami maybe that we were waiting for. I think Vance had a great game number five and Attach was a monster in the first two maps of this series. So I don't think we can count them out yet. I think for Minnesota Rocker in that game five, they just need to be a little bit more confident in the plays that they were making. There was many opportunities where a player looked like he was going to be in an opportune situation and then slowed down just a little bit as if he was second guessing himself. So Minnesota Rocker, painful way to lose, but to fight it all the way there to that game number five against our major five champions, we can't count them out yet. Absolutely. Shout out to the sub Liners, they won Toronto, they win their first match of the day, and they also score your first scuff play of the game. Let's take a look at it. Clay, you called this guy the GOAT backstage. Young Hydra, the phenom, was doing work on Hydra, opening things up 25 and 10. Honestly, the way Hydra has grown as a player, it makes me so happy to see. I'm a proud dad over here. He's just moving around the map. This Hydro performance was insane. We on it, we lost the map to them at, with the, about this scoreline in an online qualifier. They are so well practiced, so well put together on Hydro. You really just can't watch every route. There's too many routes. Yeah, we got a stat from our, our guy, Tim. This is the biggest differential we've seen in Hardpoint, right? So they absolutely fried them on this map. And, you know, we were talking about New York, like the ability Hydra has to just get lost. Like he's able to cheat steps and his teammates will make up for it, you know, later in the game. It's just unreal. They Hydra on Hydro. That is our top performance so far on the weekend. But remember, this is just day one of four and that is match one of a billion. Let's take a look though at what we got moving forward because we still have three more battles here on the opening day of action. Up next, you are gonna see the showdown of Atlanta phase for Seattle Surge. We got Optic Texas versus Breach and we'll close things out with 
Toronto versus LA all here on day number one. We want to thank everyone for tuning in. Make sure you are joining us. Get your collection started right now with Upper Deck. Today, you can get the 2021 Call of Duty League trading cards by Upper Deck, the official trading card partner of the CDL. Collect your favorite teams and players on UpperDeckEPAC.com or scan the QR code on your screen. And of course, we got the Shop Alley, the best, the best and brightest gear, New York Subliners showcasing their hoodies that are on this website. Yeah, you want to look like your favorite players up on stage, make sure you check out shop.callofdutyleague.com and get some swag. We're going to break. When we come back, it is battle number two on the day. The number one C takes on number eight. It's Atlanta Search after this.
And we are back. Call of Duty Championship Week in 2023 continues as we have the opening day of action all in our winner's bracket. The top eight teams have made it here to Vegas. Tonight, we find out who is powering into the second round of our upper bracket. So far, the subliners have locked up their spot as we have the number three seed moving forward. Now we got our number one versus number eight. And statistically, this one, way closer than you would think looking purely at the numbers. Nameless, these teams have matched up nine times over the last two years. Yeah. How's it gone? I mean, it goes to game five over half of that time. It's been five times it's gone to game five. It's always a nail biter. Pred is unbelievable up against Atlanta phase. They love this match. Seattle Surge versus Atlanta phase. Clayster, for you, you've watched it. You've played both of these two teams. Why do they match up so closely against each other? I really think it's just the players that they have on the team. Having somebody like Pred and Mac as your sub duo, they can go toe to toe with Simp and Abizi. And you have people on your ARs that like Sib and Accuracy who are really just holding down lanes, locking stuff down. And really, they just put forth that, that baseline level to allow the subs to fly. And you need a sub like Pred to go up against Simp and Abizi or you're just going to lose. So that's why I give him such a good shout. Allie, you're looking at some of the numbers coming in. Historically, Accuracy, not his best matchup when he plays against FaZe, but Pred has had some monstrous Numbers. Yeah, unfortunately for accuracy, this matchup hasn't been his favorite with a 0.7 when it comes up against the Atlanta phase. But honestly, Seattle Surge as a team overall had tend to struggle when it comes to search and destroy on land. And that's going to be the game changer here when it comes to the series. So for the Monster Energy pregame, of course, Stay Competitive Respawns, like I said, they've been seriously struggling in search. And they're going up against the number one search team in the building. So if they can't go toe to toe there, they have to at minimum take the respawns. And of course, play the Tiny Terrors, search and destroy. Like I said, a BZ and Stamp, I mean, some of the best s &D players you'll have to go up against on that main stage. And Accuracy, with that point seven, needs to have an event here, and it has to start against the land phase. Seattle Surge locked in. They've gone to second place. That was at the start of the season. It's been up and down since then. Clay, you guys knocked them out of the last event in Toronto, and I feel like the Surge have been at the lowest we've seen from them in recent history. How do you wipe away the previous month? and just start this weekend fresh. It's champs. I mean, it's champs. You have to wipe it away. The entire season comes down to this. You made it. I'm kind of salty I'm not in that spot right now. <laughs> hey, they, they got that spot. They better do something with it. You really just got to go in like a goldfish. It's champs. Nothing else matters. On the other side, you're going up against a team that knows nothing but grand finals appearances. Number one seed coming into four straight COD champs. Atlanta phase has been the juggernaut of the CDL, but they're looking for another world championship ring how does the team get it done this weekend yeah i mean i think uh the response have to be on point once again obviously it was uncharacteristic of them in that finals to lose three s and d's right so if they could sort of emulate that major five performance they're in a great spot simp is back to being absolutely dominant everybody's peaking at the right time when you talk about their hard point it has gotten so much better this is a team that was not great in rotation all year long we rely on gunny trying to make plays happen and you know, more times often than not, they'd still get one of those in the series. Now that they're figuring out some of those fundamentals and getting to their final form, they're rolling every team that they go up against. Uh, and now they're going up against the weakest version of the Seattle Surge that we have ever seen. Typically, this will be a banger of a matchup by the numbers when you look at the respawns. As it stands right now, they should smoke them based on Major Five. Allie, I gotta ask you about this phase crew a little bit. This team is always booed. <laughs> Are they actually the favorites for the crowd coming into this battle against the Surge, you think? Ooh, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they get booed no matter what, but I mean, if they have to fix anything when it comes to Monster Energy pregame, I mean, their hard point has slowly been getting better since Major number three. It's been their only weak point, and they've been placing top three regardless. So the amount of talent on this squad, they just have to fix a couple of those mistakes. 11 and two in this stage. And still, again, number one s &D team in the building, in the league, continue that dominance. And again, we're going to see that control LSC low. That writes a very good situation for the Atlanta phase team simply because last time they went up against Seattle Surge, it was LSC low game three, and Simp dropped a 2.27 on their forehead. Yo, Cell is glowing. Can we talk about the <laughs> fresh cut? Yo, that got to be the That's the crispiest <laughs> cut I have seen in Las Vegas, dude. And we, Clay, we were also talking about how insane it is what Cell's been doing lately. Ridiculous. 1.3? Oh. Honestly, a 1.3 average blows my mind. That's like <laughs> what I shoot for every series, and it's hard to attain it in one series. This guy averages a 1.3. It's insane. His brain's different, man. His gunny <laughs> is different, and you all will get a chance to see it across at least three of our five games. Let's take a look at this best of five. Allie, you've crunched the numbers as always. Who has the statistical advantage as you take a look at a lot of 
of Embassy and a Mercado Game 5. Yeah, I will say again that LCL control kind of raises a red flag for me for Seattle, but I like the two embassies to open up this series. I think it gives them a lot of opportunity to cushion themselves for the rest of the map. Yeah, if it goes Game 5, it's absolutely over. <laughs> it's Atlanta phase all the way. Seattle haven't won that map on the season, so they're looking to close it out in four. I will say, man, I really do like the first two maps for Seattle Surge. They've had success on it throughout the season, and they've played uh, Atlanta phase tight on those as well. I like that call. It's time to get to our official predictions, and best of luck to everyone who is still alive in the perfect bracket race so far. New York is powered through. Question is, who goes through in match number two? I'm taking the number one seed. This is easy for me. I'm calling Atlanta FaZe. Clayster, where are you landing? Got to go with the tiny terrace. I'm going FaZe. Going with FaZe. Old teammates going to get the dub tonight. What about you? I'm going to have to go with Atlanta FaZe. Allie's locking in Atlanta FaZe. Is the desk going four for four again, Nameless? Yes, I'm going Atlanta <laughs> FaZe. You saw the graphic. Chris was it first, first, second, second. These guys are dominant at COD Champs. All right. With that said, we have to talk a little bit about the fan vote because, as we saw, Seattle Surge was on that right side of the screen. Just 6% of the audience thinks Surge can make a run to a championship. If they're going to turn everyone's mind around in this first series, what do you want to see from the surge lineup? They need to start out hot. At COD Champs, like we just saw in that New York match, New York came out that first map a little flat. They rebounded in the last three, and I need to see Seattle come out swinging map one to set the tone for the series. Allie, we've got a lot of people in chat talking about who's going to drop the most kills. I got to get the correct answer from you, though. Throughout this series, I don't care about KD. I want total frags. Who's going to be on top of the leaderboard? Oh, you don't care about KD? Don't care about uh, KD. Most frags. Go. Most fra oh man, I'm, I'm between a BZ and Pride right now. I think I'm gonna go to BZ. Accuracy. <laughs> Most frags. Listen, he's going to have a bounce back game. This guy's going to be in the absolute mix. We're going with Lamar for most that frags. Too. This match is just a few moments away. Get your predictions in right now as we are waiting for the players to kick off game number one. Did we get the map count from everyone? Does anyone see this going to a game five? I actually do. I actually do think it goes to a game five and Atlanta face seal it up. You know? And why do they lock it up in a game five? Well, when you look at Seattle, 0 and 5 on Mercado Search and Destroy. That is the game five. But day. then you got to think, though, like, why did they put it in the series set? It's like, they've been working on maybe it, yeah. they've been working on it. Maybe it's gotten it better. Matter. You got an Abizi and a Sip. Yeah, yeah, you, you got, got a Abizi and Sip running at you yeah, at bomb site. I do know that Mercado was Seattle's auto veto for a long time, up until this last stage. And so this last stage leading into champs, I think they've been workshopping Mercado, although it hasn't went their way as much as they would have liked. Um, uh, I know we played them twice, and I think it was like 6-5 both times. So they've definitely been putting a lot of work into him, Mercado SND. And while we're waiting on Simp, by the way, he's the last player to plug in. We're waiting for him to check in his settings, which you need to do here at Champs. This is a very important game, number one. Can you tell me about this player? Because when I was away, he was taking home esports awards. He was taking over every Call of Duty yeah. honor. But I feel like he's kind of faded to the back this season. Everyone's talking about selling him in a BZ. What should I look for from Simp? Yeah, I mean, Simp is a monster right like this is a guy who we just have such a high expectation for him when he's not dropping 1.3s and 1.4s people are saying that he's underperforming that's not the case he's got superstars around him right so he just has a be a player who's going to come in fill some gaps and make plays happen when he needs to why do you think Abizi has the ability to just go out there and go rogue and be that entry man and sort of just get lost behind enemy lines is because he has simp to take that back seat if simp wanted to play like that he could and nobody can speak to this better than you play as you team with both of them of course Course. And I think one of the biggest things is there's only so many frags on the map, all right? We got Cell <laughs> average at a 1.3, Abe going yeah. off. There's only so many kills on the map, and Simp is the type of player that will do whatever it takes to win. So if he has to get in the hill, if he has to drop a point A, but they're still going to win, he's going to do it because he will always do whatever it takes to win. Yeah. Las Vegas, give it up to Quaster for his first ever Phil segment. The match <laughs> is ready. It's time to go to the stage with Blaze. Let's get this going. Yeah, Chris, the match is ready. The second one of the day. But are you guys ready for it? The first team coming to the stage. Get ready. It's the bad boys from the West. Here comes the Thunder from Down Under.
Seattle Surge. Here comes Sid. Accuracy. Mac and Pratt. Give a warm welcome to your Seattle Surge. You can talk about their season, but does it matter if they make a run at champs? They can make up for all the missteps right here, right now against the Atlanta Fays. Pred in this matchup has a 1.2. If you don't know what that means, he's been absolutely slamming them when he goes up against it. We're looking to see if he can do it once again. Let's bring out the Atlanta Fays. We got the bad boys from the West. Now it's time to bring out the bad boys from the South. Las Vegas, get ready, because here comes those menace in red. Racks up in my safe. I've been dreaming of pulling up in that rape. Take the stats. I ain't got too much to say. I got Gucci on my belt, but my pants sag. Wouldn't be surprised if my biggest hater made a fan page. You taking notice from your boss. You man made. Grown at getting touched up by the handshake. Don't think you hear me right. Let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> 100 racks. 100 racks up in my safe. I've been dreaming of pulling up in that rape. Take the stats. I ain't got too much to say. Las Vegas, get ready! Here comes Atlanta Faze! Give it up for Slasher! Sip! Abizi! And Salio! It's the Atlanta Faze! To be honest, I've never seen Selium look as serious on that stage as he does right now. Maybe looking to be the Undertaker in this series. The Atlanta phase has not looked better this season heading into champs. It's the villains of the league and they're looking to get a chip and it starts right here. Let's get this match started, Blaze. Ali, I agree. When it comes down to looks on these players' faces, they're ready to go and it's looking intense. Vegas, you ready to get it started? All right, let's go, Merc Maven. Let's get freaky. <laughs> I'm ready to get freaky. We've got a blast ahead of us. What a fantastic first series it was to kick this off, but we have a lot of incredible Call of Duty action to go. Maven here joined by the ever glorious and beautiful Joe Merc Deluc. How you doing, buddy? I feel good, man. I look like a PE teacher, you ready know. to hang out. It's hot here. It's like 100 degrees outside. I'm vibing. If you told this entire arena to like get down and do 20 push-ups, they'd probably listen to you, honestly. They like, better. You're literally our, our gym teacher right yeah. now. I love the polo <laughs> look. It looks good. I'm feeling good, man. This is going to be a whole hell of a lot of fun. Audience, you guys have been spectacular so far. Uh, this has got to be one of the most lit Thursdays we have ever had at a tournament, so thank you. Uh, but now here we go. Listen. Joe and I have casted a lot of Seattle versus FaZe. If you just looked at this on paper, uh, FaZe should come in and slam them. But even when Seattle have like been struggling, when they've been at their worst, when they've been on their like up and down cycle, this is a matchup they have always lived for. Yeah, I mean, listen, respawns 50-50 are on the year, right? I mean, they are right there. The problem is search and destroy. I think it's 10-2, 10-3 in favor of Atlanta FaZe. No surprise there. The problem is, is that last major, Atlanta FaZe, they took their respawn to another level. Probably should have won Major 5, one Celium kill away maybe from winning it. But does it matter then? If they play that respawn, I think we all think in a best of nine on a Sunday, they should have another ring. And I think there are some Seattle fans and maybe players that blame FaZe for how this year has gone. You think of that gut-wrenching round 11, the, the dead E cheats, the hip fire that hits and takes out Fred. They might have won that tournament. This year could look so different for Seattle if that moment goes differently. Can you turn it all around here? Come out with a bang. And I like what the desk said. I think it starts with this map number one, Embassy Hardpoint, one of their best maps, but three in one is Atlanta Phase versus Seattle Surge on this one. You talk about a couple of hardpoint maps where your subs have to get going. But for me, I'm looking at Sib. I need him to be that superstar once again versus this Atlanta Phase team. Well, see if he's able to bring it to I'll start here for Abizi and Deddy out quickly. Slasher lining up multiple as well. Going to be a very tough gun fight there with the sub at range versus Sib. And Sib, you need to come alive, need to have a big series. There's two for him, Joe. Nice shots there. Obviously, some early time here for Atlanta Phase, but on rotation, you have Matt in position. You have Sib top gas, a big one on one, about to go down. Slasher is going to win it, ready for that gunfight. Now over to Sib, wins the initial gunfight. And 
now just trying to play his life. And we saw at Major 5, it felt like he, well, he was back in his bag, right? Playing at such a high level, but all the rotation kills right as the hill pops, gonna go the way of Seattle Surge. Yeah, you heard Nameless talk on the desk, how like he'll, in, in play, like he'll play for the win. He'll do whatever it takes. It, not that he was getting away from that, but he was playing around himself a little bit more, playing a little bit more selfish, looking to pop off on the map. And I think that team just needs it from time to time, even though you have the superstars. Just Simp is one of the best players to ever play the game. Assert your dominance when you can. Yeah, huge break there. That's going to be three dead for Atlanta phases. They're going to get on the hill now. A little bit too easy. Accuracy still alive in the back. Going to get behind that truck, try to play his life, and able to find a kill on the hill. Zabizi tries to get in a position, but he's taken down over to Slasher with the sub. Able to take down two, now up to six and two. He had another great major as he finds four in a row. And this is what he was brought on this team for, to win another ring. But probably with a couple of headshots could give them that scrap time as we head on over towards B3. And I think we talked a lot about the Reeswan improvements and, you know, Simp's tournament, but Slosher, yeah, he had an amazing tournament. And he's a guy who's taken a lot of flack this year. Knew he would be the scapegoat, but he has stepped up in a big way. And Lordy, do they need that? But a BZ getting cheesy. Three in a row for him. Seven and three start. Just a 10 point advantage right now for Atlanta Face. Yeah, trophy down, AR in hand now as well. A BZ going to find that one. All the kills going the way Faze's way. You can see where Seattle Surge is spawning just so far out. The map control all to phase, a clean 25 seconds to start this P3. That's about as good as it gets, right? Just nobody even in contention. Then you have one player that's gonna be spawning out. That'll be Simp. I see he's under CDL sub. They said he was the last one to get in. Maybe having some issues getting started, maybe on a different account. Not sure exactly what the deal was there, but looking to get it rocking and rolling. As he is trying to connect in the gunfight, it's a few through for Seattle Surge, looking for the break, not going to happen. Faze still in control, and it's five in a row for a beat. I mean, that is one of the cleanest, what, P3s I, I think we've seen all oh, year. That oh, is a yeah. full 60, usually with the nades, the stuns, the ladder, pistols. Like, usually that's very messy. Selium able to win that gunfight, avoids the nade as well on rotation. So now this could get messy for Surge. they got to try and rebound. Off a of spawn. <laughs> Slasher's gonna take down two with the nade. Pred the last player up in position. Loses the gunfight, and that cannot happen. As Faze gonna get on the hill. I think you nailed the start of three. Like, they were spawning so far out, man. Like, it was just such a comfortable hold. Now, can they do it again here? Accuracy, a little bit windier in the last gunfight. Team kill comes through. That Sib gonna be guilty of it on the heady. It's a BZ winning gunfight. And it was a 40 to 30 game, Joe. That scoreline a little bit different now. Yeah, P3 to P4. I mean, it's just all Atlanta phase. They are winning all of the gun gunfights five in a row now as a team. Now this rotation over to P5. You have Slasher working gas side. One player's going to spawn up in the back to be able to take him down. Next up is going to be Abizi. Him and Selium just taking their time. They know every kill. Very important on this rotation. Just trying to get some match control, but there is that 100-point lead, and Abizi able to snap. Okay, that looks like an absolute joke. I don't know there's some help there, but Mac now with the melee out, able to hit, snap there, but Slasher up to the gunfight. Now, Joe, if you're gonna bring this back to your surge. Starts here. Yeah, say <laughs> it starts here, but like, have you seen anything going wrong or just the hot phase start? I, I just think it's the slang, right? Look at the top left. You have nobody positive. We talked about Preds, you know, impact versus Atlanta phase team. You need your stars in this matchup. Where the other side, everyone playing extremely well, especially Slasher and Abizi, but they have to slow this game down, right? Force a break for Atlanta phase to have to make, right? Do you control this? Maybe get some scrap time. Uh, at P1, you're right back into it, but there's the break from FaZe. That's going to be three dead. And well, with this time, they're going to keep that 90 to 100 point lead as we go into that next set of rotation. Yeah, the break comes with 20 seconds left, so not maybe the end of the world, but just being in such a hole as you are is Surge, any second gets painful. It allows you, if you're FaZe, to kind of play for scrap, play for that junk time, and slowly get closer to that 250. I think, you know, 20 seconds at a P5 on most other hills, you, not a big deal. I think here, that's a lot of good time because this P1 is just so messy. It's true, not where you true. can, uh, you know, earn a lot of time on the map. So, Abizi now on another five spree. Potential MVP starting to go off here in game number one. Plays the toughest position in the game and makes it look easier than anyone has in the history of the game. Keeps rolling, 20 and six. This man's inception in the league changed the position as we know it, and he is on a tear. Not a tiny one, a massive one. Seven in a row, 21 and six. Dropping a bomb here in the map one is he is just dancing but finally going to end the break. Yeah, able to earn that cruise on rotation. His slasher, free fire and throwing the nades. 
I guess a good thing for Surge, while that was happening, there wasn't a ton of time earned, so still the lead. Right around 90 points. But on rotation, everyone getting kills for phases. They set up for P2. They have backtrack, backtrack control. They have gas control. Another rotation for Atlanta phase. Sep is trying to get a dump from the truck. Might be a flank on through. Beast map is cut, but not going to matter. As Sib is able to push that out. But Faze so far dominant. The advantage is there. They are coming out swinging. Let's go. Right to a phase listening. I'm at Alley. 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 I'm I need a front side down. I don't know laundry. Front side time. Front side down. Nice and low. Balls in. Tyvel, you can find another back. 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 Get some. Get some. Go over there. He's on me. Bottom gas. Bottom gas. Tyvel, help. Top gas. Top gas. Top gas. Top gas. Challenge. He's top gas flat. He's on me. Top gas flat. I'm trying to stay. I don't see him. He jumped down. I spawned holes. Might chase me. He's back. Gas. Dead. Nice. Good. Bring me top on me. They're spawning top. I'll see him top nerd. I need top. I need top. I'm trying to pinch him. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the heady. Behind the heady. I'm gonna get yes. Two shots. Two shots. Two shots. Take your time. Take your time. I'm a streak. I'm a streak. I'm a streak. I'm trying to push out this. I'm trying to flick top off. I'm trying to push out this. Listen. One is on the planter. Push up. Push up. Close door. Close door. 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 Planter. Chopping. Chopping. Top. I killed him. I killed him. One more. One more on time. One was in orange. I saw. I saw the DPD. Hold on. I'm trying to push out. I'm pushing gas. There's probably max pulling. Grenade on time, guys. I got two tips up it. Yeah, I did too. This is Max Wayne. Chase, 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 One's from uh, P1. Yeah, tap it, tap it, tap it. I'm in the back. 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 I'm Yapping, Pretty repeating calm. themselves, yeah, yeah. very calm there. I think you got to give big props to, to Slasher and the coaching staff for sort of dialing in the comms, calming everyone down. <laughs> Yo, they're now 30 that? seconds Yo, away, you. yeah. It's about not 26 apiece for Slasher and Abizi. Abizi not able to find 27. Not quite a 100 point club, but they got a chance to close it out here with emphasis. Come out and make a statement in this map one. What a map from Slasher to start this off. Such an improvement there, Major 5. Looking to roll that right into Champs, a guy that has always seemingly got better later in the year. Just a monster here. Ten more points needed. The beams are continuing. Looking for the 30 bomb, nearly triple positive in Slasher. The 30 not going to come as the drop shot's on point, and Pred makes a spectacular play. But Pred, who Ant said kind of like a 1.2 in this type of series, has not got to go into map one. Now he is getting cooked. Surge is getting cooked. And Phase takes map one. I think the comms were a big deal. I know that wasn't like the most stressful map, but it is like the first map of champs. And sometimes even when like Alec was on this team previously, like he'd be kind of that general in game. Like, yeah, he, he'd talk a little fast, get a little panic sometimes. And I think that would maybe trickle down a little bit to the other players, not all the time, but you'd hear it there. Outside of Cell, who's always kind of talks that way, everyone else was dialed in. It was clear, it was concise. The small talk with like that balcony fight and the help was sensational. They are locked in, man. Uh, that, that was the calmest phase listening yeah. ever. Uh, I mean, you would not expect this to be champs. And yeah, I think now I'm, I, I, I wasn't sure with this Surge team because, you know, they have been a, a team that has a ton of up, ups and downs as a yeah, roster. Always have. And as Clay said, you're going into champs to sort of just forget about it. We have to lock in. Not the map one we were, we were looking for. Uh, just your stars didn't get going. You didn't make it messy for Atlanta face. I just think you look at the P3 and P4 right off this first rotation. That lead never went away. Well, yeah, I, I think this is when we started talking about it. It was a 40 to 30 game. You go up 100 from that P3 to P4. And yeah, from then you just, you never look back. And like, it, it really gives you, when you're up that much, like 100 points, like it gives you a little more freedom to not play however you want, but 
take some extra risks, maybe rotate a little bit later at times, hit scrap. Like you, you have more options when you're sitting on a lead like that. Yeah, no doubt. But now we're going to a, an embassy search destroy, which, I mean, phase has been lights out in. There's obviously that that round 11 that happened at major. Three. I mean, there was a stretch they didn't play it for three months. Yeah, people didn't play him on this map. Yeah. for this reason, and we'll see if uh, Surge can can lock it back in. You have to think. You know, we talk about why champs is different. You have a couple of weeks to prep for the matchups. Search and Destroy is where a lot of preparation is done for these teams. Do they have something to pull out the last event of the year? Yeah, I mean, you heard Clay talk about it. He could probably speak to it better or as good as anyone. Like, champs is different. It's a million dollars for first place. It, it, it's different. They, they are fueling the pressure. Everybody here, the crowd has been terrific. It is uh, just the entire environment. It's so, so sick. But 25 and or 250 to 112 is going to be that first map. And yeah, you got a chance to bounce back, but I think there was some pressure on that first map for Seattle and you can't be feeling good. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say there's necessarily pressure. I just think if you were hoping this was a series, you were looking at map one, right? Just because, I don't know, Embassy, you can get going. We've had so many Pred Mac moments on that map where they, they've gotten double and triple kills. Just nothing, nothing there. And I mean, you have to give props to FaZe. They, they knew that Surge were gonna be looking at that one. We're going to take a look at uh, some of the players to watch here for the Search and Destroy. So you're ready for map, uh, map two, Pred versus BZ. They have both been terrific. The stats, pretty damn similar jump. Yeah, I mean, the only stat that's different is sort of the win-loss col column, right, right. For, for Search and Destroy. We've seen Pred have double digits after double digits on this map, but at times, they just don't win it. They don't win it. But on the other side for a BZ, yeah, I mean, this is just what he does. But I'll tell you what, the first Bloods being that close, props to Pred on, on what he has produced this year. And the search and destroy, like, listen, the hard point has improved a ton. And I think, you know, we talked about it on our podcast, sort of like, if we believe that FaZe's hard point has actually improved, that it wasn't just a, not a lucky stretch, but like a hot stretch. We've seen so that where teams get yeah. respawns. But if, it, if, if they actually have improved, they're the favorites for me. That's, that's how I feel if, if they've actually made the improvements. But where they have struggled a little bit or where it's fallen off a bit has been the search and destroy. And search in this game is like, it can feel like a coin flip at times because how Deddy works and there could be some random timings, but if the hard point and control have improved that much, like they don't need to be that team that was winning 15 searches in a row. They just have to be like a solid phase search squad. Yeah, and I think that narrative around them is sort of struggling. I think going into the final of Major 5, they were 2-1 and one going into it, right, at that event. They just lost three to NYSL. Yeah. Obviously, that Asilo, that one kill from, from Selium, if that happens, it's a totally different narrative. But yeah, I mean, maybe they kind of know, all right, we have to focus up on some of our fundamentals. They're reading us this really, you know, very well, but they're search and destroy gods for a reason. Yeah, I just, I just don't know. I mean, if the response are there, they just don't have to be what they were. They don't have to necessarily oh. be gods. But I, I stick with any team that we've seen work really hard to improve in one part of their game. Like, you've seen a little fall off somewhere. It's just, it's happened basically all the time. But what do you bring here at Champs? Because I wouldn't be surprised if they were absolutely lights out in Search and Destroy. And they get back to the absolutely dominant form. Probably looking to rebound after how that final win in Major 5 with the three losses. But against Seattle here. Can they take the 2-0 edge or does Seattle bounce back behind a massive map, maybe from Pred? Does he have what it takes to shock? Tie this one up. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look as well from uh, you know these two on your screen, their stats at champs, what they have done the last, what, four years? Uh, it's pretty good. It's unbelievable. I, I, th I think it is one of the more <laughs> impressive stats in like the history of Call of Duty. Yeah. When you take a look just I don't, year one, they, they want. Yeah, cherry pick any stat you want. Like, this is one of the most unbelievable stats ever. The consistency that these young men have had at champs. It's why it's so hard when you're doing a bracket, not just at least have them in the final. Like, they just all, they're always there. It's why when they walk out on stage, they get booed because <laughs> yeah. they probably choke slam their favorite team yeah. over and over and over again. Yeah. It's just what happens. We'll see. Can Surge bring this back, though? I know the narrative has just been, you know, maybe that map number one, but like we said, maybe they've had a lot of SD prep going into this event. Can they get them going? We know, we saw it last year when they get fired up, the energy's on the stage, they are different. You kind of said the difference in champs is like, you know, you really, you know you're round one, you've got weeks to prep for that. You really just focus in like, where can you find the gaps? I guess I think if I had watched FaZe in Major 5, I'm probably thinking maybe Search and Destroy is where you find that opening, right? You probably put a lot of time in that, I would think. Yeah, you saw the stats there, four and nine for Surge, 12 and three four phase and i think all three of those losses are in round 11 fashion as well but here we go map number two underway knock knock 
Oh, can't quite get the kill. Gets the shots in. Mac with the first blood. Slasher quickly there with the tray, but the player he first got the shots in. Able to get away, at least for now, as we go to a three versus three. And we'll see how this starts to develop as they begin to work this bomb over. It's nice hand for Sib. Try to get haircuts. Not quite going to connect. Tries to stun for info there, close. I mean, as soon as Cell hears that, he goes for the nade, backs him down. And when he backs down, that means, okay, we could push this forward. So Simp able to take down Pred. Bomb being planted on the other side of the map. Accuracy going on the flank. What kind of timing does he get? But Simp has to stay alive, and he does not. Yeah, that, that, that gets so hard for Simp in that situation, but a little flick of the wrist. There is the shot's hit. The flick of the thumb <laughs> as he connects on the shot. We'll see it again, Simp. Snap, bang, you haven't seen a lot of it in these last couple years, but if you've been following his career, you know he can hit it with the big stick. Yeah, I mean, just, yeah, finds it on the ground, watches that flank, able to connect, a nice round for him, three in the round, but it just starts with the info. As soon as Cell knows there's a sniper, the nade goes out, backs him down, they know then they have to clear orange, Simp able to win that one-on-one, -on -one, immediately goes to the bomb, just all the right reads there from Atlanta Phase to start off this map. 3-0 for Simp, we'll see what he can carry forward. The aggressor early, gonna be a BZ, but the stun's all hit, and he's kinda locked up here for now, but it's Simp cruising on forward. The first two kills go to Atlanta Phase, 4-0 start for Simp, as Deddy is out, and he is a hunt. Yeah, Matt gets pushed up, but he gets spotted by a BZ, and then Simp up to five. A BZ able to win another one in these two rounds, convincing on a phase. Yeah, I mean, you just didn't play them here for so long. Uh, it, when they were in their bag and on that tear and search to destroy, you just didn't match up with them here. You knew you were going to get bodied. Just, right back at it. Yeah, great teamwork there, right? They know that a BZ is kind of in a very vulnerable position. He's saying, hey, I'm getting stunned. The nades are going to be coming in. So what do they do? They get aggressive through that side door. Simp able to help out his duo in a BZ, and that just leads to a round win. No one way to take the pressure off him, getting two kills. <laughs> that gets it done. 5-0 and start now for Sim. You only have one kill on the surge side, and that is Mac. And that's basically what, the first blood of round one. You have not gotten a kill since then. They need something to get going, and not this one domino falls and the rest right with it. And I like this from FaZe, slowing it down. They kind of know, all right, we're down on an O2. Whole Surge may try to get aggressive here, try to find some opening with the first blood, but they just wait. They watch all the doors, don't allow anyone to get aggressive. And now with 50 seconds, we're going to start this push. You see the nades coming in at accuracy. He's got to back down, play his life. Next up is going to be Pred. What timing does Pred get? Pred, I think, is getting hunted by Abizi. Max able to find one, but Pred plays go. his life, has the Deddy reset. Now in a two on three, a slasher finds accuracy. Streak ends for Simp. You start to get some kills flowing. If you're a surge, flying on forward, sell nice his catch. Hot. Slasher. Last one up at a one versus three, 25 on the clock. Thought maybe he had a free pick, not going to happen. The crossfire is in. Round on the board for Surge. They play a passive, they take their time, they get the round winning. Good job. I mean, accuracy is staying up as long as he was. You know, pressure really flowing to him, aiding out. He was like, van, the truck, the van, just kind of backing up. Making layers on the map, and the teammates stepped it up. Yeah, now one-on-one. -on -one, I mean, Pred versus Abizi, uh, he was getting chased by Abizi for so long. Able to win that, because then that leads to the next kill, right? Then he's in the base, able to find Celium, secures that round win. Yeah, you need that one badly. How the first few rounds went, you get it done. Pred now. Three in the round. Out to three and two. Sip. See if he can get a hit. Oh, jumping across and that is God. not easy. That is a ludicrous shot. Out of Sib. Now Pred, that'll be five in a row, and it's a quick one. Is this map two flips on its head? Surge taking over. But the flick to open it up from Sib, disgusting. That is just unbelievable out of Sib. And then Pred able to find two on the flank. That's five kills in a row for Pred. He saw that the last round. He, you know, he saw some energy from him. Can he get going? You see him common. But yeah, the first blood, just that, that dolphin dive right behind that block. How many times have we seen that shot not hit? 
a, a lot more often than it does. That, that is for sure. I'd love to know the percentage just on that shot in particular. It's probably not high, but still. A wondrous moment. Now, Deddy out for Mac. Preds already on the flank, already through side door. What's the timing like? He's gonna be able, oh, not able to find the BZ. Now has to play his life. Slasher gonna be looking for him. The map is split right now. Both teams just taking each other's side. Who's gonna find those kills? So far it's phase. Selium and Simp. Getting it done. Mac trying to bring it back. Abizi went from down low. Now on to Fred. He's on six in a row. Fred, my God. The snap on the site trying to send it. Isolate this one versus one while he can. <laughs> trying to get there. Takes about 17 seconds to mantle in this game. So by the time he gets up, BZ repositioned and takes it. He didn't really reposition. He just, he just gets snaked. And well, that's, that's just what happens in this title. So BZ able to snap onto him. But I mean, if Fred finds that first blood, maybe things a little bit different. It's just one of those, you know, are, do you shoot there? Do you instead try to look for someone the on the attack flank? Just, is a kill, probably. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a kill. But the fact that Abizi is able to play, play his life, and they win the gunfights on the opposite side of the map. 3-2 now. Back to phase. They are getting aggressive up in map. Craig going to call on the crews. We'll see what spot oh, Simp just God. pushes and takes that one-on-one -on -one versus Sib. That has got to be a frustrating death as you're just playing it slow behind he's still, the three. He's still alive. He's still going. He's still going. Oh, That's number three. What is this play from Simp? They had all the info. They knew his position. It does not matter. He clearly knows theirs as he runs through basically the entire team. This round has fallen apart for Seattle Surge. Now Fred, last guy up. Will it be the ace here for Simp? Won't be the ace, but it's all smiles for Sep as he just one by one gunned him to bed. Yeah, I mean, as you said, they got aggressive middle of the map, and he just takes the first gunfight. Of course, Sip, he, I think he's got the snipe out. He's probably watching it. Maybe he gets caught off guard. As soon as that missile is called in, obviously, Pred's giving him the info, but it doesn't matter. Sip. Well, he gets pushed up to the close block, and I think, like, right as the street gets called, I mean, if you're simp, it's sort of like, well, I gotta take the fight. I yeah, you gotta go. In, I gotta go. Yeah. And just takes it instantly, wins it, and never slows down. And he has those rounds sometimes where they just flow. Nine and three now. Two round advantage for Faith. Now a one in ten start for Sim and accuracy. Accuracy yet to find a kill on the map. Another first blood, and just so quick over towards this A site. Simp already on the bomb. Slasher, able to find Sib looking over him. Mac does bring it back, but all of a sudden it's a one versus three. Just so quick from the face side. Yeah, they are executing, huh? Yeah, pretty well. Not really much else to say. I mean, this is it's what face does at times. Yeah, I know. You know, you had some lovely round wins there from Seattle, but some of these just feels like. A step behind. Like, it's just the execution so quick from FaZe. Like, they're trying to figure out, make decisions. Like, decisions already been made. It's being dictated on the map right now by FaZe. Yeah, maybe two steps behind, actually. Yeah. <laughs> this has sort of been one of the struggles for Surge all year, just their map pool in general, right? Like, where do they go to? Even map five, they're 0-5 on the year on Mercado, Search and Destroy, if we can get there. It's just, it's always been something that is, been tough for him. Well, yeah, I mean, it was what auto ban for them for, for quite some time, but they've been working it in and not a lot of success, but we will see. Nice first blood there. Off the top rope goes Fred, but another one waiting before he can get ready for the fight. A BZ already there quickly with the tray. Now the other end of the tiny tears. It's Sip, but it's Sip with another lovely flick. He's only got two in this game, but two have been nice snipes. Yeah, one player jumps up though. That's Simp. He, he hits the mantle. The doors uh. open. Sip just trying to play his life running, wasting time. There's one player in a BZ. Now it's down to accuracy. 0-6, can he find a kill? Can he find a kill? No, no he will not. No. The new James Bond has been found. You'd make a great, you'd make a great bond. Oh, yeah, probably would, dude. Probably a great bond. Domination from phase thus far, up 2-0. Maybe a little slip there in rounds three and four, but 
everything else. Dominant Crowder on the main stage. Fist bump to the boys. They are flowing thus far. I mean, not, not much else to say. Yeah. Uh, 150 point winning map number one. 6-2 right there at Search and Destroy. What you would want to see if you are a FaZe fan. Some unbelievable individual moments though out of Simp. I mean, just round number one, three kills. Finds a sniper on the ground. That round where the, the streak is called in. Just perfect execution out of Atlanta FaZe and Search. Yeah, they were decisive. Decisions were coming in quick. Seattle couldn't just quite keep up. Now you take the 2-0 edge. You look to maybe close it out in a control. The control was lackluster this year for FaZe. The hard point even worse, but this past month and a half, they have flipped it on its head. The improvements have been there, and they look to close it out here in the control. Yeah, this is CeeLo control. It's just been so strong for them recently. So we'll see what could happen. I mean, we saw it in, in the, the first match of the day. It was a reverse sweep. Can Surge get something going? We've seen so many magical moments between these two teams. It feels impossible right now, but maybe Seattle bring it back. Simp is him. We had to break. We'll see if they close it out when we get back.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. The CDL is brought to you by your favorite Orange Bandicoot. Pre-order Crash Team Rumble today, available June 20th. Las Vegas, hello, and welcome back. We get ready to rumble here in the map three, but you see a shot of a BZ, one of the best to ever do it. We chatted with him about what it's going to take to win this event. Let's take a look at his thoughts. Everybody knows all of the storylines and the history of what it would mean if you guys were able to walk away with the championship, you know, how many it would be for you and Simp, you know, the whole team, et cetera. But like, what would a world championship say about this team and about the Atlanta Face franchise? I feel like it really show how hard we work throughout this whole season. Cause I, I'm telling you, I feel like this season we've worked the hardest we ever have. And I, I feel like it's, it, it needs to show. So I feel like us winning the championship would mean the world to every single one of us. Now this is your sixth uh, season of pro competition. What's something that you've learned this year? Uh, something I learned this year, I wouldn't say I necessarily learned something this year. I feel like if anything, the learning experience for me was in Vanguard. Um, I really wasn't you know, playing to my ability and I wasn't putting in the hours and effort that I should have been in that year. And I feel like this season I really turned that around and you know, became like a, almost like a new player in a way because I put in the hours and the work and you know, I feel like it shows this year so far, but I feel like we still haven't really, you know, showed as a team where we can be at. You hear how uh, important it would be. And, you know, he talks about the work this year. And listen, we are close friends with Crowder, the coach of the team. And uh, oftentimes he's very sarcastic about coaching. We'll be like, yo, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, I don't have to do anything. Like, oh, these guys are so good. Like, I just hang out. But like this year specifically, like just talking to him, like, He's like, I've had to work this year. Like, like they have really, really, really tried to fix the respawn issues, get the team dynamic back in place, get Slasher working within this uh, this system. And it's showing right now, but I think he's right. He's like, a win here would really prove all the hard work we've done. Well, I think the, the effort comes from the individuals, right? It, at times, it should just be, you know, a little bit difficult what extra hours they're doing, but you just heard it from a BZ. I mean, it wasn't the best year for them last year, still very, Good, but yeah. not a lot of wins. Well, zero, so trying to bounce back this year. They got one, looking for another one. And here we go, on a CeeLo. As the hit comes in, Fred gonna get laid flat, or Fred lay flat, Simp, and then try to take that second fight. A BZ out of there for now, but we'll see how the opening moments continue on. Yeah, I think if maybe there's something good to take away from map two if for surge it was maybe that pred had a couple of multi kills maybe you saw his individual gun skill waking you up a bit well sort of like you said though like he'd have the stats like, like they were comparable to a bz as a win just hasn't been there right yeah but maybe just his ability to to win some more of these one-on-ones clutch up some some respawn situations you get the rest of the guys going is okay map control first 45 seconds all seattle surge but mc selium with a take down to work over towards a yeah, we'll see. Now that he gets out the tower, it's going to be such a crucial position to help them take this first sight. And there come the beams. Selium already putting shots in range, allows Slasher to then move up the map. Now, Cell does drop, so that's a big kill. Lamar able to take him out, and accuracy with a big moment. He has the 0 and 7. It is a struggle there in map 2, but some big kills there, at least for his surge side there. Now you see Simp with attacking. We've seen this more and more. I think it really started last major. You know, with Kismet, we saw... You know, him as a sub, really pull out that third AR, especially on offense, attacking over towards B, especially you can get top hill, you get over towards barbecue, you know, on that back balcony. Just so many spawn kills, so many great positions with the AR. So starting to see that from a lot of these teams, just changing the meta. And Zip, he's gonna have to win another one-on-one. -on -one. No, not gonna have to. So time extended for one minute. Now Atlanta Face has to capture B. Yeah, it was a real slow opening, mostly dictated by Surge. They had a little bit of a life advantage, but now that's starting to go the other way. We're tied up 18 lives right now. Selium looking to pounce. Here's one below, up over the top. And BZ's actually able to get that kill on the comms that come through. So now Cell trying to push out these cuts. Get shots and player rotating out of spawn right now. If you are Seattle Surge, timing not good at the truck, but the snap is lovely. The tracking on point there for Slasher but you still have one on the point. And that was Mac, he's no longer there. Yeah, I, mean, I think he's, he gets a little help there, right? The team shot comes in, but still the snap. I hope so, yeah, I hope no, so. No, he definitely did, <laughs> uh, unreal out of Selium. But this allows them to get slashed into this position. Mac, though, did a very good job coming back from 
Atlanta phases base to find a couple of kills, get them off of the point, and now Slash up to five in a row, but Mac right off his of spawn, gonna take him down. So 30 seconds left. 10 lives still remaining for Seattle Surge. Phase, they're gonna have to go soon. Abizi trying to play his life, and he does it well. Aselium is there for the trade. Yeah, I mean, there's potential here to bleed them out in lives, but you're gonna have to keep that clock stopped. This is gonna be tough, though. That's gonna be the case. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. You saw that stun, it missed Ooh. a friend, so. Thought maybe he was gonna be able to make the play. Able to find one nice shot from Sib, but you still have a player here pausing the clock. Six versus ten. Mac now trying to wait for his teammates, but he is gonna get pushed. It's now it's Selium's turn to try and stay alive. Just such a back and forth battle as accuracy with the double. Accuracy, another huge multi-kill. Just around 10 seconds now to go. Five lives left. Can they get to the point of a fewer phase to try and clutch up? Gonna have to find an opening. The stun's starting to hit. The shots can't be there for accuracy as the stun does connect. Stopping the clock for a moment, but the kills did come through. Pred, Sib, take out three. They take round one. And he had an opportunity there if you were phased, but the defense strong enough from Surge. Yeah, and honestly, I, I mean, I, I think that's a very important round for Surge. Just the way the, those first couple of maps have sure. started, starting off on defense, you lo lose that map or round number one, and it just looks scary. It looks yeah. like this is gonna be a quick 3-0. They're able to bounce back here. I mean, the two in the back, accuracy got with the double was big. I, I thought Cell was going to back up and not chow but, chow, but I didn't see if it was his stun or like Simp threw one over the top. But he tried to chow with the stun, I think, but accuracy still won it. And then things kind of fell apart from there. Yeah, Cell's definitely chow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eight and five start from Pred. There's the info. There's the kill. Abizi plays it well. Only four HP. He nearly loses that one. Yeah, nice little B start here, though, for Surge. You have one player on the point. Mac now getting aggressive. Can you get any work done on the objective, though? And have one player on it. Pause the clock. You can see they're just so worried about the flank right now. You have two players watching it. Slasher going to take down Mac. That's going to free, free up tools so they can push on through. Just trying to get the wall bang through. The second child comes in though. BT take it out of the picture. But not quite the second ticket progress at B, so that's starting to get cleared. It's a very slow, kind of controlled round for Surge. Just maybe just trying to get them into to run at them, trap them a bit, maybe transition over towards B with a couple of kills. That's gonna be the play. A nice one-on-one -on -one here. For Fred, but Beezy just backs on down, as we all know. The aim assist, you don't get it through that fence. So always a difficult gunfight for both of those players. That second tick does come through, and they just transition over towards A. So great work done here. Not a lot of kills on the map for either teams, but the objective going the way of search. It feels like they it's as decisive as we saw Faze in the search and destroy. It's like right now, it's like, where do we go? Like they're all over the map. They're all it, over the map. It feels like they are just multiplying as they're making the play everywhere. A about the finish. There was still a presence here on B. There still is one with Sib. A gets secured. Yeah, you've only lost seven lives, but you need half a tick and you are done with this round two, and the advantage is there as Sib. Good job winning fights and tough position through this fence, as you mentioned. Nice snap on, but the Vaznev simply too strong like a dolphin goes Mac and just able to take out one. Yeah, they Sip just stopped shooting there. We've all been in that spot, but yeah, I mean, honestly, just early in the round, I, I mean, Faze just felt like they had no idea what the hell it was going like on. It seemed like it was indecisive because the plays the Surge were making. Like, was like, do we go A, do we go B, do we care if I, mean, I, like, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what is happening right now? But both teams played so patiently. But Surge in such a good spot to go up 2-0. Well. Only need one take. Now the pressure on every time a player touches the zone. FaZe are going to have to push on up. And now, potential to win this offensive round. Slasher trying to be able to find it, but that's going to be all four dead. Sib already yeah. on it. Pred working on through, yeah. and that should be done. All right, what a round here we from go. Surge. Surge coming alive now in the map three. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch that yeah. one. So I don't know what was happening. It just it felt like they got... So much progress done for free in a way, like in the sense of just no, not many kills, like so much damage being done on the objective, but like not really having to win a bunch of fights. Like they just kept phase rotating, second guessing. I, yeah. So I feel too need to watch back the first I, minute, I minute and a half of that. It's <laughs> what you wanted to see though from Seattle Surge, trying to battle back. Get a map on the board. I mean, they win this, we go to a Fortress Hardpoint, and we know these two teams have battled on that one. 
Maybe go back to Major 1. It's what was like a 150 point comeback for FaZe to win that map 4 on Fortress. All to be brought back then by Surge, but Pred lighting it up. A double there, nearly out to double positive. Accuracy gets one as well. Another solid start here from Seattle Surge. As the patience and position paying dividends, the hip fire hitting with the tack. Four in a row, looking for five. Surge finally dancing. That's what I was saying, right? Map two, like there were some individual moments for this guy. They just could not put it together as a team. As he is getting going here in map number three, double positive, but everyone contributing on the side of Seattle Surge. It feels like they have just woken up. I don't know. You know, after map number two, you go to the back, try to regroup, talk to the coaches. But a great showing here on this LSC low control. Phase in the blender. You've lost one life if you are Seattle Surge. Just dominant. Here in LSC low, 30 seconds left to go. You have no progress whatsoever. You know, on the offensive side of things, it can be like a lightning strike in one moment. And you can find the objective and find the round, but there has just been no opening. Finally, they're going to get onto B, sit ready and waiting. That's four in a row. Maybe another chance here for a phase to go on the point. At least stop the clock with 22 seconds to go. But Mac is out and hunting. Slasher caught with his pants down. Easy pickings for him. The flank now coming through for Simp and another win from Mac. The X factor for this squad, they need him to go massive, and he's solid here, 14 and 10. And, and I mean, while that was going on, Cell was in the back of the spawn for a long time. He has just been, he really hasn't been part of the map right now. They have just left him back there, and that started with that first kill on Abizi. Once he gets caught, that opens up a position on the flight. They're able to work, but now Cell, of course, uses the car, able to take down two. Has the entire team in a trap besides one player. That's Pred trying to do what he can as FaZe staying alive in this round, about to get another minute on the clock. Yeah, you were saying he wasn't really involved. They're, they're leaving well, back there. Yeah. No, you were right, and then he got involved. And now they're worried about He's been able to pick up three, maybe four, get snaked. Adios, accuracy, put in the dirt. As Cell is on six in a row, and this mound has just been his haven. Spots one office spawn still just dealing with this, but the rest of the team locking hey. it in, right? You've had Pred alive on the other side of the map inside of white. So while, while this has been great for Selium, his team just not able to do too much. Finally, they take him down. Here comes the reinforcements for FaZe with the trades, but can they find the kills on the point? Accuracy, Pred locking it down. 40 seconds to go. Three ripped off the map. Last player drops, so there you go. You restart it. Three of those were from Pred. He's on five straight at 21 and 10. What a map there for Pred. Okay, now if you're phase, you have the crews on the cell. You have to use that to get onto the point, but they need map control. They have zero, five lives remaining. You have a BZ pushed on up. He's able to find one. Maybe now the opening. The last chance for phase on this map. Accuracy gonna avoid that. His teammate's gonna find kills. Three lives remaining. You did not expect this from Seattle Surge. What an Asilo control. And well, they are still alive in the series. We're headed to Fortress. Here we go. We didn't get a map. I know. Four. We didn't get Finally. a three. Oh. Finally. Oh, we get a map four. Joe and I have been going through with a stretch of sweep. Seattle. Unbelievable win there to control. It is, it is dominant from the get-go. It is an odd Asilo. I, I don't know what was going on. But they control the pace. They dictate the action. They lock phase in with a vice grip. And just dominant, dominant stuff out of Seattle. And it's a hell of a way to bounce back. And yeah, maybe you're right. Just a couple of those moments of Fred just getting some kills in the surge. Maybe it lights a fire for him. Not a big map one. Map two a little bit there, and then three we see him take over at 23 and 11. Yeah, I mean, you know, great map out of Cell, but the other three just could not get involved. It just felt like a lot of the multi-kills not going their way. And you can see, like, I mean, just who was on the objective? It was really just a, a BZ and Sim just trying to do some work. He just never really had a stack. There was never a four down moment. There was always one or two players alive for Surge. Winning individual one-on-ones that kept them in rounds. Well, it's a great job from Surge, like you were kind of saying, but you feel like if Selium's in that position for that long, especially once he starts to get kills and divert attention, like hey, they, they so. should get progress, right? But they just they just don't. And there were a few moments where it felt like FaZe maybe gonna take over the round, but once again, good reaction from Surge. 
good retakes, some nice multi-kills from Lamar. I know he's like 13 and 15, nothing crazy, but he had some big plays. Better than 0-7. You yes, take it that, is, Joe. You, you yes, take that is. all day. And yeah, you know, <laughs> he, he did have some multi-kills, but winning this offense was huge from them. Just working the objective. I mean, they almost had both with, I mean, what they wasted like three lives. I don't know, it was, it was an insane round number two. And then Fred, weird, Fred weird with the attack. Yeah. <laughs> some unbelievable efficiency. And then this was the moment, right? You have Cell in the back, but doesn't matter. Mac on the pinch, able to deal with deal with it. You leave him in the back. And you're thinking right here, but you, I mean, I guess they have to get done with A. And then you just had no map control. Surge took it away from him. I was thinking after those first two, I mean, this was done. I it just felt like they were dead in the water. It was all Atlanta phase. But what? And map three went 3-0 in convincing fashion. Now to Fortress, where I mean, I always go back to that major one where these two teams played here, and it was one of the crazier hard points on the year. Seattle at that time, they were a solid Fortress team. They were up like, I think it was like 150 or something before FaZe brought back one of the crazier comebacks we've seen on the year. But Seattle, we've seen them be solid here at times. Yeah, I mean, I think this is probably their, their best hard point. I mean, 9 and 5 on the year. Uh, but head to head, it's it's one to one, right? So 50% between these two teams. Obviously, yeah, the other one is that, that uh, crazy comeback that we saw a yeah. long time ago. But here you can see FaZe, their hard point throughout stage five. And we're a different beast. Yeah, we're talking about a team that they were what, like 30 and 38, something in that ballpark going into kind of the stage five qualifier. When you looked at like their plus minus, I remember looking at a chart that kind of broke down like points against and points for. It was like 220 dead even for both. They lost a lot of nail biters. It was just playing a ton of tight games. That has shifted entirely, as you can see there from the stat line. The hard point improvements have been insane. Just do you have another nice run in you? in the mode here, champs. Well, no, this is just, uh, you know, for the other side of the stage, for Surge, like, some life, something to work off of, some confidence. Just felt like, yeah, like, felt like they were kind of out of it. Yeah. Just looking at them on the camera, but some big moments in that map number three. Your individuals now are getting going. Huge map out of Pred. Can he keep this up? I mean, we know on Fortress, the Vaznevs, you get the Deddy resets. You can never find them. But I think what we always look at is that P3 rotation. That is the huge money hill on this map. And maybe FaZe going to that map three a little bit like, I don't know, they just dominate so much in the first two maps. So they think they have it in the bag. Seattle hands them a quick reminder, like we're not going out of it like that. Now you got to lock it in. Focus on this map four, because you know, if that's the case, if you sort of gave them life a little bit, how does Seattle now use this, this energy? We got Sebi's like oh, partially putting in caffeine, partially yawning on the main stage. And <laughs> yeah, we've all been there. Yeah, 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 yeah. The nerves are going a little bit, right? That yawn comes out, but you can see these two. Slasher and accuracy, their history at champs, average placing a grand final for accuracy three for Slasher and a ring as well. These two best friends outside of the game, so they always love this matchup. Yeah, they'll pal it up outside the game, in the game. They're ready to lay each other out. We're just waiting on this map board to get started. You know, if anyone was going to brush off a search and destroy game like that, it's Lamar. I mean, I wouldn't be worried about it. He's seen it all. He's had his struggles. He's had his ups, his downs. He brings it back. Now for a Slasher on the other side of the stage. Hat on, ready to rock. Can you bring it to the Thunder here in map four? As we're just waiting to get started. Not sure if an issue with one of the players or just waiting on this map four to get started. But as soon as we get ready to go, I think I saw, yeah, just a restart of the game here from the host. Is, should be back in in just a moment here. I just see the Surge boys kind of locking in, going over comms. I think they're all like, I'm ready to play. <laughs> like, let's yeah, get this going. Just, you're mid -season. I think that's just you. I think you're ready to go, yeah. I am. I, I'm, dude, this has been... I don't know, Champs energy is just different. You walk in the venue, you see everybody, you get a series one like we had to start things off, an absolute banger out of map one just to get us rock and roll. Lando absolutely losing his marbles. It's Champs time. Cell kills me, dude. Why? I don't know. It, dude, he's I, evolving. I think it was Ali. Somebody walked out of the main stage like I've never seen him that serious. Dude, he's, like, no, he's evolving, dude. He's got like the goatee now. The facial hair is coming and out. Then I saw him. I walked by him in the hallway. He just like pinched my arm. Said, "What's up, Nathan?" I was like, <laughs> hey, Buzz. <laughs> but his fans are getting anxious, and 
We've seen a little bit of, uh, well, yeah, player smiles here in BZ. He knows what's at stake, as he saw the video earlier. But on the other end of it, it was mostly quiet. Maybe Fred started to get these guys ramped back up. But we're going to show you what a, what a year it has been from Seattle, like how we've kind of got here. And, you know, in, in years past, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Like, it's been all over the place. This has just been like up, then just down. For Way the down. Part. Yeah, you haven't you haven't had that like bounce back like we expect him. Like, if this was like years past, that like major three, top six would probably be like a top three, top two, uh, major five, probably like the same thing. That's how it was. It was like good finish, bad finish, good finish, bad finish. It's been like that for years. Yeah, they start off the way we. I mean, obviously that second they were in a final, and then nine through twelve, we're like, all right, this is Seattle surge. I mean, the fifth six wasn't a horrible event. Again, one round, one kill away yeah. from potentially being a winner's final, being top three. But the last two majors have just not been doing good. As Adesh said, I think the worst form we've seen this roster in. Yeah, no, certainly. But they're here. They're the A seed. You yeah. gotta go up against Atlanta face. You got a map now. Can you make it two and push it to a map five? All right, here we go. Ready. The Fortress Regal, thank you for your patience at home and in attendance. We get ready to send it. Well, we have another just absolute banger like major one between these two teams here on Fortress. You can see it has been a solid hard point. They're four and Seattle six, players. but you're second and second. That is insane. They've just been turning it around as of late. All right, here we go. Seattle, phase, map four. Phase to close it out. Seattle, a bounce back. Fred needs to get deep. Deep, deep into his bag here. Take over the map. All right, nice start there. Looks like a BZ kind of messed up his dive. Right off the get-go, Mac now, he finds two kills with the attack, just playing his life, soaking up this time. This is exactly what you would want if you are Surge. You're controlling the map, you're trapping them in. You have Fred inside of maps, going to town, going to work, because the AR is looking over him. Trying to pick targets there at Sip. Too many in front to deal with. You can see the urgency and accuracy to the player camp. The comps were frantic and coming out of them. Lovely little attempt at the drop shot there, but not able to quite take that fight was Fred. The headshot from Slasher will win it. Now Sib just looking for info, but what a start this is from Seattle Surge. Now, you were what? It was like a 30 to 40 game early on map one, pretty tight. And that's when phase erupted. You can't let that happen again. The double from Simp ends up being very, very important. They get into the site. Well, I mean, that just leads to the break. Yeah, I mean, he gets the reinforcements off a of spawn. There is a team nade, though, so you're going to be right back to it. And on the rotation, you're already going to have Pred. You already have Pred working over towards P3. They are not going to know he is there. Slasher going to be the first one. That's a Vaz. You are losing that. So the 30 seconds going to be the focus for Atlanta phase. They're going to lose on both fronts. They might right now. Is Mac able to find a double? All right. But here we go. It's up to Pred to deal with this push. You got two now. He's got two players here. Doesn't matter. So he's able to find it over to his duo in Sib. This is a perfect start so far for Seattle Surge. But can Sib hold on? You got the closer spawn, but you're going to be in between. Kind of a mess right now with you or FaZe. Just pinched it between both sides. You have a good patience there from Celium to wait on the spawners to push forward. Now, is the help going to be there? He is just stuck between a rock and a hard place. Nowhere for him to go. Seattle holding on. Lovely, lovely start. When you're talking about time inside the objective, lead now up to 50 with 45 remaining on the point, and the kill still flowing. Accuracy, Max, Fred, Lamar again, all through on the feed, and that is a clean wipe. On this map, man, you can blend it up. Well, that just starts with that double from Mac. I mean, that puts phase in a position or do we rotate do we hit the scrap time right because if you were phase you're hoping to get that 30 seconds it's a tied game and maybe you try to break p3 but that does not happen instead they lose scrap time they lose rotation they're all of a sudden down 80 points they need a response here reminded me a little bit of major one though joe well that was about 150 not 80. yeah not, not quite there yet but seattle were so dominant and it just a switch flipped and you can chain the other hard points so solid the mountain saying comebacks on this map. Another hard point pops. This time, phase inside. They're down almost 100. Look at the map control as well. You do not see this often on P4. I mean, you have two players map side. Simp trying to force them to go through closed and open, through bottom art. Abizi 
has the help of the ARs, ready for the next gunfight. They needed a hold so far, so good here. Over towards P4, but maybe Pred gonna start the break. Cell just kind of lurking in the back. He's at least able to take out one. Nice win there from Abizi. Getting right back into this game. You had a stranglehold on it earlier if you're Seattle, but you see the grip starting to loosen a bit. Three in a row for Slasher. Same set for Abizi. Next rotation upcoming. Rihanna just props to both of these teams. Just the holds have been so good. Finally, Three Surge kills. gonna get on it, but it's as the next hill is popped. Over towards his P5. Simp now just trying to control this area, has the help of his teammates, and now maybe gonna start the break, and that's gonna be it. At Selium, that's gonna be a free couple of kills, gonna take down the trophies as well. And that break comes so fast, but you still have a presence here now from Seattle. Not much anymore, but Simp caught between two players. Back in the hard point, go Surge. Just blow for blow, these two teams go. Trophies eating up everything in sight. What, lead was 90, now down to 50, slowly phase. Clawing their way back into this. Yeah, big set of kills coming up for Seattle Surge. Can they get out of this trap as we head back towards P1, right? You do not want to be spawning on the right side of the map where those blue arrows are. Well, that's where they're going to be, is phase just trying to hold them in. Not allowing one player or a sub to get through towards Art with that Deddy, but Selium and Simp locking it down. And Simp, oh, I thought he was going to find another one, but it's a nice kill for Mac to keep it messy. Yeah, no, that's a great kill, because I, yeah, I thought when you're prone like that, all he gets is headshots usually. Like, I thought he was just going to evaporate him there with the Vaz, but he's able to win it now. Sell getting cheeky angles here, four in a row for him. Make it number five. One HP, God, he barely wins that. Siv almost just guns him. But now lead down to 23. And they just have not been able to get out. That's really been it. They've had some presence here, but Cell's been ready for it. He's had the help of Simp as well. Finally, you have two players pushing over towards Cannon, putting presence on the hill. Slasher hanging out, just trying to play his life. Almost a lead change in, but a nice comeback here from FaZe as three players go down with 15 seconds left here at P1. Make it all four. You do have one player who spawns up over towards open. Maybe they won't be ready for it. A busy going to spot it. This map could just be a game of swings. First it was Surge, swinging back into things is FaZe. Now a lead change as they go out in front. You expect Surge to make their rally and their run at some point. We'll see how FaZe will deal with it, but for now, New hard point pop, they're set up inside. One player coming off a of spawn, but you got the angles right now with fewer phase. Big break, opportunity now for Seattle Surge as the BZ just holding the doorway. Tough fight, but able to win that first one. Up to four in a row, but it's Sib through on the trade and into the hard point for now as Sib is snapping. Yeah, nice break there. But yeah, 30 seconds left. We start talking about towards P3. You already have a BZ towards the middle of the map. One player spawns Kate. That's gonna be Sim. He's gonna have a one versus one for right now as the rest of his teammates, they're gonna get this scrap time now. Everyone from Surge is gonna try to hunt down Sip. He's able to find all three. three. He gets three. What? And he's able to play his life. And now all of Surge going to spawn out. Sip making the plays. Oh my God. A 40 point lead. The rest of his teammates now in position to lock down Gate. That might be the moment of the map. That might win it for him there. The fact he's able to get three on an island, basically in a one versus four. And now the reinforcements are here. The help is in. And the lock, it's down. 50 point advantage. Sip looking to keep it going. Now four in a row. Finally going to drop. Seattle, they've got to make a break or the loser's bracket. They go. That's four in a row. And right off of that, we'll listen it with Surge. Who's going absolute? Who's going absolute? Sip. I'm holding game. I need a trope. I don't have a trope. Okay, right, I'm going to try to do that. Separate, separate. Nothing gay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kill me on time. Front, front. He's front framing by the stables. Nothing gay, just. Absolute. 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 absolute front, absolute front. Front got in, front got in. Arcanon, Arcanon. Arcanon, listen. Selim is the guy on the cannon, watch the cross. Arcanon, Arcanon, absolute, absolute. Arcanon. Just trying to get out of here. Yeah. Got nade at MC. Nice. He's absolutely on the right. I killed him, I killed him. Okay, okay. 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 I'm running the right. Should be good. Dancing, get some part, okay? Yeah, I'm good. Some maps, some maps, some maps, some maps. I'm running away. I'll play stage. I'll go time, I'll go time, I'll go time, I'll go time. Let's fucking hold this over. Yeah, once again. I'm blocking it. I only have gate. I have put him out, I have put him out. We're good. He was front 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 pillars. I have put him out. Pillars? Front pillars, I hear him. I have to put him on, I'm guys. Come on, Dub. It was front arch. I still have one open. I still have one open. All going left, all going left, all going left. Open left, open left. Okay, 
open and fucking push this. Every single one. Backstairs, backstairs on me. Back door, back door, back door. Look at you, back door, back door, back Side door, 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 front door, side 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 I'm holding for a BZ, BZ, I'm stage, I'm stage. I'm holding the rap, I'm holding the rap, bro. I'm gonna get a P1, okay? I'm stage. I'm hiding under one stop bar, he's gonna jump out. I'm looking. It doesn't matter how this matchup looks beforehand, it is always a war as Surge and FaZe deep into this map four. Just 26 points needed for FaZe to close it out. But Surge in the point and ripping back into this map four. Yeah, you heard the energy trying to get picked up, especially from Prey, trying to fire everyone up. Trying to lock this hill down. Nice early time. Slasher was able to find two. He's on four in a row. Here comes a break from FaZe. Mac now has to deal with the snaky of a BZ. A BZ able to play his life for now, but there are the trades. Nobody in the hill, but map control over to FaZe. We saw it last time through. Can Seattle Surge get out? It looks like a couple of players are out through Cannon for now. Nobody on the time. Nobody on the hill. A BZ not ready for the second one. Accuracy, just trying to find anything that he can. And behind that, too, they're going to try to hunt down Sim. And Sim, that pillar gets smoked, but then he gets dropped. It's Max stepping it up at 25 and 25. But back into the point with the spawns go phase. Sim with two, Cell with two. Back in they go. Now, just 15 points needed. Next hard point about to pop. First player in. Accuracy. The kill's coming through. Abizi, the one trying to make the play for FaZe. Yeah, has Deddy trying to make, trying to just finesse, right? Trying to put all the focus onto him. A cruise missile, maybe the saving grace for Atlanta FaZe. The callouts are there. They're in, able to take down the player on the hill. The reinforcements, though, are there from Sib. Sib, Brett, the duo, the young talent trying to lock it down. A Sib trying to get this break, at least has the contest. Off spawn, Slasher trying to flip those spawns. Sip trying to do what he can. That's gonna be three dead. Are they gonna be ready for Slasher? It looks like they are, but it gets one player to spawn on him, so it's a 2-2 split for now. Here we go. It all comes down to these final moments in the map four. Is the next big rotation incoming? Who is going to make the plays down the stretch? Spawn. Big kills through for FaZe. To the point we go. Sib trying to win the fights. Not going to happen. It's FaZe on through. Five points needed. That may seal it. Just can't get close enough and we are done. FaZe move on. Those two always go to war. They do, they do. It's just like, I don't know why I didn't expect the map three to go the way it did. And the fact we'd at least get to a map four like that, like whatever the situation is with Seattle, they play phase so, so tough and they test them here. But it smiles out for Atlanta phase for now as they get the win. Remember they were down about 90, 90 to 100 points at the beginning of that hard point, but they rally, they get it done and sent maybe with the play. I mean, he gets a spawn out gate, he highlighted on the mini map, and then the fact he gets three there, unreal. Well, then they had two cruise missiles, that was it. I, I mean, even with the sim play, Surge still broke on through. through. Then Celium had to use a cruise, they had that, and then that P1, I mean, if you don't have that to get accuracy off the point, maybe that looks a little bit differently, right? He's locking an angle down. You have this set up some more time yeah. going the way of Surge. There wasn't enough time to win it, but like enough time to make it a lot scarier, more frantic, right? Like you're looking at maybe like a 245, 245 game on rotation type thing. No doubt about it. The ARs of Atlanta phase go off here. 32 for Celium, Slasher 26 and 19, two minutes on the hill. And that's something that they've really, really worked. You know, I was talking to Crowder about their hard point, like, Leading in time, it was like sipping a BZ. Like they had their hard point time and it's not always like gonna work out perfectly, but in a perfect world, like you want your AR in there. Like Octane, he's been soaking up all the time. Like you want that, you want your subs flying out. Cause like that is the stat link you want to see if you are phased. And that is what they have worked so hard to do. Like you heard in the interview with the BZ, they have been working to fix that part of their hard point game. Starting to get there, but let's get 
to this stage. We've got Slasher, who was a beast, an absolute monster there across the series with Blaze. Yes, he was, Merck and Maven. Las Vegas, give it up for Atlanta Faze as they progress on through the bracket. Now, Slasher, let's hop into this series, okay? You guys go up 2-0, you lose the control. And then right there in that hard point, you're down by almost 100 going into that P4, looking like he was about to go to the Mat 5. Tell me, how did y'all turn it around from that P4 to really close it out in that exciting fashion? You know, that, that's the thing about this game. It's a lot of chains, especially on that map. The P2 to P3 chain is kind of deadly, so we ended up down 100, but we know we can do it right back to them on the next set of rotations, and yeah. we did that. And I think also they kind of trolled on the P5. They should have beat us, to be honest, but when I got that streak on the P5, it yeah. literally won us the game. Yeah, it truly did, okay, in that 3-1 fashion. Now you are back at champs once again. We know your champs history. Now coming off that last event, y'all kind of got clutched up on here and there, but here at champs, what's going to be different? What do you guys want to accomplish here in Las Vegas? I mean, we're here to win, simple as that. I think we're the best team in the game right now. I think we're the best team at Major 5. Yep. We just let that one slip. If we do what we're supposed to do, we're going to show up and win. Yes, you will, all right? I'm going to let you get out of here and go catch some sun, my guy. Anything you want to say to the fans out there? Uh, yeah, we appreciate the sport, guys. You know, you guys have been a great crowd. Thank you guys so much, and hopefully we can bring this one home. All right, that's going to do it for me and Slash here on the stage. Chris, take it away. 25% of the fans think FaZe Clan is going to take this whole thing. Atlanta FaZe has been doing work all season, coming in with the number one seed, but this time looking a little bit vulnerable. We saw the reverse sweeps were out earlier, but all of a sudden the broom breaks for Seattle Surge in that game four. Walk me through it, Clayster, because I was watching this game four, and I'm thinking, oh, God, we're going to another game five. Pred and crew are rolling the first half of this hard point. I thought the reverse sweep was on. I mean, the beginning of that map four looked incredible for the Seattle Surge. Like Slasher just said on stage, the chain is crazy P2 to P3. And I genuinely believe FaZe figured out P4. They held an entirety of P4 to get back into the game and transition into the P5 with ease. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. Allie, what did you see in the first half of this one? Well, I mean, not about the first half, but I did see Shillium dropping 34 kills in that map number four Woo! before that win. So the guy came diff in the later half of this series. Uh, I think Slasher made a great point. They do look like the best team in the game right now. We already knew that heading into Chance simply because their hard points have gotten so much better. That Embassy map number one was flawless out of the Atlanta phase. The BZ goes 28 and 13, and then they follow it up with one of their top two search destroy maps as well. El Silo, unfortunately, just could not go their way, but when you're winning games like that, you don't really have to with the Atlanta phase. Yeah, I was really impressed, uh, especially by their setup on that P4 to come back yeah. into it. I mean, they, they were all the way pushed up in maps, and, you know, Clay, you're highlighting. They could spawn them behind them. Well, what do they do? Sip backs up to Cannon, plays his life, and from that position, you can get the angle on the cross towards stables, and then also you get the angle into bottom art, right? They also simultaneously had a guy sitting backstage as well, so nobody was getting through. And even at the end there, the panic button was not hit, right? right. Like P5, it's sitting wide open. They're waiting for them to make a mistake, and what happens? See, Seattle makes that mistake. They peak slasher two or three times. They give him that streak, which then leads to a victory. So for Atlanta FaZe, just think cool, calm, and collected and know you're never out of these maps and making the calculated play. The second half of that game to the end, they were in the power position throughout the entire time they came to spawns. As we take a look, the final score, 3-1. Atlanta FaZe powers into your winner's bracket round two, where they will play the winner of Toronto or LA Thieves tomorrow. For Seattle, you still have to wait and see who's going to drop down to you. Is this team in trouble, though, Clayston? I want to get your take first. How do you bounce back if you're the surge, or do you think this could be the start of the end? I'm really not sure about Seattle Surge. I mean, they didn't have a great major five. They come out here. They showed a little bit of life in this series, and that's something I give them credit for, is that they kept the mitts up the entire time. Honestly, there looks to be a little fight left in them, at least in this tournament compared to last tournament. So we're going to have to see something a little bit different out of them tomorrow. Surge coming off of three straight losses. We'll see what they can do tomorrow. Let's take a look, though, at our scuff play of the game. And this one, of course, belongs to Atlanta FaZe. Walk me through it, Ali. Zip always shines when it's champs time. I mean, I have to assume it's from the search destroy it. Yep, I mean, this guy dropped oh a 2.0. Some go of go the ahead. snipes that he was hitting. I mean, he has just come diff here for champ. He also had like the game winning play in that hard point. We didn't catch it from the observer, observer view, excuse me, but the money hill on that map is that P3 and he gets through and there's a player just watching the front. He finds one, turns around and finds a three piece. Those are the moments that we spoke about before the series started. He is able to make those plays and get you game winning moments. He is simply that guy. 
He's a champs MVP candidate. We've got a few early on. Chat, let us know who you're liking so far. And of course, a big shout out to everyone who helped us determine our all-stars this year. Let's get it started right now. It's our all-star ceremony with Blaze on the main stage. All right, thank you so much, Chris. Las Vegas, it's been an awesome event. And all year long, we had the best Call of Duty players on these stages and throughout the league, battling out for your hearts and to be the best. But now it is time to show some love to the best players in the league. It's your All-Stars. Coming to the stage first, help me show some love to the second team All-Stars. Make some noise. Give it up for Octane. Dashy. Shotzi. And Prez. Your second team All-Stars. What an incredible lineup we have here. Two of the most impactful ARs in Octane and Dashy. And then you round it out with Fred and Shotzi on the SMG. This is a squad no one wants to take on in a 4v4. Yeah, I mean, this team would be absolutely unbelievable, right? Like, you're talking about Pred, who's been lights out. People call him LeBron. Like, when he was on the Cavs, just taking over. And then Shotzi, his movement is second to none. He's an absolute beast. And then you have Octane. Best comms in the game and has the shot to match it up. Do we even need to say anything about Bruce? The guy is extremely accurate. He's been getting better every single year. So this team is disgusting. That is your second team All-Stars, but it's time to meet our Scuff Team of the Year. Yes, it is, Chris. Las Vegas, help me blow the roof off this stadium for your Scuff Team of the Year. Coming out first, the rookie with the most is Scrap. Coming out next, it's the biggest showman in the league. Show some love to MC Sally M. Coming out next, all I got to say is, it's too easy for a BZ. Give it up. And last, but certainly not least, to round off your Scuff All-Star Team of the Year, all hail Hydra! One more time, Las Vegas. Give it up for your Scuff Team of the Year! Congratulations to our Scuff Team of the Year, Hydra, of BZ, Selium, and Scrap. I want to start here with Scrap, the all-star rookie, has been popping off for Toronto as an AR. What have you seen from the youngster, Clay? He walks the walk and talks the talk, man. This guy can shoot his gun straighter than anybody else. Scrap, honestly, is a beast. I love the way he came into the league this year. Just absolute trash talk. And one of the most impressive things when it comes to Scrap, not only being a rookie, not only be able to back his bark, but the fact that he is always in the top T 10 KD leaderboard with all the SMGs in the league. He is one of the more aggressive ARs that we have in the team whose engagement surpasses the majority of the league. So I think not only that, to be able to play at that high level and high aggression that he does and succeed in the way that he has and completely overturn kind of the game plan of Toronto Ultra that used to be cool, calm, and collected. I see them standing up. I see them getting rowdy, and it's because of Scrap. I mean, he has been incredible all year long. The number one AR, according to our fan vote, is going to Scrap on your Scuff Team of the Year, but he's not the only AR locking this squad down. We've got the King Cobra backing him up. Yeah, I mean, you talk about accolades, he has those. He has World Championship, you know, whatever. But when we talk about individual play as well, there has been bars that have been set by players in the past. He has exceeded that and set an entirely new bar that I don't know if anybody can get to on a consistent basis. We talk about 1.2s, 1.3s, kills, what you need to do on the map and take over in the big moments. Selium does it time and time again. The kid is an absolute monster, and he's been in the MVP discussion for three, four straight years. Absolute beast. The community got it right. Selium representing Atlanta FaZe on our Scuff Team of the Year, as is his teammate, too, from FaZe will land in your number one squad. Abizi gets the honor for his performances. Record-setting kills, especially on maps like Mercado. 
When you talk about a BZ, you talk about first bloods. This guy does it better than anybody else when it comes down to the entry sub role. To see him evolve what an entry sub actually is and become the player that he is today, it's honestly mind-blowing how good this guy is at what he does. In every single match, we see it. He just goes off. Incredible stuff from young Abe throughout this season. Allie, when you're watching this young man, what is most impressive to his game to you? I just how comfortable he looks on the map at all times. It feels like he always has the game plan, and it seems to work out. One of the only 1v4s on the season, and it's just in the in the manner that he does it. It's always a you know a smile on his face. He's always having a great time in game, and I love the interview we saw earlier from him saying, you know, I realized maybe the work wasn't being put in last year, and I really took that to myself and decided to change as a player, and it has very much shown through the fruits of his labor for this Atlanta phase team. His bank account is full, but the trophy <laughs> case looking empty, looking for another <laughs> ring. We got Hydra, though, also chasing his first ring. He gets our scuff team of the year honors, and for good reason. One of the most exciting players to watch since day one of MW2. Yeah, I mean, the guy's been unbelievable, right? And uh, he was nasty when he first came to the scene, and I think he might be the most improved player this year, right? So Hydra, uh, he's gotten to the top level, won two championships this year, has an MVP. The guy has been the best search player for about two months now, so he's just honing in on all different types of skills when it comes to Call of Duty, including a new language, guys. Let's talk about that. This right. guy came from a different country he's redefining what it means to be a foreign player in the call of duty league the guy is an absolute beast and he is the the face of the new york subway australia represented france represented in our second and first team of the years congratulations to all eight players but talking about our number one squad clayster break down these numbers how ridiculous is this feat these blow my mind. We're talking about averaging over an entire season, averaging a 1.2 in hardpoint from Hydra and Cell, a 1.27 out of Hydra and s &D. <laughs> Like, how do you average these numbers over That's an dumb. entire season? I, I can't do it one series. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself, Clay. I've seen you do it in plenty of series, but I also love how young I feel like both of these teams are. I feel like definitely the new generation of COD is moving up. I got to give a big shout out to everyone out there in the crowd. Thank you for your energy and keep it coming because we still have two more matches. For everyone at home, though, make sure to get involved with your packs right now. We got the champs bundle up and rolling. Be like the king. Grab it right now and complete your blueprint collection. Rule the battlefield to get your 2023 Call of Duty League Champs Pack today. And of course, while you're online, stay in the loop by signing up for the Call of Duty League newsletter. Receive breaking news, event discounts, and more. Just scan the QR code on the screen right now. It's COD Champs, it's day number one. We come back, Optic takes on Boston in your third battle of the night. This is an epic showdown.
This is the Scuff Team of the Year, the ultimate super team built with the top four performers across the 2023 season. Starting us off is Selium of Atlanta Phase. Selium's inclusion in the Team of the Year should come as no surprise, as he has consistently been one of the best players this season with some stellar stats to back it up. With an impressive 1.21 KD, Selium has earned the bragging rights of having the highest KD in the league for a second straight season, proving once again that there are three constants in life, death, taxes, and Selium having a cracked KD. Next up is Hydra of the New York Subliners. The Subliners ended the season as the only team to have won multiple majors, and Hydra played a huge role in the team's success. Throughout the season, Hydra was absolutely frying, dropping a league-leading 3,576 kills with his standout performance coming in Major 5, where he had one of the greatest individual performances in CDL history, finishing the event with a ridiculous 1.3 overall KD as the Subliners Subliners made an insane lower bracket run to win their second title of the season. No matter what happens in the future, Hydra's 2023 season has been absolutely insane and will always be remembered as one of the best individual seasons by a player in the history of the CDL. The third player making the team is Scrap of Toronto Ultra. Despite an up and down season for Toronto Ultra, Scrap was a constant highlight for the team. With all the hype surrounding him as he entered his rookie season, Scrap has been able to exceed all expectations as one of the top AR players in the league. Along the way, Scrap was dropping some insane numbers, especially on Control, where he had a 1.23 KD for the season. With such a spectacular rookie season, the expectations for Scrap will only get higher and higher, with the Rookies of the Season award all but locked up. Just how far away is the MVP award? Finishing things up, we have Abizi of Atlanta Phase. Throughout the season, Abizi has been praised for his spectacular performances time and time again, and it's easy to see why it's so well deserved. At every major, Abizi has been consistently a top performer for Phase and has played a large role in the team's dominance this season. His best performances often came in Search and Destroy, where he led the league with 489 kills on the mode and had an incredible 1.25 KD. After a season full of clutch performances, Abizi has continued to look better and better with each major and is quickly reminding everyone that he is one of the best SMG players in the entire league. That is your 2023 Scuff Team of the Year. I'm behind the scenes right now with the CDL observing team, the Hot Hands Lounge. They're affectionately known. These six guys, you've seen their work more than any of the casters, any of the front of house people that you think you may know already. Just haven't been able to put faces to names. Funny thing about it is this is the first event this year that all six of these guys have been in location at the exact same time. They're bringing you the sights and the sound, so make sure you guys do them some favors. Get online, get on Twitter, follow them at the Hot Hands Lounge. They are by far the most passionate people in the CDL, maybe even more so than the super fans. <laughs> there are few people have watched more gameplay than the casters and the high hand lounge well they may be some of them here we have a jam-packed audience though in las vegas everyone gearing up for this next winner's bracket round one battle we've got four more teams to play and two of the biggest names taking the stage next optic texas is taking on boston breach and Clayster. I got to get your thoughts here on the GM moves here from Boston Breach because we're seeing a player enter the biggest tournament of the year after never starting in any game during the regular season or any major. Um, yeah, I don't know how he's going to deal with that, but just don't think about it. If you can hear me, just don't think about that, how this is your CDL <laughs> debut at Champs playing Optic gaming um yeah, i have no optic idea texas. Yeah, optic texas, texas sorry yeah, yeah. yeah i have no idea how you're gonna deal with that but good luck yeah it's gonna be a little bit tough if you're looking at the numbers but boston they felt fourth was not enough they kept making roster change after roster change this is the third iteration over the last three months and they feel that this might finally be the solution listen i said it on our twitter spaces the other day during rehearsal i'm just questioning what is the difference between prep 
Nero, Snoopy, they're all just known as high engagement S SMG players. At least with Vivid, you got a little bit of a playmaker out of him sometimes, and maybe a little inconsistency with Nero. So with Kremp, we found some consistency, but it's just, it's a bold move from Boston. And you know, I'm sure they're all sitting back and should this pan out, I mean, Good, kudos to you guys over in the GM side of things, but for Boston, like, statistically, this matchup should have been good for them. We got to talk about the new guy here, Nameless. We got Snoopy coming up from the challenger scene, and he didn't even win the most yeah. recent challengers event, but they still saw enough in their young academy player to put him in a starting lineup. What are you looking forward to seeing from his gameplay as an analyst? Uh, an elusive SMG player. Uh, you know, I've talked to a lot of people about Snoopy, uh, some of his teammates on Boston Academy. They say that he has incredible movement, Possibly the best in the game, and we're going to see that going up against Shotzi, which is one, incredible, but two, the kid comes from Search and Destroy. When you look at his statistics and challengers, he was great in that game mode, and mind you, that's what they lost game five to Minnesota Rocker, round one of the last tournament. They could have used a Search and Destroy All-Star, so I think what they're hoping for is a guy to come in here that's going to play with confidence, play with that swag, and take over when it comes to those Search and Destroys. If he gets confidence, that is going to be huge for Boston Breach. That's your Monster Energy pregame. Snoopy needs to have an impactful debut because he is facing off against the fan favorites, the squad that is always loved no matter where we go, Optic Texas. Let's talk about this team. Back-to-back -back finals appearances at Major 3 and Major 4. Major 5 didn't go their way, but they're ready to shake those six games off and start fresh here in Las Vegas. Cloyster, Everybody loves this squad. Why are they so fun to watch? They're so fun to watch because of the players on this team. They shoot straight, they move around the map like water, and they make it look fun. They have a good time while they're doing it. I mean, look at look at him right there, Shotzi. He's just vibing all the time. I think Optic has to have a very good showing here. Which Optic are we going to get? The one from last major, or we're getting a new one, one of the second place ones? Yeah, I mean, with Optic, that last performance was very concerning. I think the biggest storyline with them, as we look at our Monster Energy pregame, some of their statistics, you can see they've been great in respawn. But the biggest thing for them is how do they respond to adversity? Like, these guys got double 3 0 smoked. Everybody Bad. got cooked individually. The SMGs, they have been the backbone of this team when they're running through teams. They lost some of their right. lockdown maps, which we have once again in this series. So a ton of pressure, right? Like, this is COD champs. Optic and these guys have so much pressure on their shoulders. Can they rise to the occasion? I don't know if you can keep a leash on Shotzi and Hook for too long. Ali, give me your thoughts on this breakdown. How do you see this match playing out? Like I said, before Boston made the change, statistically, technically, this is a pretty close matchup as far as numbers goes. Obviously, Optic Texas have gotten much better when it comes to their fundamentals. It's about what side of the coin, right? Again, if we get the Optic Texas we just saw, or if we get Major Five Qualiters, Optic Texas. For Boston Breach, I, you know, I think in the slang department is where they're going to be leaning heavily. They have all year. The problem is they're going up against an Optic Texas team that has done the exact same thing, right? right? So this is just going to be a high kill, high engagement matchup. And personally, I'm leaning towards the green wall. It's going to be a fantastic showdown. Let's take a look here at the maps and modes, Clayster. We don't have any numbers from the starting lineup from Boston. So go with your heart on this one. Break it down for me. Who do you think has the edge? And if Boston is going to play spoiler, where could Optic potentially be vulnerable? I do think there are a couple what we call coin flip maps in here. You look at the Mercado Surge and Destroy, you look at the Fortress Hardpoint. Those are maps where a couple things go your way and you can take it over anybody. So I genuinely believe Optic needs to have a come, like come out and have a good 3-0 here or things get a little sketchy. All right, well, I'm told the match is almost ready, audience, so it's time to get to the predictions. Let's make it official as we try and stay perfect in our analyst bracket. I'm starting things off here with our number two seed, Optic Texas bounces back in game number one, and that's purely because I've done 50 shows. I've never seen Snoopy in one of them this season. <laughs> I mean, you got to go with Optic, right? We're talking about a brand new team here in Boston going up against the green wall. You hear the crowd out there. It's going to be tough for them to lose. The curse was broken in Texas, guys, so don't boo me this time. I'm going with Optic Texas. Yeah. Three for three so far, Nameless. Yeah, I'm going with Optic Texas in this one. I can't see Snoopy coming out of here with these guys and, and taking this win. I think Optic respond. That was an uncharacteristic tournament. They're going to be on point. All right, well, we, of course, need to make this more interesting because you all blanked me with the optic picks here. So <laughs> let's go back to most impactful player. It doesn't need to be kills desk, but Clayster, for you individually, for Optic Texas, bouncing back, who's the guy to watch? It's got to be Shotzi. Shotzi needs to be Shotzi this event. He needs to show everybody why he's a world champion, why he deserves to be the captain of this Optic Gaming team. Shotzi needs to be Shotzi. Since Gump retired, I think Shotzi is the new face of Call of Duty, and he is here to play for a title. Let's get this battle started, Blaze. 
All right, Chris, I'm ready for this one. It's time to light this stage up green. And coming to the stage first is who you all been waiting for. Get ready for those boys from the South. Here comes Optic Texas. Show some love to Bruce. Give it up to who? Get loud for Ghosty. And here comes Shotzi. It's Optic Texas. This is a championship team that just wanted to wait till champs to turn up. Last tournament, uncharacteristic. They got double 3-0. So they know they still have a ton to prove. When they are rolling through squads, it is through those SMG players. I'm looking at Hook and Shotzi to have a dominant performance. They've won a world championship before. They know what it takes. Let's bring out Boston to see if they can spoil it. Let's see if they can spoil it, Ant. It's time to hack the stage. Get ready, into the breach we go. on my own. So I'm going to bring out somebody just a bit more yoked. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes Doug Sensor Martin. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing your 2023 Boston Breach! Awakening! Crap! I know everybody has been awaiting this matchup, not only to see Snoopy, but to see the Boston Breach that we are going to get today. And my eyes, they're all going to be on Beans. The kills are there. The engagement is there for Boston Breach, but where is the leadership? I'm looking at him to step it up in that main AR role. This is the Battle of the Jedi, and it's time to see which green team comes out on top. Let's get it started, Blaze. Oh, Ali, I love that one. The Battle of the Jedi. But this stage is lit up green. Las Vegas, you ready? Let's toss it to our casters. It's Miles and Chief. Thank you very much, Guy. Wow, what a welcome, what an intro. Boston certainly got a couple of boos, but Doug saved them in the end. You could always count on Sensor. I mean, that's got me gassed, right? That's a nice little surprise to get the blood flowing and get everything pumping, because I tell you, these two teams, as loud as it is going to get, everybody's going to be challenged, including the crowd. It's very loud in here indeed. The Thomas and Max Center here in Vegas, only day one of Cod Champs here in 2023 and already off to an electric start. Well, up to Texas, Boston Green Champs, they've met them a few times throughout the year, but we are gonna have all eyes on the young rookie, on Snoopy. His debut, there has never been deeper waters here in the CDL. I, I mean, it is truly an unbelievable situation to be rolling up on main stage for the first time against Optic with a crowd like this at Champs. This is an incredibly unique situation, an opportunity to see if they can thrive in, you know, try to take over and again the maps that we have on this series it is fantastic for both of these teams on hotel boston the ars they have been dominant throughout stage five so watch beans watch awakening of course as a unit for optic 15 and 4 record on this map oh do they love hotel well, we're gonna see next level gunny in this series and for those of you at home wondering what we mean by that pure gun skill fantastic fights ahead of us 
we're going to see it all here in this series. We start things off on Hotel. And look, my earlier prediction is this series goes the distance to a match five. One of these teams might break the kill record because everybody ready to slay in this lobby. Let's see what this new rookie can do. There is nothing quite like it so far. Greenwall in strong attendance here in Vegas. But off to the races we go. It's Hardpoint and it's Boston in first. And that is a nice life for Optic Texas as well. I know if you're a rookie, I know if you are feeling the pressure, you need to get the kills flowing to get the vibes going as well. Nice little bounce back for Boston. And there you go, Snoopy's on the board. Snoopy's on the board. Well, in Hardpoint, we played first at 250. And as well, there's a roar for every kill. The most important thing is the score. We'll see that slow but surely climb up. And it's the particularly Texan side of green so far. Yeah, one thing Optic was certainly missing at the last major was those rotations, was the calm communication to put yourself in good spots. And well, they might be getting shot down. Snoopy flies through and picks up a two-piece. The rotation all ready for Boston, making moves towards P2. Yeah, Boston will be the white arrows on the minimap. And so far, big wins from them all across the board. Beans with another Challenge. huge. That's the second. Here comes Hoop silently towards the point. Snoopy reads him. Lead change, Boston. Yeah, make no mistake for Snoopy and everyone on Boston. The mechanical skill is absolutely going to be there. The gunny that is in this lobby is out of control. And the kill feed is out of control. Four-man white for Boston. They're going to get so much time. The force free for Snoopy, and I must admit, so far, so good for the Wonder Kid. He joins the roster late into the season. Will it be enough? 20 seconds remaining here on the second hard point. We go over to the other side of the map in a moment. Hey, and I think are challenging this as well. They're trying to fight for the final bit of time. But you have to be careful about how you work it through. But with the back spawns open, you take away an extra few seconds. And Optic very much stable on the rotation. So a 30 point game at the moment, but Optic will be in firm control of Kitchen. You got guys like Shotzi pushed out all the way back towards back plat. So right now Optic in control to bounce back. Optic to Kitchen first. Snoopy now on the approach. Can he get the break for Breach? Whoa! Damn. Gets Dashy into the point he flies. Finds himself Hook. Optic still hold it. Three players on the point, time's there. And it's a moment like that, right, for Boston. A lot of gunny, but then just flies in for the chow, and there's no actually play being set up for that break. And now Prashatsi has some intel. Set up for the kill, but Boston right now, oh, they're shooting. Oh, here they come, crimping beans. It's not a southern delicacy. It's a hard point break for Boston. They're in, awakening. Can't take down, big Bruce. The final kill comes through, 20 seconds to Optic. And that is a bounce back that you need from Dashi. Couple players on Optic, honestly, getting gunned, but you hold on, and just like that, you take the lead. So one strong hold on Kitchen Optic right back in this game. And more importantly, ahead of the rotation, two players, though, get gunned down. And Boston, they'll be in the hill first, but Shati is behind enemy lines. Optic Texas with a slight lead going into the bar hard point. Shotzi now from behind. Would he be able to catch Snoopy? And the rest of Boston is they've now got the time. Here comes the hit. Finds one. The second. Prep with the third there. Trades it down. Open hard point for now. The foot race is on. Yeah, that's the difference between good gunning and good comms. They were completely unaware that Shotzi got behind him. And little mistakes like that go a long way. But it is still a square up around the point. And goes the entry man with an AR. Getting the job done for the moment. Has the coverage as well. Attack 56 is dominating the feed. Optic looking strong. 30 seconds remaining on bar. Shotzi there with the covering fires. Optic looking to soak the remainder. Sukadashi the feed. 20 now to go. Across map we fly towards the restaurant. Three drinks are done. Now it's time for dinner. And Ghosty starting to get things going. It's a four spree for him. I hit the spree right now for everyone on the side of Optic. The kill's now going their way. They have the lead, and they are maybe a little ahead of this rotation. Dash will be the first towards the point. Shotzi's going to be there for the help. He got carpet covered, and this is just straight chow. There's no flanks coming through. This is all gunny. It's going to be a head bump. No one in the point just yet. Optic first toes in. Krimp with the nade. Here comes Ghosty trying to slow him down. Beans taken care of. Dashi, whoa, no more bullets remaining. Two HP. Snoopy now with a pitch. Shotzi cuts down two. Hard point, Optic. And now he's gonna be impossible to weed out. You're gonna chow with the stun, but still impossible to kill. Four kills free for Shotzi. Try to keep these players at bay. The quick chow, not good enough. There's number five. Boston flying forward, he's over to Snoopy. He finds himself one ghosty with the trades. Lovely teamwork from Optic Texas as his wheels are turning. Wonderful hold here on Kitchen as they push the lead forward. And this is so much time that Optic's gonna get as well. So they are running the lead up and out. These are nice kills for Boston to be getting to try and secure that rotation, but you are down by so much. Optic 
Optic, they are in firm control. Optic running the show on hotels so far in map one. The gameplay good. Let's listen to the comms. I saw the, he's on me, he's on me, default. I spawn sad, I spawn sad. I'm gonna play through mid, I'm gonna play through mid. What's default, default? I have the rest of the age. Yeah, yeah, he's cutting mid somewhere. What's default, default 1 HP. What's default, guys? Default, watch out. Yeah, default, watch out. No, 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 no. Default, default. Alright, white block away. What's default? Other guys hop up, other guys hop up. Nice. Yo, one guy's default. Default, default, default. Nice, default. Nice, default. Nice, default. Nice, default. Watch out. 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 What are you going to last here? Last here, 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 Front doubles then. Your right side window. Default absolute. Default absolute. You're in pool heady. I need 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 pool heady. I pool heady. I killed him off time. One's pool heady and then we're missing one. We're missing one. We're missing beans. Pool heady then. One more pool heady. 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 Fantastic listening to Optic Texas there. We're looking at the stats of Ghosty. 19 and 14 over a minute of hill time chance, and he's calling all the shots in game. I was about to say, main slayer, hill kitten, and this guy is directing traffic. That's the player you wanted to see bounce back from the last major. Ghosty right now is on point, and Optic are loving it. Got a nice lead, still though, Snoopy proving to be a menace on the map. Well, we see the first set of hard points complete. Now we go back to the middle of the map. We do it all again until somebody gets to 250. Hook though. Looking towards P2. Can he get any more kills out of this? No. Reach with a pinch. They've got the spawns for next. They break 100 points as well. Now, can they hold on to that side of the map? Oh, these are big gunfights as well for Ghosty. One more, and he's going to break P2 for free. But Beans actually gets dropped by Dashi, so there you go. Optic, full control of the rotation. They got P2 unlocked. They're in control. They've got the setup. Here comes Reach through the middle. Awakening finds his first. Over to Ghosty from the stairs. No one home just yet. Hard point time ticking. Here come Beans, Krimp, and Awakening on the inside. Snoopy right through middle. Still time ticking for Optic. Looking at the 200 point mark. No one on the contest yet. Here comes Hook, finds one. Trades are in. Shotzi trying to watch the cross, but nobody home. As Breach make the break, Shotzi keeping the play alive. How long can it last for? The last man standing. He's gone and out of here. I think a dominant performance right now on Hotel. Talk about a way to set the tone. Beans flying forward. Dashi finds another one. And the hard point is still back and forth here. Ghosty, last man standing. Gets two. Over to Snoopy. Gets two of his own. Trade still going down. Final 10. Optic can't win it here. I mean, this is just too big of a lead right now from Optic. Yes, Boston have the rotation, but everybody right now for Optic Texas, they are frying. They're working together. Three players going to be set up. Make it all four going through restaurant. Boston have to be perfect from this point on. Beans in beans. Awakening. Trying to cut down the reinforcements. Finds one. Two over to the kitchen side. Beans has to hold the line alone. Nades now as Boston Breach hold on for the push. Trophy's out. Here comes Shotzi. Shotzi versus Beans, shoulders thrown. Damage dealt. Nerves are getting there. The contest is inside the kitchen. The battle brought ever closer. We're burning time here. Optic are in! Optic are in! Awakening trying to stay alive! This could be game! Playing with their food. Optic are gonna get it done. From the last man around the kitchen has to thrive to try to make a play, but it's contest time that you are desperate for. Maybe gonna force that rotation, but 13 seconds away. After gonna take map number one, and they already have that rotation. Their rotation done. We are very much at the business end of the hard point here on hotel. Rotation towards the bottom right hand side of the minimap. Optic, all bases covered. What can Snoopy do? The rookie now from behind catches one. Not every corner has been checked though. He didn't get shot at. He's got to get on the point to save the team. He gets the break. He's alone, though. Waiting for reinforcements as Boston are in. Dashi from top bed. The fight continues. Okay, well, it is going to be a fight from this point on. Boston looking to be nearly perfect and in good spots right now for a moment. No flanks coming through. Everything just dealing with the front and a team kill from Optic. Boston still alive. Holding it all together. Snoopy finds another big one. It is not over yet. Over the top, though. Hoop managed to catch him out. Krem's got to go big. The pinch is there. It's 11 points for the win. Optic are in the hard point. Awakening dealt with. Here comes Beans. Ghosty fries him.
Final five. Snoopy gets onto it, and it's not over yet. I mean, you're just waiting for this levy to break right now. I think they can play for the scrap. They can play for the roto. They can get the time right here. Someone's got it, child. You can't get it done. And I'll get Texas. Take map number one. One down, two to go. A strong showing off the rip there from Optic Texas, Snoopy. A very tough debut here in the CDL. I mean, this is not an easy place to start. And honestly, from the jump, you had Boston Briefs playing well. Optic did not care. They were on point on the rotations. Quite literally, once they got in the kitchen the first time around, they basically never looked back. And again, Dan Ghosty, what a pickup for this team. Main Slayer, minute 45 in the hill, and even his comms are amongst the best in the game. You would expect this guy to be a veteran. It's his fourth tournament at the pro level. <laughs> well, he's got two second places, uh, dear pal, someone towards the bottom. We'll see what he can do at his very first ever CDL chat. So far, so good, though. Map number one in the books, Optic Texas, they take the lead. As now, we take a look at the highlights. I mean, it's just completely on point, like, the entire way through. Honestly, one of the most impressive moments, I would say, from the side of Optic is, like, the break they had on the kitchen, where you had that standoff between Beats and Chazi. It's just not a clean setup for Boston, where it's your ARs that are pushed up looking for the kills, and you're leaving your SMGs at the back line. So Shotsu was able to play with the food. You saw Hoop was the guy able to pierce the setup through the middle, and it's just clean and efficient teamwork. That is Optic at their very best. What did we expect coming into this matchup again? The gunfights, both teams extremely strong. Individual prowess alongside that fantastic team. That's what's really going to separate these squads. So far, Optic Texas, they've got it in spades. A lot more time, a lot more experience as a squad, and it certainly showed there in the opening map. And this is going to be a very dangerous and peculiar situation for Boston Breach as well. Obviously on Hotel, it's one of their stronger maps. Go to map number one. Now we go to Mercado s and for map number two. That has been Boston Breach's auto veto all year long. They have only played it three times throughout five stages. And of course, Optic, they're no stranger to Mercado. It's a square up 50-50 map, but Optic certainly have the experience. A lot of experience. See if it pays off. Mercado, uh, a bit more of a particular map. We'll see how the strategy plays out. As we look across our maps and modes, Desk went over it, but Mercado s and can be a coin toss. We'll see what happens again. All the tricks come out of the playbook here at Champs. You can't take any of it with you into the next game. You've got to leave it all here on the field. Already though, that has to feel so good from Optic Texas, right? You get double 3 0 at the last major. You feel a little bit of that pressure coming in at Champs. As soon as you get one out of the way, you just fist bump and say, hey, we're back. We are right in form. All right, we go. s and coming up next. And for those who are just joining us, there's a lot of Optic fans out there. First to six, we take turns attacking and defending. Hey, is that Woody? Front row, crazy. Vegas, we've seen it all. It's only day one. Into the search we go, though, Chance. Anything crazy that we're looking out for here? We've seen nade spots, we've seen some different wall bank positions. Is there anything new you're looking for? Well, I certainly know on Mercado, I'm going to be very, like, in tune to the number of nade kills that are coming through. But obviously, the B hits potentially as well. If you have no research on the side of Boston with this new team and on a map like this, a lot of opportunities to be created. So exciting to see. We'll see what happens in a moment. But first and foremost, we sat down with Snoopy at his very first ever major tournament. Let's see how it went. I mean, yeah, a lot of people have me, compared me to Shotzi, and I mean, that's like pretty crazy because I mean, Shotzi like a world champ, he's won a lot of things. Uh, so, I mean, I'm happy about people comparing me to him, but I don't know, I mean, I'll, I just want to be the best version of myself, so I want to be like the Snoopy, and I'll try to prove myself. He wants to be the Snoopy indeed. Well, tremendous pressure on the young man's shoulders coming into this series chance. And this one's in stats and challenges. The pressure is on, will he become that diamond? And obviously looking at those stats, and it's something that Nameless touched on on the desk, search and destroy is sort of what he's known for. That is where he's looked his strongest. And obviously this is exactly the map where he needs to bounce back. And you know how it goes with the aggro Vaznevs on Mercado. Those first floods are gonna come through at a rapid fire pace all over that cantina, cantina building. And it sets the tone, so he's got to pay attention to, he's got to square up. Fortunately, against the world champion Shotzi, there is no taller task. Here we go, into Mercado Las Almas, search and destroy map number two here in our winner's round one of the top.
2023 Football Juicy League Championship. Wow, this should be a fun one indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Looking at the stats this season again, a very different sample size, a very different look, especially for Boston, a new roster. Snoopy's in. Let's see what he brings to search. And I just got to say, that 58% for the first bloods, especially in one round where the nades are coming through, you get access early off the map. Interesting timing, though. You see Boston delayed their nades, but not able to connect. You're vying for map control. Snoopy sent in for the kill. Gets away, but not for long enough. That's hoop for two. Hoop gets two. Awakening manages to slow him down just a moment. It's now a 2v3. Optic Texas, man advantage, and the bomb down. I mean, hey, you like the aggressive strap, but Optic just there to pick it apart. You got the man advantage, bomb down. This is incredibly difficult to try and retake especially with two TAC-56 players. Beans and Awakening need some magic. Yeah, we're not going to see trophy systems anytime soon. Less than 30 seconds to go. Oh, Beans has a snipe. This might turn things around. We'll find out, though. He's got to do a little bit more than just take heads. He's got to absolutely run these players through. 20 seconds to go. Beans making his way forward. Awakening back him up. Ghosty takes care of one. All down to Awakening. Finds one kill. The clock ticking. Optic now will play it safe. No way this round gets away from them. Even with Demon Joe shooting like that. I mean, hey, he'll take the extra kill, but can't even go for the streaks. Get shut down at the end, and that is a beautiful round one strat. Gold team's waiting out the nades. I like the aggression from Boston. Snoopy trying to get in through the tunnel. He just gets sniffed out, and who sent in for the kill. So Optic, no stranger to pushing the pace. Happy for the first round. Strong shots either side. Didn't see anything with a snipe there from Beans. We have seen a lot of fantastic snipe play throughout the year here on Mercado. Beans, one of the players indeed that certainly wields the boomstick better than most. Let's find out what happens round number two. We swap sides, Breach now attacking. I want to see if any of these nade kills actually come through. Yeah, trophies out on one side and plenty of trophies out on the other. One player made it in Cantina from Optic. Snoopy's got the square up and that is a lot of protection. There's an Optic player just above him. He's popping the hoop though. That there Optic is. player finds his first blood. Massive advantage now going to Optic Texas. Then he popped. Crimp though, heard him coming a mile away. Hey, you'll take that trade. Now you just show all guns forward. And for the 3v3, tough angles to deal with, but plenty of time for Boston to work with. Posty not letting anyone get in that bomb site. Oh, bad timing. Beans flies Bow. in, gets two. Shotzi gets one on the cross. Now it's a 1v2. And you know he's going to be looking through this wall as well, potentially. Or he just wants to play it quick. He's popped the dead silence. He's moving around. And two players there from Boston to gun him down. Great reads out of Beans, great reads for the 2v1, making sure to stick together. We talk about that kill up top, when Hoop gets in your top cantina, if you don't trade him out, that is a dire situation. But Kremp delivers there, and for the final kill, nice little bounce back round. Kremp does use his dead silence, he won't have that in the next round. But either way, you step into the wrong back alleyway there, Shazi. They took more than your wallet and your keys, they took the round. Here we go into the third. And it'll be fun to see what Boston wants to do on the attack, or optic rather, if they want to just consistently go with those A hits. That looks to be the case. So, nades oh, out, standard oh. trap, but the nades are good enough to get that first block. Between knives and trophy systems, we nearly saw a double betrayal. Man advantage. Gone. Beam somehow managed to find one there. Technically, two on the round. Oh, three. Round nearly dashing out all alone. The 1v3. What can Bruce do? Boston. Anything done, man. That was so tough. I mean, that is a round from Optic that stouts are starts off perfectly. So many nades rolling through. You force the team kill with the trophy, and then you just get jumped on. Awakening five and two in three rounds. You had Beans flying bottom cantina with attack 56. Boston, they are not playing with any fear in their hearts. I think he blows up Kremp with the trophy and he's like, uh oh, I need to now fill that hole. That's the most important spot right now. And you see the game plan too. It was round one. Snoopy flying through tunnel to go to bottom cantina. This time Beans doing the exact same thing. So Breach, they are looking for the aggression. And maybe the aggression through the middle of the map. The sniper to look over, an opportunity to make a play. Uh, unfortunate. Team Nate, oh, so close. That one, not as much. Shotzi, though, his bullets land. Awakening beams find their respective kills. Man advantage, Boston. And just like that, I mean, you miss one shot in Dashi. Now you're down a man because the trades are coming through. They've no intel on Hoop. They haven't seen him yet in this round. But Snoopy right now in prime position to get a kill. There it is. Now a 1v3 for Hoop. Snoopy sneaks in under the radar, manages to catch himself one. And the second, no, Hoop stays alive. 1v3. Talk about an opening as well. To get that kill for free and to get out with this much time. This is clutchable for Hook. He's got both weapons as well. 
Maybe not quick enough to check the cross, so Boston Breach do have the intel game for the moment. He's about to spot something. Here we go. 1v3 now down to a 1v1. Beans pops steady. Looking to get things going. 30 seconds on the clock. As who has done an incredible job, but unable to make the read. The aggression from Breach pays off. And again, these moments at champs are terrifying to see. I'm thinking hotel when Shotzi's behind enemy lines and Boston don't read the flank. I'm thinking when you're solo challenging hookah ball players in the middle of the tunnel to potentially throw things away. They clutch up that round, but you gotta make sure that you stay nearly perfect against Optic. But either way, another round on board. A lot of defenses have been rolling through. Breach once again, once the A bomb site play doesn't work out, they hit B ASAP. See if it happens again. This time around, Optic Texas, they will be on attack. Sniper in hand, the beams once again, but he's not going to find a lot. All four members of Optic now flying towards A. Hey, they have not changed the game plan at all from Optic. Get all the nades out, go and dominate this A site. So they're trying once again and pulling out the tack for this moment as well. Doesn't have a massive amount of support for the moment. Teammates starting to wrap back in position as Kremp is going on the flank. It's very slow and quiet here. Bit of a standoff. Kremp. Ah, the play is on. No dead silence. Wait for it. Runs into serious trouble. Shotzi first blood. I mean, they're just playing with him. Still have to clutch up in the 4v3. Look at everybody child at the same time. There to drop him. A two versus four. You just dominate that A site. The classic one, two, three, go. Optic Texas pull it off magnificently. 4v2, strong advantage here in the round. As Beans nearly catches out Dash as he wildly throws himself towards that top side. Bomb planted. Here comes the attempted retake. Awakening finds one. Here's the challenge. The head's gone. Now it's a 2v1. Dash with a reposition. Tags are in. 35 on the clock. And Dash's shot, so you know that's the guy. Top Cantina actually Beans might not make the read. Wasn't sure who was going to beat. It's both players to his right side. The setup too clean. And out the Texas clutch up in the round. Strong patience, strong teamwork. The communication had to be very crisp there. They trusted one another to get the play done. One more round, we're all tied up. And I love the play from Optic as well. They get control of the A side, but they don't make any moves. They don't get over aggressive. They read the flank. And they had two or three players ready for the chow. As soon as they take Krep down, they hit the go button. Everybody flies out looking for the trades. And honestly, nothing to trade if you win your one. So Optic, <laughs> again, it is an aggressive map right now that we are having. Happy for the square up. Three to two. It's first to six here in search and destroy. And this time, we're going to B with the bomb. And if you're going on the B hit right now, the question is, what can Shotzi do in this situation? Oh! Gets away with his life. Well, for starters, and he's playing aggressive. Shotzi, he's looking to jump and make the play. You're never going to read this. And he's playing so smart. High IQ from Shotzi. Incredibly high IQ. One, two players now identified. There's one. The second, Anthony Cuevas Castro. One of the greatest to do it right now in the league with plays like that. And this is just looking free. Ghosty finds the pick as well. And it'll be a 1v4 attempt from Beans. Able to pick up a Vaznev, but not a lot of things to work with. He is surrounded. 40 seconds on the clock as Beans does have Deddy to work with, but Ghosty will patience pay off. We will find out. There's the tags, Beans. But I tell you what, son, there was a moment. That was the equalizer, three to three. Well, the real moment is when Beans is looking down the alley with his snipe and doesn't connect on the shot from Shotzi. And I love that from Shotzi. Most players will back up, reposition, get with their teammates. Shotzi runs straight at you, gets in the corner in position and just picks you apart. It's not just the gunny, it's not just the movement. Shotzi's got a big brain on him. He gets the positive ID on two separate players. The only one unaccounted for was the player with the snipe and he would have seen the glint. Huge play, three to three. Optic on offense. Ah, uh, they're just running straight through this time. All the nades have been delayed for Boston, so this time you just go in and dominate Cantina once again. There's another first blood for who? Duke start things off with a bang. Takes care of Snoopy, man advantage. Awakening and Krem, pruning the hedges so far. They're gonna hold that line, not let anyone cross. And if it's a 3v4 for Boston, you might feel like you need to make a play. So Optic are pumping the brakes waiting for a flank to come through to see if Boston overcommit. And in the 3v4, Boston haven't, but still, to execute this round, Optic are playing so patient, so clean. They're waiting for the perfect opportunity. They're going to try to make it now. Beans suppressing fire. The courtyard now full of Optic players. Waiting for that moment. Kremp holding that angle. As soon as he sees Dashi appear, things might get going. Here we have the play. Who flies in. Kremp finds two. 
Can he take care of Dashi as well? Damage dealt. Krem trying to stay alive. His teammates there to back him up. Here comes Shotzi over the top. Can he get both? Shotzi finds one. Shotzi! What a win from Big White! Yo, and what a win from Kremp as well. Gets the trade on Hoop and is there to catch Ghosty off the bomb. You got big plays from Shotzi. You got big plays from Kremp and Awakening. Gunning two players down in that round. Stone cold on the main stage. It's quick replay. Kremp's POV. Hoop flies by. They line up for him. Ghosty unfortunately caught there as well. It was Awakening with a covering fire on Dashi. What a magnificent round from Breach. And you got Beans pulling out the sniper again as well. They hit the middle of the map last time they pulled this off, and they're gonna do it once again. Snoopy gets sent through tunnel again. The aggression oh! through tunnel, but again for who? Another first blood. Whoa, it's, it's a bit of a protracted gunfight from Krem there. Somehow stays alive with bomb in hand and gets away. Awakening now trying to make something happen as the players are moving away from this one, but they oh, have not accounted for Shossi. Eyes are on. Krem taken care of, the trades are there, it's now a 2v3. And you know that they were trying to wrap that back as well, so you see Dashi right now moving back towards mid, he can watch the cross towards B, and everyone else from Optic, again, the patient game, they have been on point. They've got the crosses covered, they're in position to get the trades. But if you get picked, hard to trade the snipe, and there it is, Beans ties it up in a 2v2. Now the problem now, what do you do if you're Boston? Do you take the bomb to A, where the members of Optic are, and it looks like that's what's happening. Over to B, we now go, around the corner, fly, who going against one? It's a 1v1. Beans v Ghosty, 30 seconds on the clock. Two rookies going at it, and right now for Beans, he is running out of time. Good news is he has bomb, and he's gonna be able to get this down. Ghosty not gonna check it in time, a true one versus one. Dead silence now complete, Beans now making his way forward, thundering into the Ghosty had to do was wait. And the loud, thunderous footsteps as he splashed through that puddle and splashed into the equalizer. Four to four. And make no mistake, both of these teams feel like they need this map. Boston on hotel control have been 5 0 perfect throughout this past stage not want to give them a, a tied up series going into game three. Both of these teams hungry for Mercado. Pressure rising for our rookies. The deeper we get into this map, the higher the heart rates go. Dashi with a snipe. Got him. Beans wins that first blood. That's such a big moment, but now Shanti gets caught as well. Boston bounced back just like that. And look, you got the timing on Hook. You don't get slayed out like that, and you know where he is. Fly at this man and kill him. Boston Breach, an instant round. Map point. Boston Breach, a lightning round from them. Two snipes from Beans. That first opening blood changes everything. These guys have been on point as well. You have double digits for Beans. You might be the same right now from Awakening, and you win the sniper battle against Dashi. So much value Beans provides in Search and Destroy. Fast hits from Hoop, not able to make anything happen. Now we go to a dire moment, Optic Texas. We test their result. Can they tie it up once again? They've been trailing in the search so far, and this time the bomb to be. And we saw what happened last time. Shotzi picked them apart. It's a different angle right now for the MVP of Chance, but he's dealing with them all again. It's Shotzi. It's here to take as many as you can down. He's already done his job. He has kept you at bay. Shati is built different. One kill might be enough. Can Beans find number 13? Here's the check. Rips hook. 3v3. And you can hold this as well. Right now you have Awakening just looking out for Shati on the chow, but eventually they just want to double back, reposition. But I think Optic might be reading this, right? If Beans gets left on the flank, you still have guys like Dashi worried about that A bomb site. So this is a 50-50 call, but Optic Texas right now fully prepared for this run out. Dashi's got a very important job. He has eyes on the small cross. The tiniest of angles there from that teeny little Christmas tree. We'll see if Christmas comes early. Awakening of Beans now through the top side of Cantina. Here's the check. Less than 30 seconds to go. Eyes on one, eyes on the second. Here comes the hit as Krem finds his kill in mid. Awakening on the bomb. Here comes Dashi, springs to oh, life. Oh, sick. shoot, shoot. It's all down to Dashi. He might be in a bit of trouble. They've got to find him and deal with him ASAP. 15 seconds. Bomb being planted to B. You kill Dashi, you win the map. Oh, there's nothing he can do. Trap out here, making MVP caliber plays. 
We didn't catch it, but Krem just went and dominated that round. There we go, Boston. Tie the series up. Nerves of steel, despite what was honestly quite a one-sided map one after the, uh, the halfway mark, but we have a series in our hands. Opti Texas, Boston Breach, one to one. And look, we talk about how this is Snoopy's debut. Krem, also a rookie. You have Beans, also a rookie. This is their first chance against Optic. You get picked apart on map one and you bounce back like that. That is unreal. And more importantly, two first bloods and the map win. That's a very interesting stat. 13 to six as well for Beans. The snipe certainly paid off for him there. Boston Breach. Ricardo Las Almas goes their way. But now we go to hotel, we play control. Totally different game mode. Things, I mean, at this point in time, you flip the coin, whatever happens, happens. We got a series in our hands. I mean, look, for Boston, throughout the stage, they have been perfect on hotel control, obviously with a different roster, but it has been beans and awakening, absolutely shooting. Literally have not dropped a single round of defense on this map. Boston in prime position to take advantage in the series. We'll see if that happens here at Champs, because let's face it, friends, in Vegas, all bets are off. We'll find out how the control on hotel goes after this break. Don't go too far. This is the Call of Duty League.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. The CDL is brought to you by your favorite Orange Bandicoot. Pre-order Crash Team Rumble today, available June 20th. We are back, tied up one to one here in our winners bracket one matchup. Optic Texas taking on Boston Breach. Woo! Las Vegas has been a delight so far. We've got some fun plays ahead of us. We've got a big replay there of a massive two piece from Trent that won in the round. I mean, Trent was picking up two pieces all over the place, but this is in the middle of the map. Shati, who is a menace over towards the B site, just gets caught and then no trades to come through. Ghosty thinking about the snake, Kremp thinking about the gunny. 28 HP, and that kill wins them the round. 20 seconds on the clock as well. You certainly change things after a play like that. Kudos to Boston Breach. We will be seeing a Fortress Hardpoint at the very least now. We play control on Hotel after this one. Chance, how are we leaning, brother? Uh, Which way we dress it? This is why it's so difficult to tell, because Snoopy is the new man on the roster. If it was the Boston Breach of old, honestly, I'd be pretty confident for yeah. him going in because of how clean that they have been. But I think at this point, it is guesswork. It was a grueler, a battle on Mercado. I kind of think it's going to be the same thing on Hotel, because again, in this lobby, everybody is shooting. Everybody's shooting real good. We'll find out how good, though, in a moment. Of course, that control game on Hotel coming up after this one. One team has to take the lead in the series after that. We play Fortress Hardpoint. That's going to be a spicy one as well. We're seeing that no matter what. How do we feel about that? I mean, okay, so you have to lean Optic for that one. They have like an 8-1 and one record when they played with this roster, so they have been godlike on Albagra, but still it is the cracked out players on Boston on a map like Albagra. You never know. You set up the spawn trap, magical things can happen, so I'm very excited and happy that we get to see a map four for these teams, but got to get there first, got to get through this hotel control, and on the record front, kind of 50-50, but it is the defense where Boston have set themselves apart. Again, perfect on defense. All throughout the stage, they get it for round one. Here we go. Round one. Fight. As Krem and Snoopy find their kills, Optic Texas will be attacking these two zones first. Here in control, 30 lives either side. Get rid of the lives or get rid of the zones your pick on offense. And good luck with this, right? If you're trying to deal with two players on the God Heady for Optic, they're already forced to pump the brakes. 30 seconds have gone by in this round. There's only been two gunfights, and it looks like gunfight number three, maybe not gonna go their way. Shazzy actually finds it. So much damage being done right now, and Optic somehow might turn this into an opening. Oh, in that's three down, over to B we go. Looking for the stack. Only Ghosty for now. Shotzi finds another kill. Space to work with. Three members of Opticon B. That zone is going to vanish. Wait a minute, Beans with the name. Awakening now making his way forward. Two segments gone. It's not over yet. Here comes the hit. Ghosty stays alive. And there's it. Awakening gets in. Stops the capture. B remains. Oh, they catch Hook as well. I'll say though from Optic, they will take that situation, get two ticks, and still applying the pressure. Shotzi at least has an opportunity to be annoying and right now play for the kills or force him back on time. But for Boston, nobody's in position. Shotzi with one gunfight. He got this B zone. Gets the B zone captured. An additional minute to play. 21 lives either side and 140 on the clock. Over to A we go. Yeah, talk about the test on defense as well. Shotzi just forces the action out over towards A. Much more difficult to defend. Oh Binzo, that is a oh nice my. start to get the two piece. There's going to be a grueler of a round. Shotzi gets in. What was that kill, son? Snoopy flying forward. Kremp cleans kitchen. Dashy at the back door, trying to make sure he keeps in position here for his boys. Stays are in. Lovely damage there. Delta Snoopy takes care of business. 16 lives now for Optic Texas on attack. And they are not giving up kitchen without a fight. And as soon as you get kitchen on the attack, you feel so much better about your chances. Win a couple of these gunfights, and Boston will spawn so far away. Hold the line though, Dash, he finds a second. Snoopy the trades, he pushes forward now. That makes things tough for Optic. Can they get onto the point and stop the clock? I mean, they're just setting up for the tails again. Another wipe, that player is gonna spawn so far out of the action. Beans, a massive trade for the moment, but Optic right now, they can pour it on. Flying on, one life difference. Keeping the capture alive. Numbers still good. Here comes Snoopy once again. Can he take care of Ghosty? No, he cannot. Over to Awakening, the next man here for Boston Breach, and again, nobody on this point. We're still playing for kills here, either side. Optic trail by two. Oh, staying alive right on those stairs, Ghosty. Doesn't care, it is champ's time. <laughs> he is ready for these kills. Here they come. Reinforcements on their way, the stack is there. Three members of Optic in. 
It's gonna go real quick. 29 on the clock, get him off, and you feel real good about your chances. Second segment gone. Here come Breach, flying forward. Shossi holding it down. Who finds another? That's the round. First round of defense, Boston have lost in about a month. They have been so clean, but right there, especially on that B zone, Shotzi picks them apart. Literally off the jump, the first two kills go for Boston. They get the perfect setup on the map. Shotzi's one shot as he's descending from the top catwalk, somehow finds a kill in consistent big plays over towards B. So much more difficult to defend that A zone. That is a hell of a way for Optic to start this map. Lovely start. A little bit of discourse there on stage between Boss and Breach. Attacking run for them now. Forward, they will fly towards A and B. It's first to three here in control. There's one. Whoa! Lordy, who can really get them both? Nice opening. Ghosty on a five spree. One more kill, and he gets a cruise missile to play with. I mean, yeah, trades all over the place right now, but for Boston, it's not going to work with that B hit off of the rib. Force the reposition and start to work this A zone, and they're taking their time to make this happen. And if you give Shotzi a little bit of time to work with, this is where he starts to dance. Oh, Ghosty did get killed number six. He has a cruise. Oh, who can't get any more? Flying out of kitchen. Shotzi finds one. Shotzi can't get the second. Snoopy now manages to get onto A. Stops the clock at 48. Wow. <laughs> what is it? That's a seven spree as well. So Ghosty gun is hot. This man loves himself from steps. And right now for Boston, again, forced to go towards this A zone. They are not having a good time when they're trying to get there. Eight spree from Ghosty. Still capturing A. Boston reach slow and steady. Chossie stops it. He's going to be able to drain the segment as well and keep the defensive play alive. There's only 30 seconds remaining on the round. I mean, this is just suffocating. Optic right now, even sending two players over towards B just as a safety net because they've been so dominant on this side of the map. Boston, they cannot create anything right now. We're in the red now. 15 seconds to go. Shots here on a three. Flying forward. Leaving the players off the point. Damage dealt. A lot of information passed over. Final 10. This is a last ditch attempt here in the round for Boston Breach. And if you're Optic, though, you absolutely chow. You set up and try to get him off this time because the clock is that low. Obviously, you have the positioning right now, but here's the hit coming through. Here we go. Two to the front. Who finds one? Trades are done. Boston's still holding it together. The play not finished just yet, though. At shots, he will call it. He'll run. Take care of that later. A captured. One minute to go. You give it the attempt. If the kills don't go your way, you make sure you play safe over towards that B zone. So Optic, again, they just delve back into the perfect setup. Two players pushed out towards bed. Two players worried about the flank. Looks like Boston, everybody's going to be going around on this flank to try to break it down. Very moment for both teams. One clean wave of kills. Boston breach, and they'll be able to get the capture. Trade's done. 3v3 on the player live right now, slow on the approach. And if you're slow on the approach, you gotta be worried about the guys coming off spawn as well. So reading the spawners, never easy. Going through for gunfights like this, but you got Snoopy and Krempe rolling through. They get the first two, now you jump on the zone. That's two, time to fly on the zone. Clear out the bedside of the map. Awakening's gonna do what he can over there. It's Hook and Shotzi on that side. Reinforcements from Optic far away. Here comes the cruise from Ghosty, trying to clear the point. Will there be a trophy there? No need. There's a third. 25 to go. And now the question from Optic. It is only Snoopy behind enemy lines. The only guy right now that can try to find the opening and make the play. And two players right now from Optic turn. Actually, three turn right back. Hook's winning gunfights in the meantime. Trades all over the place. Optic still with the advantage, but here comes Snoopy. Snoopy's still here. Can he keep the capture going? No, it can't account for Hook. Final five seconds, and there's only six lives to breach. No one that close as Krem taken care of. Optic, another strong round. Map point, Optic Texas. And you had Hook so resilient on the defensive end, goes on a five spree to end this round. If he doesn't pick up a couple of those kills, and there's a two piece that comes through, Boston might have been able to make something happen. But clean on defense, they played it safe, they got the job done. 2 0 lead right now, Optic Texas in respawn on cruise control. Let's see how strong and how capable they are to close out a control 3-0. We don't see too many of those throughout the season. We haven't yet. And champs, we'll see how different it can be. Boston Breach now looking for the comeback. They'll be on defense here in the round. Stay alive for a minute 20, and you're all good. But so far, not a great start. Oh, they're trying to get aggressive. That means who's going to be able to fly? Oh! The instant two-piece snapping like that. Damage dealt. On to the point we go. Hook trying to hold it down alone. Reinforcements on their way from both sides. Boston have got numbers. Snoopy flies, gets two of his own. What a bounce back from Breach. 
Nice little battle. You strike on one end, you strike back on the other. Eh? Shazi, he'll nade anything. He knows more than I do. If he does something like that, I just feel like he knows. He was getting his own trade there. Gets one up front. 15 and 8 so far. The capture on A as Hook has been decisive so far in these opening attacks. Two man stack on A. Yo, Dashi and Snoopy, by the way, just did a 360 battle for the Gunny win. So Snoopy's going to take him down. That is an opportunity to try to swarm over towards A, but it's going to be too difficult to get through. You have Shotzi, 16 and 8. Impossible to weed out. Moving like this. Beanstorm. One bullet would have made the difference. Now a minute to the game clock. Optic Texas, capture B, and the map is complete. We go to Fortress. Can Breach hold on and force another round? And this is just so much time from Optic to work with to try to approach this B zone. Right now, it's only Kremp that's made it towards Bedroom. And oh my God. Oh, the reinforcements oh are not God. living for long. Who's again? Another five spree. The nuke cleans house. Shotzi can't get any more out of top bed. Kremp stays alive. Now Ghosty's in trouble. Beans back at it as both teams go in blow for blow here on the B zone. Uh, Kremp making moves too, but who? Man, he is snapping in this moment. That is a terrifying sight when Hook is frying like this. And I think there's the first two kills. You know Kremp is behind you, but other than that, it's only one player off spawn. No pressure relief whatsoever. Kremp is still in bedroom side. He will be the insurance policy for his teammates. Hook got him. cleans him out. It's done. An open field now. Fly forward. If you're Optic, get on that point. Stack it up. Awakening from lobby, trying to clear house, and that's it. Everyone from Optic dead. Boston. One minute to go. Boston don't know the spawns, though. No one's able to cross out towards the bedroom. They don't know how quick this pressure is going to be there. So uh -oh. this is nothing but 50-50 gunfights. If Optic get a wipe, the round is going to be there. He's got to go big. He's got to find a couple here. Awakening gets one. There's 45 seconds to go. Optic now with a pinch. Pressure on towards the B zone. Shots, he's going to be in there. That's going to cause a lot of problems. Awakening, though, trade. no problem for him. The line holds 35 on the clock. Yeah, not a single trade to be found. A bunch of solo chows from Optic, and now you only have 30 seconds left. That gives you one good hit to try to work together, but you get caught sprinting. That is just going to slow you down so much. 22 seconds on the clock. Eight lives apiece, though. 20 seconds. Anything can happen. Again, one wave of kills for either team, and this one is done. Snoopy on the stairs. Here comes one. Finds it. Tags are in. The second chow. Can Snoopy win it? Get some both. Defensive holds there. Shotzi manages to get another point. Can he get this third in a row? Here comes the teamwork though from Boston. Flying in. One segment cleaned up. Shotzi somehow manages to get his. Oh, the hip fire is there. Eight seconds. Hook's on the zone. It is a 2v4. No respawns remaining. You get to the point. It is a 2v3 now clutch. Boston are desperate for. Boston got to fly forward. Beans has to kill Hook. Can he get it? No! Dashi gets him! It's all down to Big Wake! He finds one, two, it's done! Nerves of steel! As Optic Texas cut down Breach 3 to nothing in control. Advantage in the series, momentum now on their side. And make no mistake, very few rounds this year have ended on live. We said it at the start, we'll say it again. These two teams are challenged. The number of two pieces, Hoop is picking up like crazy. That Kremp and Beans were responding to a back and forth battle, but Optic simply too much to handle. And Kremp 8 and 20. I mean, he had a lot of assists on board, but he was suffering in game three. What a vicious game of control. The hotel heroes, Boston Breach, not found here at Champs. They do a wonderful job there with a the 3-0 in less than 10 minutes. We don't see many controls go that short. Wow, what a matchup so far. Well, whew, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at the highlights here. And then we're going to gingerly dive over towards our Bangra Fortress chance. What a Bangra of a series. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that is quite literally the ultimate child map. So it's going to be exciting to watch. But I know like a pain point for Boston Never a mechanical skill. Has never been the issue for this team. It's sort of like that veteran presence, making the heads up plays. I'm seeing on the hotel hardpoint, Shotzi getting behind enemy lines and Boston not making the reads. That is two rounds on offense from Optic where they're just making the big plays on the B zone and the heads up gameplay is simply not there for Boston. So it is a pain point. This many rookies on the main stage right now throwing Snoopy in just a shark infested waters. They're close, but it is so tough to survive, and now you're down 2-1. You need the bounce back. That is a task and a half that you're dealt with.
Oh, everything, uh, <laughs> anything and everything you could hope for here at Champs, it'll happen. Optic fans rejoice after that third round, stolen from the jaws of defeat. Happy for it indeed. We are not done yet, though. Frustration for Breach. Still in a very difficult period for the team chance, a lot of growing pains. And what could have been a boob series might just be an oboob if Optic can have their way. Well, this is going to be an interesting map as well, because obviously the hotel control you were looking at as a potential advantage for Boston because of how clean they have been. Well, the only clear-cut advantage they have now on Embassy Search and Destroy, I think they're 2-0 against Optic on the year. They have a better record at 7-3. and three. What Boston don't have is three rings as a coach. Three rings as a coach now. I would, <laughs> I would love to know what Damon is saying right now. Karma. On one side of the stage, on the other side, Zed. Been with Boston Breach since the start of the season. Ups and downs for that roster, for that squad. We'll see if they can't pull it out here. The Chow map coming up. Fortress, a very small map. Submachine gun players love it. Tight corners, plenty of play space available. We are going to see a lot of kills in this next map, friends. And again, for the Embassy Map 5, I'm not saying Boston clear-cut edge. It's still going to be a battle if they get there, but they have been strong on that map all year long. So Optic want to take them down on Fortress. They are 8-1 and one with Ghosty. They have been dominant on this map. I mean, winning it by an average of like 100 points plus. Incredibly consistent. The last time they played it, though, they took a loss to Florida. On the flip side for Boston, they've lost Outbacker Fortress Hardpoint eight times in a row. So many of these games have come down to P1. They are losing on the tight final moments time and time again. They have had two weeks to prepare for this very moment. It does not make it easy, but it is going to be such a fun map to watch. We've seen the first hard point, P1, behind this sort of white truck has been the bane of Boston Breach here on Albagra. Will it be the case here? You've had plenty of time, as you said, Chance, all the video in the world. Match point, Optics Texas. We roll now into Fortress Hardpoint. <laughs> Let's get it. How we doing, Vegas? We good? I love to hear it. Let's see how this one goes. Should be an absolute treat. Yeah, again, first on the hold percent rank from Optic, the eight and three, a couple of those losses were very early on. The plus minus is completely absurd for Optic Texas how much they love to see this map in a situation like this. I don't think it has been their bread and butter, but again for Boston, they knew what map they were gonna see. They have had two weeks to prepare. But more good news from Optic, they start on the good side. Good side, bad side, it may not matter anymore. Snoopy, you trade it out. As the game plan now for Optic Texas, keep that position that Shotzi's in here. Top left-hand side of the mini-map, hold onto it with an iron grip. Get what you can from the trucks here by Hook. But most importantly, do not let Breach over that side of the map. Uh, hey, at least Breach have gotten out. Trent nearby as well. They just got all the kills. It looks like Optic, at least a couple of these players should still be spawning on the deep left side. So they'll have a pinch for the moment. And right now, that is the important player on the back line. Ghosty needs to stay alive. Crucial moment for Ghosty here. Dashi finding his fights across map. Spawn's getting a little bit crazy. Optic are spawning with top A side. A lot of pressure on towards this P1. Nice start for both teams, good time. But Optic are about to run that scoreline up over top left. Yeah, and you have Optic again. Ghosty gets the kill, he does his job, he blocks the spawns, and he keeps his team in prime position. So long term, Optic in a good spot. Short term, you got Awakening on a five. That is not a player you want to get hot. He's starting to get gold, Demon Joe. Will they be able to exercise here? Dashi can't get anything. Snoopy cuts his way forward. Now the pinch on towards the point. It's all under Dan Ghosty alone here. Three members of Breach from the back line. Fly forward. Who gets one? Reinforcements are there. Demon Joe, he's nearly left all alone, fighting for everything here. Can he get the streaks? Can he get the point? So far, Optic have denied it all. I mean, he wants this kill so bad, but now you got players rotating. This is so much time that Optic's got enough B2. You got it, Chow. I know you want the cruise, but you need this time. Still, they haven't made it actually to the point. Optic are still collecting. Oh. You wait so long to take the gunny. He might have gotten the streak, but Optic are going to be secure on their rotation. Oh. Snoopy gets caught, and Optic have a nice lead going into new. Flying to the other side of the map now, over towards the Fountain Hunt. P3, as the players call it. We call it a pain in the ass to try to break. So far, Optic have got themselves in first. That is a great spot to be in. Can Beans 
find his way forward now on the break. And look, it's only Beans across enemy lines. You have Hoops being the cutoff man, and hey, Beans at least deals with him. You open up the pressure and you call on the crews, but if I had to guess, I bet there's a trophy. Should be a trophy system there. I saw nades. No! The trophy gone! The crews lands. Kremp makes his way forward. Snoopy from up high. It's the break is on. Can Shotzi get them both? Shotzi! <laughs> Point break optic. The bailout mechanic, your trophies were not on point. And well, the trophies continue to haunt oh. you. And it's just nades. It is nades and cruise missiles right now, keeping Boston on this hill. Throw him if you got him. Dashy brings a fresh trophy to the party. Go see on the front line. What a hard point there from optic. Nearly done though. As we go across map once again towards cannons. What a hard point so far. I mean, honestly, I'd say for Boston, he'll take it just to cut your losses. Oh, oh. That could have been so much more time. You're still down by 40. You're not in a good spot, but at least you have that rotation. Again, Beans right now, that cut off man, getting all the intel for the team. He can set up the orchestration on the map. Not see, going for the toes, doesn't get it. Beans is going to be there to cut him down. Brand new hardpoint open for business. It's cannons, and we're going to be firing in a moment. Can Beans get any more out of this life? No, Hook opens up an avenue of attack. Dead silence active now. He won't make a noise. He's able to move freely across the map and try to soften up the defenders. The rest of the team now through the front. This is a big moment for Optic Texas. Well, I think he got spotted on the cross. So a player's cornered up in the back and oh. awakening. Well, might not have known, but still there to gun him down. Boston uh -oh. right uh -oh. back in this game. This has been such a strong hold and 15 and three out of awakening. He might be playing for the kills, but he is making Damn sure that he's getting him. Makes himself untradeable in that corner. The trophy system is working overtime. Gets kill number six. Another cruise. Kremp there in the feed as well. Final 10 on cannons gone. And Boston Breach, it was damn near perfect. Now, though, over towards the blacksmith we go. Open field. Look out for that cruise miss. Yeah, possibly going to use it, actually. He's putting himself in that deep of a corner. The investment going to be coming in straight away. Get the names and tax out on the point. Make sure the trophy can't have full effect, but not clean that time. Optic's still in the hill. Missile defeated. Optic's still on the hill. Over to Awakening to find it. The job done with his gun this time. Lead change. Optic Texas. They start to push forward. But so far, an incredibly close hard point. I mean, you're just looking for the kills. You have Optic that have been soaking around. Ghosty in his happy place and trying for the cover, but a couple kills go your way in. It's a contest for the moment. Ghosty finally gets rooted out. Boston finally able to break towards this Whoa. hill, but this has been a rotation, a nearly tied up game. This is the battle we were expecting. Maybe he gets himself a fire spree, and all of a sudden things look a little different. Opt final 15. They're going to be able to soak up left, left of that blacksmith hill. And look towards the beans in a tough fight against who can't win it. Strong work from both squads. We take a sort of slight lull. Back to P1 we go. Quick reset. And this is an opportunity. I know we had Optic Texas earlier on. And now it is Boston turns going to a listen in. He was on the green box. Like, no, Rain time, rain time. I don't think he's in the shock. He's inside, he's upstairs, 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 one shoot, one shoot, one shoot. Three, two, three, two, three. Stop rails, stop rails, stop rails, stop rails. Stop rails, stop rails. Yeah, slow the game down, slow the game down. Does he roll? Nice, I'm coming. We got him, we got him, we got him. Nice, I'm coming. 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 Nice, I'm coming.
still a close game, but very different sounds there from Boston Breach. Quite frantic. Things are getting a little bit dicey and with good reason. Shots in the game. Finds one. Finds two. Shots. You can't get all three. But that's enough damage dealt over to Ghosty now. An easy win from him from that position. Hook now on the reinforcements, soaking the fountain. Optic Texas. Yeah, look at that spawn from Shotzi, by the way. Spawns right up in Mats and is ready to get back in the action. So Boston desperate to try to break through, but they are getting shot in the front, shot in the back. A clean four in the feed in Optic Texas have dominated this hill. Oh, he's starting to wind up, starting to get styling. Damage dealt. Sweeping was a big one. Couple kills go the way of Boston Preacher. Once again, over to Cannon. But this is 20 seconds. A perfect Fountain Hill out of Optic Texas. Huge time from them. Boston will have full map control on the left-hand side. But here comes the hit. Optic fly forward. And this is looking insurmountable, right? Again, you're trying to keep everybody cut off. You got all the crosses covered. And right now, Boston have a good setup towards new. That's the good news. The bad news, you're down by 80. And Shotzi already trying to break you down. Down a dance. Now you have to pick a corner, any corner. He could be anywhere right now. They've got no idea where Shotzi is. I don't think he knows where they are either. He's shooting ghosts. Damage dealt. Beams is there. Can't get two. Trade's done. Once again, breach. Solid cannon hold so far for how long? At light speed for the SMGs and Dashi on the slow approach looking for these kills. So a standoff battle between him and Awakening. Damage being done. And Awakening not really challenged us yet. There to take him down. Crimp for two. Ghosty gets wiped as well. You call on the Fountain Hill from Optic. You respond right now for Boston. Fighting right now in this game. Terrifying prospect right now. Boston Breach, next 20 seconds, likely to go their way. Snoopy has managed to once again infiltrate the lines of Optic Texas. Finding kills all over the place. The contest there. We will not see the perfect 60, but Beans with the immediate bounce back into the time. Final 10. Rotation goes to Optic, though. And that is a man right there that knows his spawns. You spawn up in a death. Ghosty, not happy for that one. And it's still set up towards new. The damage is being done, but still, it is Optic that's going to be in the hill first. This is great time for them to get. Snoopy, though, jumps in the hill, picks up a two-piece. Boston, they are working this comeback. The war on two fronts, so the pinch is there. You're never going to read this, are you, Krem? Guns up, not enough. Shots here, Hook, find the kills. Hard point break, Optic Texas, once again in control. It's over to Beans. A final break now to stay alive for Boston Breach here in the series. Gotta get him out of the hill, and there he goes. You get the twos, you get the man out, and you get yourself back inside. Ghosty, though, cleaning him all up. Can't get Krem, but you got the time. Optic in prime position for the win. This could be game. One more break for Boston. Can they pull it out once more? 20 now to go. 10 for the win. The contest as Demon Joe can't get any more. Final few moments. Snoopy, the last man alive for Breach, has to get these players off the point. Now, look for the contest. Snoopy's there. Will he be able to stay alive? The contest still, but it's Ghosty. Still keeping the play going. Hoop from behind, and that will be game. Optic make light work of the honeymoon period for Boston Breach. And despite the shenanigans in the search and destroy, they do look strong. The bounce back from Toronto so sorely needed. If you're an Optic fan, you're feeling much better about that. Boston Breach, they will now move to the lower bracket. Absolutely the biggest question we have from Optic Texas just got answered. Optic and Albagra Fortress Hardpoint, name a better duo. So dominant, so clean, and right back in form on those respawns. Loser Mercado, s &D, that's all right. That's a 50-50, Matt, you'll take it. 3-0 in the control, domination in the hard points. Optic Texas, free that big sigh of relief. Oh, what a sigh of relief as well. I mean, a lot of questions. Many folks worried about the performance we saw in Toronto. Questions about the player's health. Everything now looking a little squeaky clean. Aside from that surge, a 3-1 to one that they could be happy with the control performance as well. You don't see many 3-0s, and it really was a strong one. The final look at the stats there on our Bagra, it was a square up. Not a huge amount of work either side, but strong spawn play as well. A scored line like that, without the kills, kudos to Optic. And, and I know at the Major as well, Shanti and Hoop were struggling to find their action on the map. Now right there, those two players absolutely fine. There we go, a look at the series. If not for that search, it would have been a very strong look from the boys of Optic, but hey, a wonderful outing for them to start things off here at Champs 2023. A banger of a season. Will it be a banger of a closeout indeed? What so far, so good for the boys in green, for the other green team, for Boston, lower bracket awaits. For now though, Chance, I mean, 
Who knows? What a crazy first day we've had. We've still got more cards to play today. More teams coming out. It's been incredible. We've got a very fun interview on stage. Guy Blaze is ready with Shossi. Thank you so much, Miles and Chan. Las Vegas, give it up to Optic Texas as they take their first series. Shotzi, immediately, I just want to ask you, how are you feeling after getting this win in champs? Feeling good, man. I feel like the hardest one is always the first one, so mm -hmm. I'm glad I got, you know, got, got that one out of the way. Uh, you know, shout out to Boston. But, uh, yeah, we won. What? We won. Yeah, you win 3-1. You sent them down to the loser's bracket, all right? Now, the next question I got to ask you is that after that, the loss there in Major 5, okay, coming here, what was one of the biggest things you guys wanted to change here getting the, getting the champs? Um, I feel like our biggest thing is just focusing on controls. I feel like that's one of our weekend game modes throughout the entire year. And honestly, ever since then, we've been slamming the controls. So uh, we're going to continue to do so this weekend. So, yeah, just but our controls, yeah. Yeah, you look good right there. Talk to me about your teammates, man. They like they play well, okay? Gas them up a little bit, okay? What you what you, what you so happy about with the squad? I wear a unit, man. And it's, I feel like it's hard to, you know, find that in a team. Mm -hmm. You guys want to win. We do whatever it takes to win. We don't care about stats or anything like that. So, yeah, we just want to win. All right, man, I'm going to let you get back to winning. Any last-minute shout-outs you want to get to these guys who've been standing up cheering all day? Shout-out to the Green Wall, man. You guys go crazy. I love you guys. That does it for me and Shotzi on the stage. Chris, take it away. You got to love the young man rocking the shades. Clayster, you won a ring alongside him a few years back. Now he's here with Optic Texas. Shotzi and the crew bouncing back after a terrible Toronto. What would they show you in this win? Who has Shotzi turned into, man? And I, I saw this guy when he just came over from Halo. He's a nice, quiet kid. Now he's got the sunglasses on, <laughs> right? feeling himself, Confident. enjoying himself. It's awesome to see the confidence in Shotzi. And uh, this Optic squad, man, they're looking back to the form that we thought they should be in. Allie, we just saw Nate Shot walking by. He's heading over to the Scump Watch Party. All the biggest names in Call of Duty are here this weekend. Who has shined the brightest on the stage, though, out of our first three matches? Who did you like in this series? Well, we're going back to the all three matches. Well, you know what? I said it was going to be down to the Jedis. It was the two green teams going at it. And we saw Hook Skywalker. We saw the SMGs for Optic Texas seriously turn up when they needed to. I'm glad that we saw the head side of the coin of Optic Texas is not the tails. All right, Nameless. Let's take a look at some of the highlights and talk me through this performance. Yep. Because Boston bringing in a rookie. They take one map, but it's Optic moving forward with a 3-1 victory. Yeah, this is the Optic that we thought we would see at Major 5. I was very impressed, honestly, uh, by OpTic, especially in those hard points. The money hills, the focus that they had. You think about that hotel map one. Kitchen, both times, played absolutely phenomenal. We went to the listen and we heard Ghosty making the fantastic comms. And then also when you talk about Al Bagra, P3 rotation, locked it down both times, despite Awakening starting 17 and three, some ridiculous stat line like that, Optic still had the lead. The SMGs played so well throughout the series. As we talk about with Optic, they are the backbone of this team. When they are performing, Optic is gonna find success. And we gotta take a look at your scuff play of the game. Boston kept it close, but it's the final moment as Optic seals their first win of champs. They lock up the last 20 points and they get it from the youngster. Ghosty coming in, leading the comps, and also lighting up that kill feed. You can't ask for anything better. Putting a, a rookie in your team like Dan Ghosty and what he's done, I mean, he's got the kills, he's got the comps, and he's got the hill of time. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better, well-rounded player. Again, I'm just happy to see him feeling better and showing us what he's capable of doing once again on the main stage. Over 50 kills combining were the SMGs, though, and that is the story for me on day one for Optic Texas. We look forward to their second round matchup. That'll be against New York as we'll see yeah. that battle going down a little earlier than some people expected. Nameless, talk to me about this win, though. What does it mean for Optic? You've been yeah. in their shoes. Now we get to see them walk away with their first up. Yeah, it's everything. I mean, you lost 3-0, 3-0 at that last tournament, right? You're compromised. I talked about bouncing back from that adversity. Well, this is a big time win, right? There's a lot of pressure on that stage. You're going up against a rookie coming into it. If you lose that, you know what the narrative's about to be on all the social media platforms. So for Optic to come out here, silence that, but also the SMGs to be the stars throughout it, everybody had their moments, but that is important, an important piece going forward for a run. Before we take a look at the bracket here, I do want to check in on Boston, though. They caught everyone off guard. They bring in a rookie. They put Snoopy in the lineup. They wanted to see something different. Did they get what they wanted, Clayster? Did you like enough from the rookie today? He dropped over 1.0. That's all you can really ask from somebody making their debut on a stage like Champs. He really 
popped off that first hard point when as soon as he started moving, I was like, oh, wow, this guy is going. Like, he honestly played how he has online, which I was very, very surprised about because normally people slow down a little bit when they get to land, yeah, when they're playing game, in yeah. these matches at champs. He was going, and hey, you need to do that. You need to play to your strengths. Well, he's going to have everyone from the Challengers community cheering him on as Boston continues in our elimination bracket. Let's take a look at where we're at right now in this tournament. Three teams moving on into our winner's round two. FaZe waiting for the last victor of Toronto or LA. And you can see down at the bottom, our elimination bracket already shaping up. Breach kicking on Rocker to kick things off. Yeah, the desk is three for three on the day. Maybe we can go four and four. And what that says is that the teams that, you know, a lot of us expected to do well are actually performing. So we're following the script a little too well. And I'm hoping for maybe <laughs> a little bit more upset potential heading into the rest of this weekend. This, of course, is our Call of Duty League Championship weekend, but it's not the only competition. World Series of Warzone is back. It's bigger. It's better than ever, Nameless. And it all starts June yeah. 23rd. So head on over to World Series of warzone.com to sign up today yeah man you know just working with warzone the community's merging together it's absolutely fantastic to see i've been playing some warzone ranked recently it's pretty fun can it's i play in this fantastic. i hope so clay <laughs> put me on your team and carry me to the bank let's take a look at how you get involved if you haven't already fall god esports it's your one-stop shop for all things world series of warzone and challengers follow along on twitter at cod underscore esports right now we're into a break when we come back we got your fourth battle make some noise vegas because when we come back it's going to be the epic showdown you've all been waiting for
There is so much going on here at Champs 2023, and I'm at the Scuff booth currently, where you guys right now can come and support your favorite CDL teams. We have every single team that's participated this season up for grabs in controller form, so you guys can go home with your absolute favorites. We also have some very, very special controllers up for grabs, and you guys have to come down right now if you want to get your hands on a personalized, signed, scumpy controller. They are going like hotcakes, so make sure you guys are coming coming on down and grabbing those at the Scuff booth. I need to find out where my duo is, and I think he's over here playing. Shift, how's it going with the Scuff controller? Well, the Scuff is helping, but I'm still getting pooped on a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, it happens to the best of us. Pocket, over to you. Thank you, Lottie, and best of luck, Shift. At least he's better at casting. We got Koyster here on the desk, joining us throughout the week. And Alley Cat and Nameless gearing up for our fourth and final winner's bracket round one matchup. We have the number four seeded Toronto Ultra taking on number five LA Thieves. But if you've been tuning in, you know these are two championship caliber squads. Nameless, how has this showdown been throughout the year? Yeah, I mean, it's not been great for LA Thieves. It's 4-1 and one on the season if you're Toronto. And in this series, the ARs have fried. I mean, Insight and Scrap, 1.4 and 1.5 in S&D. Same thing when it comes to the control, which they are 8-2 and two map count in those two game modes combined in this series on the season. So if you're Toronto, you are super confident, especially after that 3-0 beatdown you gave them at the last event. Yeah, so Toronto getting the last victory. Clayster, is that a big deal, though, or do you just wipe the slate clean if you're LA Thieves? You're the returning champs taken on this team up north. Tell me about the squad, though, that'll be wearing purple. Honestly, this Toronto team, you look at guys like Kleenex, who I think have elevated their game this year. They brought in Scrap, they brought in Hixie. I think they have a well-rounded team, and I also think the support system behind them is really good. I think they have awesome support staff over there at Toronto, help elevate them to the next level, and you know, you gotta, you gotta put it all together for champs, so like a goldfish. As we take a look at our Monster Energy pregame, if Toronto wants the win again, need a strong slaying performance. All players negative at major five, Scrap a .96, Kleenex a .85, and show why you're the best control team in the game, a 33 and 12 record in season that is number one across the board. I almost kind of disagree with that first point only because we've seen Toronto Ultra win by get, even though they were getting outslayed in many series before. Thanks, Charlie. I think, <laughs> I think kind of my personal opinion when it comes to the series is that Toronto just needs to play to their strengths. You know, we saw them go up against Atlanta over at Major 5 and they put Expo in the series. I disagreed with that heavily and they sort of beat themselves when it came to that hotel hard point, that map number four. So I think they need to play their own game against the LA Thieves. Let's focus on the Thieves though because this is the squad that they won this trophy last year. The 2022 world champions are coming in as the underdog in this battle statistically. So Nailwood, Clayster, walk me through this squad. Why are there people still doubting LA? I have no idea why people are still doubting LA. I guess they just, you know, you're only as good as your last game, so everybody kind of judges you off that, but they did just win Major 4, you know? So these guys right here, I'm honestly thinking Thieves. I think that they're a different beast when it comes to champs. I think they're well prepped. I think they've been practicing nerd spots. I think they're yep. ready to go. All right, Nameless, walk me through. If you're pulling out the dub tonight in LA, how are we getting it done? Yeah, I mean, it's a combination of everything. This is a very solid squad that you're going up against in Toronto Ultra. They're good at every game mode. You have to be absolutely on point. And uh, let's just set the stage a little bit with this LA Thieves team, right? They win major four, and then they have a bad online stage. It starts in loser's bracket round one. They beat Optic Texas. They have a decent run, and they run up against their hard counter throughout this entire season, which has been the Toronto Ultra. So when you look at it and, like, if we need to win a tournament, this is the team we need to game plan for. They've had two weeks to prepare for this match to Clay's point. They have a fantastic coaching staff and management team over there in the Thieves camp. I think they could absolutely come out on top. A win here guarantees you top six, 80,000 plus, and of course, a chance to play Atlanta phase in the winner's round two. Let's take a look, though, at the five games we're going to be seeing throughout this series. We're starting it off with Hardpoint on Hydro. Ooh. That's right. Fortress is in the mix for game four, and we'll see LSU and Embassy for our S and D's. What do you think about that game three, though? Who has the edge when it comes to control, Alley? I mean, I don't know if I can give that edge to either team. These are two both very strong respawn teams. I think the biggest flag here in this overall layout is there's not a single hotel for Toronto Ultra. So LAD's are clearly coming in with a game plan. If you've been tuning in all day, we have all chose the same team every match. I'm going to kick things off so you can't copy me, Clay. So I'm going with Toronto Ultra. Where are you going? Oh, switching it up, baby. I'm thinking Thieves. Sure. Going Thieves? I'm going Toronto Ultra. Man, I, we didn't have the maps when I made this pick, but I got to commit because I already did it. I got Toronto. 
He's got Toronto in his bracket. It's time to find out who's right as we send it to the stage with Blaze. All right, Vegas, one more match today. Let me feel it. Are you ready for this one? Coming to the stage is one of my favorite battles of fire and ice. But first, here come those boys from the north. Get ready, because Toronto is here. Twenty-five sitting on twenty-five racks. Just got started, no, we ain't done yet. But a new crib, that's a goddamn flex. A goddamn flex. Sign that check. Told him that shit that I been up next. Can't take calls, but I send that text from way downtown, but it's still wet. Yeah, that's a guarantee. King of the city, man, they knowin' it's me. Hey, damn, yeah, still doing it with ease, cause it ain't that hard when I'm talking about me. Me and my funds, told him I get what I want. I need my money up front. I do not do this for fun. So I've been here my whole life, I ain't seen him here once. Las Vegas, I give to you the Toronto Ultra. Give it up for Scrap, Pixie, Insight, and Kleenex, the Toronto Ultra. Rookie of the Year candidate, but also MVP candidate with a championship this year. This Toronto Ultra team is not a squad to be messed with. You know what they say, to become a world champion, you have to go through one. But this is round one of the winner's bracket. Toronto Ultra have a lot to deal with. Let's bring out our world champs from last year. Yeah, it's just, just round one, and it's time to bring out the heat. Las Vegas, get ready, because here comes the reigning world champions. Bro, again, Ken? My bad, bro. Is it time to go yet? We have a problem. See for yourself. It's me, Shane. Dylan turned me into a dog, mate. No Whoa, way. What the f oh, way. Whoa. So what do we do? How do we fix it? I don't know. We got to win champs. Okay, then. Let's go. Yeah, I need a thrill. I got to feel all for the game I'm living. That dog in me. This is how legends are made. Las Vegas, here comes the LA Thieves. I give to you Envoy, Kenny, Draza, and Octane, the reigning world champions, the LA Thieves. With that adorable new intro, your defending world champions take the stage. They couldn't have got a worse draw going up a team that might have been their boogeyman in the Toronto Ultra, but the LA Thieves are not not used to the heat. It's time to get the final match of day one of Champs started, Blaze, and it's gonna be a banger. It is gonna be a banger. Las Vegas, you ready? One more time. Las Vegas, are you ready? Bryce Tun, take us away. <laughs> Thank you very much, players. Yes, we have a monster matchup on the main stage. These two teams could end up walking away with the champions, but first, they must get over the hurdle that is this game. They matched up recently, Tung, Toronto. Come away the better team. Yeah, three to zero and what was a very close game, but both these teams winning events over the year, they will be feeling supremely confident coming in the champs. And I think everybody in here will be sort of thinking, either one of these two teams could win this weekend. So it just makes an absolute bang at the kick off <laughs> the week. It's gonna be a really, really good game. But as I said, Toronto Ultra looking more, probably more confident in this one after that result in Toronto. The LA Deep's got some proof. It's champs, it's thieves, you never know. It certainly is, of course. Toronto, they have the two Rookies looking to make a run that could etch their name amongst the legends that we've seen do it before in their rookie years. On the other side of the stage, LA Thieves want to do the impossible, something no actual full team has ever done. There have been individuals, but no team has ever won back-to-back -back championships with the same roster. But they've already broken the champs curse. They've already put that one aside. But can they be better than they were just two weeks ago? 
We're about to find out. Yeah, well, look, I mean, <laughs> that man on your screen specifically draws up. There's been a lot going on for him, of course, as well. Crowd behind him. Oh, no, I thought this was an LA crowd at one stage, but then, of course, not what I'm here, and I don't know if it is. Yeah, we are, though. Between these two teams, LA Thieves, very right coming in. Champs, the champs, curses, broken, yada, yada, yada. But they won't be thinking about that right now. They'll be thinking about what they can do against Ultra. Think about their, what their deficiencies were the last time. It was very close games. They struggled to close them out. But it was hotel. It was all hotel. We went there for a three-night stay, back to back to back. We do not see that map once in this series. We started on Hydro. Yeah, a little bit better in the statistics here for the LA Thieves. But it is a weird rotation and hold rank ton. Yeah, uh, one I really want to point out that's not on the screen that break in percentage. Toronto sitting at the very top against teams who are typically a really good breaking team who are lying towards the bottom side of things. So, LA Thieves, their typical strengths, I want to say, when it comes down to half point, haven't really transpired over towards Hydro. So, they're going to have to bring something there. But Toronto Ultra, keep an eye. P1 and P2 is where they make most of their money. And Envoy was looking to go fishing there for a few seconds. Couldn't find it in the end, but. Very Thieves on the slightly preferable side. It does make this easier to get P2 if you want it in the end, but Ultra will soak a bit of time on P1 and now looking to make some moves. I really let this play from inside. Really patient, finds Kenny. And will now start to try and make some moves over towards the P2 side. Clean next big win on Straza as well. Octane kind of caught off guard here. Nicely done from Ultra to get some sort of inroads over towards the P2 side. Octane will be dealt with. Ultra now only have to look one direction, but it was mostly the kill feed they fell into. Spawns a split though. Ultra did find a way through. Rather, the key here in this entire attack has to wait, has to be patient. They know the spawns are coming out as well. You can tell this. Ultra are looking to make their way here for reinforcements at the same time. Draza must strike. It's waiting for the best moment, but the rest of his team haven't found a way through. Ultra spraying everything in the middle of the map nice and easily. Envoy, though, can't find two, but will get shut down. Nice from Ultra. They managed to just find one player to find a way through. Starts to split the spawns. It's then about the gunfights in the middle, but Ultra won. Ali Thieves now on the aggression. Nope. And more pressure coming through. They do not want to give all this time away. They found a couple of kills to begin with inside. Now going to start feeding the squeeze as players from LA Thieves come towards him and Devon get that gunfight. Scrap with the last one here. He falls as well. A recovery from the LA Thieves as now we are off to the races. The far side, the fights do not stop. Big win there from Draza. He's all on his own. The rest of the LA Thieves now still spawning over towards the P2 side. Draza will inevitably probably die here, but needs to stay alive as long as he can. Now Ultra have got a pretty easy setup. Four seconds to go over towards P2. LA Thieves can be very far away and again it falls onto LA Thieves a hard break a map they have to move through to get near this point as well and that back will stay resolute inside has not fallen yet very rotational heavy whoever's been in there first which has been ultra two out of two times is pretty much picked up nearly every single point about a 20 point lead for them, but a couple of kills on the inroads over towards the middle of the map. Starting to come through for Thieves. Only a big kill coming through from Hixie. Envoy will deal with him, and it will be a break coming in from the LA Thieves. They tried again, though. Clinics has been seen. He's going to find Envoy. Envoy's going to find him first. Grab. Gets his back in. Oh, well, oh, oh. that's two kills for him. The pressure now going on to LA Thieves, but they're going to try and pin them here. Ultra, no. The rotation is what they need more than anything, but Hixie will get the final few points. He just has to keep fighting the respawning LA Thieves. Hey, it's more than a final few. That's about 20 seconds or so that Ultra have been able to play for. And the important thing, as you mentioned, LA Thieves now spawning over towards the backside of P3. P4 rotation is already there for Ultra. You just seem to be a step ahead in every single angle so far. They were there first on P2. They were there first on P3. And never so slender lead because of it. Kills coming in on the mid-map transition. No Kleenex must stay alive. And Danny falls already. Tries to get it this time, LA Thieves. They don't wait. They break straight back into this point. And you can see Ultra just cannot find anything. Kenny will find two through ruins. And for now, the LA Thieves will have control. They will have the points accumulating. And that feels like the first time we've seen Thieves get themselves dug in. But keep an eye on Hixie. Seems to have slipped the net. He needs the rest of the team to find the kills in towards the mid-map. Hixie will be there to strike. But he's the only one who can survive from Ultra. A small amount of respite from them on this hill specifically. 25 seconds to play for. Spawns are kind of split. Can Envoy cause problems? Yes, he can. Ultra just about rebuffed. They get the back spawn. It's not the greatest thing for them in the end, but Ultra will say, all right, we'll kill you. We'll take the points. We'll get this rotation as well. They have the bodies. Draza will fall as well. Ultra will go behind, but should be able to get the lead back here on the rotation. Yeah, and as mentioned, the first time that we've really seen Thieves find a breakthrough, find some sort of control. They've been fighting very, very hard to try and keep this one close, and well, have kept themselves into the lead. But again, it's another rotation for Ultra. Inside, sitting 11 and 5, he'll be a big reason for those rotations. Going towards the Toronto side. Two kills falling away. Good hold so far. Oh boy. Oh. Huge kill towards the back. 
The pressure now mounts on the ultra. Oh. You can see Envoy finds a second as well, and now they're looking for it. They smell the blood. Envoy will be stunned, but he has his friends around him. His teammates are there in numbers, and they have broken this point wide open. And finds the kill at just the perfect moments there for this side. Gets smoked by Kleenex, though. And for all the hard work that was done by Thieves, is it going to be undone by Kleenex and Co? Scrapco managed to find a way through. It's a gunfight. He shouldn't win. And you've seen the player cam. He's letting them know. Octane and Co still spawning towards the backside. It's an effort to slight lead for Toronto Ultra, but they managed to break through what looked like a good setup from Thieves. Thieves, though, now they have to make at least one more push, but they will spawn P2, so they'll be happy about that. As we go into this second set of rotations, you can see they are behind, but realistically, it's nothing. Keeping an eye on these spawns over towards the P2. Big fight's gonna start coming in, and as mentioned, Toronto Ultra have been really strong. P1, P2. Players like Inside, players like Hixie are always gonna be trying to find that route through. Insight's the one to hold it down. Hixie's the one to try and make those sneaky little plays. And Insight. On a little swim around the outside of the map, it's starting to work for these P2 rotations, which are going to start coming in in 40 seconds. But as this is all going on, there was a little bit of free time for Thieves. Inside still working the back. This is everything. Gets his teammate just one with him as well. They're going to look at the pitch here as well, but Octane is aware. He has been watching, he has been waiting. And even Kleenex yes. will fall before him, but Ultra will have the spawns. He'll take. Wow. He's not able to get any more. He did his job, but that is not going to pay out for him. And now Ultra again will have P2. Oh, I mean, they get a small amount of fortune, but it's when the kills come through that don't work out for Thieves. The kills come at the wrong time, and then all of a sudden Ultra are there to spawn and there to cause problems. Yes, Kenny will find a couple of kills and this scrap time. As we head over towards P2, this game is pretty much dead even. But again, it is Ultra. First one's there. It's felt that way in nearly every single hill. And with Thieves struggling to break, typically on this map, it's maybe a cause for concern. It hasn't been too bad for them so far. But can Ultra lock in some decent time? The setup is pretty much perfect. Octane finds one though, increases the pressure. We'll have to find inside towards the back and inside. We'll take a few bullets on by getting kills as well. Ultra are being beaten back on P2. It's another break from Thieves. The rotations aren't on point, but they are horsepowering their way into every single one of these hills. Yeah, we talked about Thieves' game plan when it's come down to half point. Oh yeah, their breaking has been superb. This map specifically, they've struggled. Not in this game though. Really big break coming in from Thieves. That was looking like a guaranteed 40 or 50 coming out from Ultra. And now they're walking away, licking their wounds. It will be the first significant lead, I want to say, that Thieves have had. They'll be sitting at around 30 points or so. By the time we get over towards P3, well, more so 20 maths in that hard. Heading over here, though. Which way are Thieves going to find a breakthrough? The setup from Ultra is good again. They cannot get broken again. And this has been the story over and over again on this map. Ultra are here first. Thieves will need to break again. One slip from either of these teams could change the course of the game. Drive's gonna find one, Envoy finds one as well. Ultra now gonna be feeling the squeeze. They will be spawning towards the back, still held by Insight! And that's a huge kill from Hixie, but these are here in numbers. Octane trying to get some breathing room. It hasn't worked out for them so far as the point still remains in Ultra's hands. And if you are the side of Thieves, you wanna just try and keep that pressure on, but Kenny and Draza dealt with. 30 seconds to go here. Over towards the P3 side. LA Thieves in the prime position when we're going to start moving over towards P4. But it's a lot of time that is now being given up to Ultra. That 20 point lead that existed for Thieves now belongs to the side of the Toronto boys. And oh, pretty much locking this down comfortably. LA Thieves are keeping them pressed in though as best as they can. Thieves will be there for the P4 rotation for Ultra with a healthy little lead by the time we head over there. And now for the first time, LA Thieves will have a rotation. Oh wow. But they don't have the numbers, the spawns are not with them. Name, Draza. Roll, everything. If you can stay alive, the rest of the team are on the way, the rest of the team are about to start winning some gunfights in the middle of the map, or are they? Draza still surviving, but he's the only one who does so. Everybody else from Thieves falls. Toronto Ultra with a hold. And they have the hold. Let's find out how they are feeling in the comms out with the Toronto Ultra. Listen in. Chiawa,我们是不是？Chiawa,我们是不是？Close Archers, scaf, 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 scaf. Not climbed up though. Still low. He's still on the left? Yeah. Watch out, Archer. I'll see him, bro. He went. What's one out of him, I think? It could have. He's in ruins. I don't know if it was him. Kenny. He went top ruins. Oh, 
Nice, one more, one more. Top rock. Nice, time. 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 Nice, and the screams of dead echo around the Thomas and Max Center. Ultra feeling themselves and for good reason. 27 and 21 scrap at the moment. LA Thieves were here first. But even with that raucous comms we've just heard, this game is not over. 15 seconds to go here on the second rotation. LA Thieves in the prime spot as we're gonna head into the third over towards P1 and P2. This game, you are very right, is far from over. Insight and Co. did really well to find a break, but it was only a small one. LA Thieves will find themselves 30 behind, heading in over towards P1. P2 rotations are here, but it's gonna be a fist fight over towards P1 now. They need a little bit of magic. Thieves want to hold this, they want to get back into this game and hold the P2 down as well. Hixie trying to find something he knows that plays in the water. If he dances around and goes out Octane, looks for his last player, Kenny will take it down as well. But the damage may have been done. The other side of the map, P2 has fallen to Ultra. They will have the spawns. 35 seconds to go here at P1. If you're Thieves, I was about to say it might be crucial if they can get it. But Kalimex finds two and just slows them down. LA Thieves are so far away from P2. But last time around, remember the break that came through? It will need to be there again. There's 20 seconds of scrap time though. If you're Thieves, it has to go towards you. Now for Ultra, they are set up. They are ready at P2 and they can close the game here. An Ultra must have iron in their soul and fire in their blood. They can win this, but they must hold off the thieves who are coming. They can feel it. This break is everything. They have a good breaking percentage on this map and they need it now. The thieves now. You set up in a better spot than you have been before when it comes to these P2 breaks. Nobody from Ultra is shut down. Here they go. Here they go. The thieves have broken and they get out of the water. Envoy takes them. Ultra, you were here first, but you are not. It cannot be won by Thieves at this point, but they can do enough damage. And the problem was there is that El Toronto Ultra had nobody over towards the dome side, so they can't keep that pressure up, but they can find the kills towards the back. Kleenex, he's trying to do it on his own. Falls down to Octane, but it's Ultra in. The game, very, very tight. 25 seconds of beats him. Pixie looking for players he knows are coming. Octane opens the door, says hello, and down they fall. Scrap to get another one as well. There is a Huge. fight on the rotation. It will this time be them as well. Octane. It's gonna go down, but this is not gonna end on that point. We will move, we will see another hill. It was Envoy who wins the gunfight. Over towards P3. Toronto Ultra are gonna be about 10 away by the time we get here. Kleenex finding one on top, Octane, Scrub and Madraza. Everybody falling, Envoy left on his own. And he's got guns all around him. Ultra find it, they break the thieves over their knee. And now they have to move, and they cannot find the ingress. It is five seconds. but not close enough for Thieves. You just can't lose that many rotations. You cannot lose that many. So many times we've seen Thieves battle really well to keep themselves into the game, but rotation after rotation after rotation belonged to the side of Toronto Ultra, and that makes the difference. Huge gunfight went on over towards P3. We've seen kind of off camera on the map. I was pointing very, very aggressively towards it as it starts going down. Envoy and Co. win the fights over towards P3 after scrapping very, very well at P2, but do not win the crucial gunfights towards the end when you do get the rotation. It's a close, close game to kick off the series, but a huge one from a potential rookie of the air and scrap 34 and 29 from him. Big game. It was crazy. Pretty much all the way through, I have to say, Ultra did a great job of playing the fundamentals. They may yeah. have been broken by Thieves over and over again, but it didn't matter. They were always there first, and there was a few, what I will say is missteps, maybe, from the Thieves. Some of the rotations should have been cleaner. Maybe should have been stacked a little bit deeper at times. Points bled away into the atmosphere that they did not need to give. And, and then I, I suppose, you know, we, we talked about the stats in terms of Thieves really struggling with the breaks.
on this map specifically. They didn't look too bad on it, and that's what kind of kept them in it. But Ultra, the number one breaking team on this map, when they did win the rotation, which wasn't very often, they were there most of the time, they were finding breaks and hurting thieves when they were able to find a very rare rotation. It was a tough one for thieves. It always felt like they were on the back foot. Even when they were ahead, it always felt like Ultra in control of the game. And when those kills come in over towards the P3 side, it seals their fate. Run Ultra, take map number one and scrap. Letting the crowd know about it. <laughs> there is something to be said. Come into the CDL and maybe one of those personalities you either love or hate, but he has backed up the trash talk every step of the way. Nerves do not exist for this man. 34 and 29, is it champs for the first time? Still delivering. Big slam performance from him, but Insight as well. We talk about those rotations. Players like him and Hixie. Hixie more so the ones on the rotation, but Insight is there to lock them in. 27 and 22 performance from him. Will be well thanked from the Toronto Ultra coaching staff. A big, big map number one win for Ultra. Speaking on, you know, in terms of which way we thought this map would go, Thieves kind of favored on the statistics standpoint. We haven't seen it a great deal from Ultra in comparison to these. A really, really big map number one win. Also, as mentioned at the top of the show here, between these two teams, it was a three to zero last time, but it's also a very close map number one, just like that. <laughs> it certainly was. The coaches now whispering into the players' ears, regaining them, moving them on, reminding them of the fundamentals of the S and D. You don't dwell on the last map; you move forward, and that's exactly what they will be doing as we head into LOC. Lo, one of two times we will see it, regardless of what happens into this. Fortress and Embassy will be next, whether or not we get there, very much in the LA Thieves. Yeah, I, I look at Thieves heading into this one as well. We'll still have some confidence. They're 4-1 over their last five on LOC, or Search and Destroy, so we'll still be feeling happy about this map coming up, and I don't think they'll be too deterred. Far too much experience <laughs> on that stage to be in any sort of negative mindset. Yeah, okay, I think there's a few little things to be annoyed at, but, you know, it's something for another day. As you mentioned, you speak about it later. Try and figure out whatever you need to if you're either going into Friday while you'll be playing some games, or if you're going to be waiting until Saturday if you go on to win this one. You need to get it out of your mind. Speak about it later. But these boys in purple will be very, very happy with how that one went. We're now heading into their S&D pick as well. We'll be feeling supremely confident. They certainly will. Well, the coaches have left the stage. The fist bumps have been bumped, and the map is going to be loading. We've had our hard point, second course, a bit of S and D. Let's see how this tastes for the two teams. Right now, you can see actually a losing record for both sides on it. But is that going to matter, Tom? Well, we'll certainly find out. I think some of the stats to really speak of, though, is those first bloods for LAT. Very, very high percentage, but conversion has been a big problem up until recently where they've really stepped it up on that side of things. Toronto Ultra, very good on the retake, so keep an eye on that. You may well see something of that nature over towards round number one. LA Thieves now onto the attack, making some inroads over towards A. His first blood incoming now inside Cole, but he's pants down and killed. And boy finds first blood. Now, Clinex is trying to play his life. He's got a shoulder there, a little bit of information. But he gets away, can he at the top as well? And he gets that one. Threads the needle, brings it back to a three versus three. But there is an elephant in the room, Tun. And Toronto are gonna have to make this move. It is all on them now. What's the play? What's the move? There's Drazo. Drazo will find one. Yeah, onto Scrap, and there you go. That's the defend over towards him outside. Octane with another. And what a perfect way to answer back to what will feel like a disappointing half point performance. Pixieville. In a one versus three, no dead silence to his name, may well get it shortly. Not in the prime position against three members of Thieves. Mixy just checking this now, and now he knows. The problem is he will have to run the gauntlet. Heavily outnumbered. Bomb gonna be down, and he goes for the chow as well. There's nothing more he can do. And his first blood to LA Thieves. Yeah, and first blood really did help them over towards that A control side, over towards the courtyard, start to make some inroads from there. But played very, very patient as well. Didn't try to make any silly plays, didn't try to get over aggressive. They took their time, they know like somebody like Kleenex, you've given up the middle of the map, he'll be running straight through that, and well, into your jaws. Very, very well played from the LA Thieves side, nice and patient. Is it, it, I think it's very easy to do. Come on, you're such a destroyer. You want to try and prove a point after you lost map number one. A really methodical play from the Thieves. We'll find them in the lead after one round. And that's what they're going to continue. That's what they want. Clinics, can we play it with a kill so far, but... 
really matter as we go into round two. Here come the first move. Already Scratch is going to chase off Octane, but Envoy will get that first block in the Hicks as he falls. Straza gets one onto Intern as well, and Scratch like, where are my teammates gone? And down he goes, and Kleenex now under pressure. LAVs have swept off the board. No respite, no rest, no room to breathe. Now they thieves took them out. And just to kind of go back into that first blood and conversion percentage from thieves. It's been pretty high all year long. It's been 57% or so from stages one to three. But in terms of their conversion, it was in the low 50s as well. They're still getting a lot of those first bloods, but they're now converting 80% of those first bloods in two round wins. It's a big change in the statistics. They've been working those numbers a lot better Two prime examples of that in rounds one and number two. Two first bloods, two rounds. Well, let's see. What can Ultra do? Because they have the defense this time around. Only one kill in two rounds, and Kleenex. He catches a couple of bullets, but stays alive. Still 4v4. And by still playing aggressively, even though he's on a fight four spree. Bomb going down over towards the side, but in terms of retaking Toronto Ultra, one of the best teams in the game. Envoy, though, is going to be in a prime position to help out the bomb when it does go down. Oh, Nelly gets smoked up Kleenex, but will find first blood again for Thieves. Bomb now going down 5 3 for Envoy. Trasa continues as well. It is completely unanswered. There's nothing they can do. Envoy gets six, gets the cruise. Only scrap left alive. And Ultra have failed so far on this map. They have found nothing. Yet to really arrive on Ella Seal up. Scrap needs a one versus four to keep this from getting a little bit embarrassing. Thieves running away with a search and destroy so far. And again, it's a first blood, and again, it's a round from it. Ultra unable to answer so far. Seven and O oh from Envoy. Everywhere he goes, Ultra tears in his wake. And just one thing, it just feels like Envoy is running down the middle of the map every single time. He seems pretty much uncontested through mid. Let's just do barrels, gets himself into secret. No problem whatsoever. Ultra, no clue. Well, this is where you have to make adjustments. You have to figure out what's going wrong, what can we do better. Only Kleenex has a kill in three rounds for them. Seven and O oh for Envoy. Four and O oh for Draza. Octane's got a kill. Kenny hasn't found anything, but this time the tables have turned. Scrap and Hicks opening it up. Eventually, Draza goes to work. Not the dream! A 1v1 now for the round. And he just does so well to find two, and now he finds the third. Octane. What's the play from his point of view now? Information? There it is. Bomb down over towards BB. He gets Kleenex Vaz in hand. Octane with the AR. Oh, it's going to be a hard gun find to win. Both players engaging on each other, but getting away. Oh my goodness, he has him center as he's turned, and Kleenex will win it. Around they so desperately needed, and just a little bit of timing, a little bit of a play. Neither going for the reach out, by the way. It's a little nervier, champs. I don't know if you know <laughs> <laughs> No, and that's always a really difficult one for Octane when that bomb is down, and then at that stage when you're up against a fast player like Kleenex and the bomb is in that position, it's always going to be very difficult. Is he hiding on the site? Has he pushed into mid? So much info that is not really at your hands that you really need if you want to find Kleenex in that one. So Ultra have stopped the bleeding. Two spree for Kleenex, but bearing in mind Envoy with that cruise missile, draws her with one long side. And now we find out if Ultra reverse their fate. Draws her says no, causes him to be info more than anything else. Just opens up the B side of the map though for them, doesn't it? Yeah, it goes through the window, but they find very, very little. Now it's all about Octane, kind of looking over towards that B side. Is anyone from Ultra leaked out there thinking the aggression would come in? Doesn't spot anything, but now Ultra, not in a too bad of a position to hold this one down. Scrap with the snipe out, things weren't working over the first three rounds. Found a kill in that previous round. Let's get Ultra on the ball and rolling. But the map in a weird place. Big kill from Draws around a Hixie though. That gets rid of the man behind the enemy lines. Octane with another, now a four versus two. We have a little bit chaotic, a Scrap finds it with a quick scope. Gives a sign of life here, but it will still have to be a retake. Scrap and Insight still outnumbered. The dead silence active. He's found a better gun for this scenario as well, but they will still have to find the kills. Scrap trying to find something through the wall inside, just trying to play a bit if he can, but Envoy pops the door at the right time. Nelly finds the kill. Inside now left all on his own for one HP and two members of Thieves to deal with yet. Looking for him, and they're outnumbering him. 
They're out positioning. LA Thieves keep moving in the S&D. And the biggest problem there, that cruise missile, it moved Ultra out of the positions. It allowed LA Thieves to make it more chaotic where they could get those trades in. And now they are having a very, very good time as well as the fans in the arena. <laughs> yeah, that Ultra guy could have picked probably a better position to be sent in, in the crowd, <laughs> especially in this search and destroy. Not looking good, but LA Thieves be very, very happy with their performance so far. Envoy draws up running the show. Envoy's just really had the middle of this map all to his own. And he is reveling in every single moment that Ultra push him and just push him blindly. Finds one, draws him with another Kleenex with two though, 2v2. Octane finds inside. Kleenex alone, he's found two. He will have to get the ace for this to work out. But the stun check comes in. The Thieves have him cornered. He will have to reposition and rethink his approach to this. A minute on the clock. For all that, they got the information on him. They've wasted some utility and wasted a live 1v1. Tobias. Looking for the ace, looking for the clutch, looking for the chance for his team to stay alive in this SD. And Octane! <laughs> Positioning pays. And he cannot check every corner, he cannot fire every direction. And in the end, it's a quick and simple kill. <laughs> simple kill through that fence? I don't know if that exists, <laughs> but either way, Kleenex caught off guard, and that one, the transition over towards B starts to come through. And that was three kills from Kleenex before he gets cut down by Sam. Thieves still in a commanding position here in this search and destroy. And they need this map. They need this map. They don't want to be heading into a control against Ultra. Both teams, very good control teams. And now 5 1 to the good. They put a lot of money on Thieves winning this one at this moment in time. But now Ultra, can they find a way back? There's been a couple of rounds that have been close. But these cruise missiles are not going to help. Well, there's first blood. And a cruise is coming in as well. Ultra. They're going to be known, they're going to have to try and stay alive. And what this has done is just completely open field up for Draza. Scrap will find one of the Kenny, but Draza is there to trade it back with a kill onto Insight. 3v2 in favor of Thieves. And now Ultra will have to figure this out. Already Hicks coming out of trouble, and now it all falls down to the scrap. He's been the star player for Ultra, but he will have to go for the clutch, and he's been found, he's been seen. And the Thieves will not allow him to get a clean kill at any point today. Try and get him, he gets away. Still flying about, no hills, and down he falls. And LA Thieves will answer back. Didn't miss a beat. Did not miss a beat. LA Thieves simply far too much for Ultra in that search and destroy. Many a first blood and many a round followed. Ultra never really arrived on El Asilo and get punished for it. Series very much on our hands now. Ultra cannot answer with another map. And LA Thieves will tie this one up. But let's just have a look at what we talked about. The first blood king in Envoy in this one. Four for him. One apiece for Kenny and Traza. Then six rounds and six first bloods that LA Thieves managed to find that conversion rate looking very, very nice. Yeah, complete dominance from start to end. Raza 10 and 2 as well. They had two cruise missiles to play with, and it was, you are right. Every step of the way, they were in control. There was very little that basically Ultra brought to this SD. Yeah, not much to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, people are like, what's going on here? You know, no, no, what's, uh, yeah, I get, just keep, keep the discussions nice and simple. Nice and simple. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. They're friends. <laughs> no bad words exchanged there. No, they're very good series on our hands, and I think everybody in the crowd will be happy about that one. But yeah, Thieves, that's a dominant win in comparison to what was a close game one. I wonder if it gives them some momentum heading into the country. Yeah, it certainly might do as well. And that might be the key. A little bit of a regain there for them as well. And to me, I'm looking forward to see how this one goes. But before we go anywhere so far, make sure you get your pre-order in. Warzone Mobile is coming. Hit the QR code, get it downloaded. Let's have some fun on that Warzone Mobile as well. But We'll see you for Call of Duty after this one. More to come up. LA V versus Toronto Ultra, Map 3, right after this.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Monster Energy, the official energy drink of the CDL. I think the vetoes wise, I think we uh, definitely are changing up a little bit, but um, I think the 3 we lost, we lost a 6-5 map two, and a, I think we had two different 1v1, like two second scenarios in the control. So I think those two maps really could have went either way. So I'm very confident um, playing them, especially, you know, it's champs time. We're playing on land again. We played our last online match a few days ago or our last online scrim a few days ago. So, um, it's, you know, it's time to get delusional confident. And uh, I think uh, we're gonna have a pretty good map set against them. Talking about improvements towards champs and improvements they've already had. Last time they played Toronto, just a couple of weeks ago, it was a 3 to 0. But a dominant performance on the ST has turned this around. Tie game, control next. And then we were speaking about the control that was very, very tight. He's right. It went to two different 1v1s in two rounds of control. It was something like it was very, very close. But both of those maps, two and three, could have very easily went over towards Thieves. This time around, map two does. But we're heading to a very different control map in El Asilo. Both these two teams sending an OK record strong to Ultra, though, with the better one at 11 and 4. Similar stats across the board. Offensive wins coming a little bit easier for Ultra, as are the defensive ones. You would expect it with a round percentages like that, that their record will be looking good. Keeping an eye on Kenny and Scrap, they're the real difference makers for these two teams when it comes down on these map, putting up serious numbers on the defensive side. Both these two teams gonna have to be at their best here. Let's find out. Right now, LAT will be the first team to attack. Try and get a good break off of this one as well. Oh my goes for it, he finds his second, but will be traded. And a brief there. LATs will have to reset. Fortunately, they know no player will be pushed up too far yet. Yeah, they don't really want somebody like Scrap to be doing that. They want Pixie and Kleenex to get themselves in awkward little positions. Scrap inside, you can sit tight. Irons up. Only teams will get a closer spawn over towards the bar side and can now start to make some inroads, but it's a really good start to the defensive side for Ultra. And there's that player that we talk about, Hixie, getting in from behind finds two. This has been picture perfect from Ultra so far. Not a single member of Thieves making a forward step towards anywhere they can do anything with. Scrap holding down Radio Tower inside. We'll try and hold down B as well. Looks like LA Thieves just chose not to go anywhere near Scrap. They've gone a different direction. Rather than face that rookie, they've turned tail. Yeah, and the problem is here for Thieves, you've had no map pressure in towards the mid map. Starting to make some inroads over towards B, but they are not winning gunfights eventually. Kenny and Draza will get something on the board, and that just takes one big moment to find yourself in a good position in control. The push over towards B starting to come through. Ultra on their way. Hexy just holding it down. Has to tag Anavaz here as well. I know the pressure's gonna be on. He's gonna see Octane as well, but that nade is better. And now LA Thieves, they have the numbers here as well. They're going to find the kill. Scrap hasn't died yet, but he will have to get against it with the cruise missile. But will they go for this? Will they have enough bodies and enough time to get into this position? That second tick is almost done. It's about to come through, but these need to be pretty much perfect. LA Thieves, can you hold it down? Ultra now on their way over to try and do something about this. Off the top rope was Hixie. He gets taken down. Scrap can answer back, but the time is extended. B is captured. Those lives were looking a lot worse uh, only 30 seconds ago, but Thieves starting to find some inroad over towards the A side as well. Ultra set up, but they found the kills here, Thieves. A minute to go, they have an opportunity here at it. Inside, no, the pressure is walking towards him. Octane is gonna fall as well. Scrapped in the work, the <laughs> ARs of Ultra may have given them a chance. Envoy still alive, still stopping that clock. Eventually he's gonna try and make this magic happen for his team. Envoy inside the point, Kleenex. Tries to make his way through, finds the kill. Hexy one over towards the far side, just trying to slow Thieves down. We're on the way! Oh, Octane nearly turns on Kleenex. But with 45 seconds and seven lives remaining, it's looking like an ultra round, but it's not quite done yet. Thieves starting to make some words through. Hixie is the one they really have to worry about, but Kleenex in the point is also a big, big problem. Six lives now for Thieves, they five to go. So we have to be about the perfect push. Hixie still roaming. Ultra have good positioning. They don't have radio tower though. Inside an Envoy, looking to try and find something here as well. Kenny will find a kill, but he's only got two teammates up. Scrap looking for him at the same time, and that's a gunning. Kleenex is alive. LA Thieves have nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. And that'll be the first round for Ultra. Envoy fighting for his life, but he falls. And the damage was almost just done in the first minute there. Thieves did a really good job of getting a hold of B. It's never chalked in control. It doesn't matter how many lives, time, whatever. 
you can find a good break, you can win the round. And Deeves kind of did the hard part over towards B, but you just couldn't get some good control over radio when you needed it. You found Kenny over there, but then you've run out of lives, run out of time. It's too little, too late. Thieves with a good answer back to what was a dominant start from Ultra, but Ultra will find the round. Thieves will find themselves some ticks as well. But bear that in mind when we do, do head over towards the latter stages. But yeah, big performances from Scrapping Insight there and Hixie and Kleenex chipping in in the bar area. Now for Thieves, what's the options here? Ultra on their way. Kenny will find the first blood though. Kills to be traded. Oh, there, Ultra with some inroads over towards it. Pretty much the same as last time around, but obviously the sides are flipped. Draws are holding down Radio Tower. Nothing for Ultra to begin with. Inside already, lost most of his life. Octane will clean that one up as well. Ultra, a reset for them as they come back off the respawn. Octane, though, with a stun check, he's going to fall. And spawn over towards the green side for Toronto Ultra. Starting to make some inroads over towards the middle of the map. They just pivot over towards the A side. Draza, the only one who can really do anything about this here. Kenny now on his way over. Draza just trying to butter them up and wait for the rest of the team to find a way through. Kleenex puts the pressure on, but here come Thieves. Kenny no, he needs to stay alive. He's waiting to see if any pressure comes through the top as well, but that ticket almost does. They go to swoop into it as well, and there is a dive and a fly. And this time, LA Thieves will stop the pressure. They have stopped that tick going in at eight. Coming off that respawn, Ultra will now have to go all the way through, and that is an absolute laser. The Crispies coming in from Draza over towards the B side. I really like the play from him. You know they find the kills over towards the A. You've lost two ticks. Oh! oh! Insight's just been eviscerated by Kenny. And LA Thieves are starting to run it up here in the defensive side. Ultra being forced back, 30 seconds to go. And now they're gonna have to commit. They have to go one way or the other. They need to make a move. They found a couple of kills though. They can get back into it, but LA Thieves know this play. They know what's coming for them as well as Kylie has got two on board. He'll get another scrap. The only one left alive for Ultra. And this push has fallen. Ultra are beaten at this point. Octane will be holding field. There is no safe place for them to go. Oh, this is just dead and buried for Ultra in this round. LA Thieves making it look very convincing, but one last roll of the dice for Ultra. Two seconds to go. It ain't gonna happen. LA Thieves run through Ultra in round number two. That was devastating. As soon as they went for that retake on the way, something that most teams don't always commit to. They beat them back and Ultra just had nowhere to go. They were just dying over and over again, staggered off of that respawn. And technically now LA Thieves lead this control. Yeah, and a better spot to get a hold of that defense heading into round number five. But looking towards it, a really nice play I've seen when they cleared them off A as well. Draws are so heads up. No, they're going to spawn over towards green. Get yourself topped in and have yourself a game from there. Two big kills coming on through to three spree for him, three spree for Envoy, Kenny four in a row. A dominant end to that round from LA Thieves. Can they have a better start to their attack this time around? Envoy onto Hixie, scrap onto Octane. And that control for Ultra that was so good from them last time is still gonna be there. Draza gets cut down. Still scrap every step of the way. Envoy though, looking for this kill. Now can they make a move? Already gonna stop this clock. They have managed to get onto B and Envoy <laughs> finds another one, a six streak for him. Turning up, they're gonna get into this B positioning. They're waiting for the flank to come through as well. Farming off of that respawn. And they have to deal with him. They are going to have to find this player before anything else comes through. The Dark Prince of Ella Silo just keeps on killing everybody on Ultra. That's eight in a row now for him. The tick's starting to come in over towards the B side. LA Thieves might have a hold of this. Insight's on his way over, but they get up because the cruise missile's coming in. Ultra managed to pick up one of those in a previous round, but that will just slow them down. Thieves still in control over towards B. Now just getting the kills, and that is slowly ticking up from them as well. Octane holding it. Ultra still want to contest this. They know if they can get a few kills, it might help them out in the long run. But it's too little, it's too late. B is now gone. Only one player, Hixie, remains in a position, but gone down of his socks. Nine kills for Envoy. They have moved B to A, and the kill feed erupts for LA Thieves. Get in your spawn. Stay there. You are not allowed to come to this point. Envoy has just run a mock amongst the map here. Just fantastic work from all of the side of Thieves. Ultra just overextend towards B, holding on by the hair on their chinny chin chin. It can get nowhere near Envoy and the boys. Standout performance in that round. Thieves are loving Elisilo right now. And that was a massacre and a masterpiece of how to play an attacking role. No deaths. I think for Envoy on that side. He might have died right at the end, but honestly, who cares when you find that amount in a row? 
And yeah, for me, really a misstep from Ultra. They use the cruise missile, but they don't find the follow-up kills, but they keep trying and trying and trying to keep them away from B. When realistically, just lick your wounds and move over towards A. You can hold that down for a long, long time. And Envoy, you are right, did not die. 10 in a row, hey, let's see a few more. Here we go, Ultra. We now have to find a way back. They were slaughtered last time. Clinics though opens up. Kasuna drives there looking for it as well. Kenny's gonna be there. But here he comes. Envoy. Elisilo is his playground. Kleenex, first one to fall. That's an 11 streak now. Still moving, still proving why he's so dangerous and so deadly. But he's gonna keep going for it. He jumps straight over the top, and that is an overheated chow, but it doesn't matter. The rest of his team are trying to help him out here. Ultra holding down the fort. They get A right back into it. And now they're going to try and transition to be themselves. And we were concentrating on what Envoy was doing in Ultra. I was just sitting at the point and soaking it up. Everybody from Thieves not finding anything. And all of a sudden, you're not in the best of positions. Over towards the B side. Ultra keeping that pressure on. For all it's felt like they got beaten to a pulp in those previous two rounds. A very winnable one here in round number four. Now the pressure started to come in. Envoy, Octane, just about thriving under it. Scott finds a comeback he should not in the middle of the map to keep that pressure on. Ultra still with a very good chance here. A minute and 40 to go. Just got to keep an eye on players like Octane. Finding a push-up. SMG in his hands of all things. And Ultra just trying to find those kills in the mid-map. But Scrap's the only one who can do anything about it. They get cut down and forced back into their spot. And now the issues arise. Ultra do not have the map control. What they do have is sharks circling them. Waiting for their taste of flesh. They are in their spawn and they are in trouble. One minute 15 to break this deadlock. Even Octane is flying at them now. They do not want to let them breathe. Have to be careful though. You start to lose those gunfights. You start to lose control of lanes that you need to lock down. Insight has slipped through one of those lanes that we talked about. He's been found. He's been hunted by none other than Envoy. The pressure just keeps on rolling through from Thieves. 50 seconds to go for Ultra. It takes one good break. That's all it takes for Ultra to get themselves back into this game. But so far, so good for Thieves. They are keeping this pressure on. I just cannot find any way through at the moment. And oh! Hixie stays alive. Ultra will be feeling this pressure now. There's they know chance, they need to win chance. it. They have inside control, but Thieves are stacked towards this point. For Ultra, it's everything in the next few gunfights. The trades must go their way, but they've lost bodies. And Octane proves why he's the human turret. And they are back in their spawn with 18 seconds. One last roll of the dice from Toronto Ultra on LSELO control here. It needs to be perfect. LA Thieves are starting to tear up. Toronto Ultra making some inroads over towards the middle of the map. Last chance. Already knows. Envoy will find the first. Hixie will fall. The second one up for Ultra. Kleenex tries to dive through. Down he falls as well. Drives will go down to Insight. Scrap gets one as well. It's not over. Not by a long shot. Octane will fly out there as well. As it gets Scrap Insight finds the kill. And they remain with a point one seconds on it. But they must not falter. Incoming cruise missile. And Toronto Ultra have held again for a few more seconds. No lives remaining. You're going to get towards the point of your Ultra. Draza fights too. This might be it. Inside, bouncing, fighting for his life, but he goes down. There is no Cinderella story. There is no glass slipper on LSILO. LA Thieves take the control. Dominant until it wasn't. <laughs> LA Thieves. So good throughout that map, but with no 0.1 seconds, it's not enough time to win a round if you are Toronto Ultra. You cannot stutter, you cannot be bodied that often and expect to find something in the dying seconds. A convincing performance from Thieves in map number three and map number two. Elisila was very much their playground. I don't think Ultra will be want to see any more, any more Elisilo against Thieves for quite some time. That has been dominant, and look at the difference in the kill death ratio. We try not to talk about it too much. Throw on Ultra, I just got smoked. Yeah, it was like a whole different LA Thieves. After that hard point, they said, hey, just so you guys are aware, we won this last year. You may have forgotten, watch this. And since then, they haven't stopped. Obviously, the performance, the streak from Envoy, the catalyst that changed the game for them. And I want to give Envoy his flowers, absolutely. The 11 spree was massive, but I really feel like Toronto Ultra overstepped, overchild over towards B. 
They use their cruise missile, and I think sometimes when that happens, when you invest so much into trying to get it back, you're like, oh, well, no, we must get it back here because we don't want to overinvest and get nothing in return, essentially. And they kept on trying to fight for B when it looked lost and it was lost. Then they overextend, you lose the gunfights, and it's an easy transition for the LADs over towards that A side. And this was it, wasn't it? Envoy 6 spree at this stage went on to find 11. LADs in perfect control of B. Bam Ultra at this stage, yeah, okay, you've used your cruise missile, get some off it, but you don't find any gunfights after that. Back up to it. You gotta back up. Just give Thieves an open door to walk through from then on out. Looked like nothing but a Thieves win was gonna come onto that scoreboard. Find themselves in the lead. Heading onto an Alabagra half point. And you know what? This hard point next, I still don't count either of them out. <laughs> yeah, it got a little bit dominant, got a little bit away from them. Ultra, good first round. After that, not so great. But they won that first hard point. As we go into the second one, they'll be looking to recapture that magic. You do not want an on-form LA Thieves. I mean, that is uh, an absurd outslay. Absurd. Thieves, very hot on the gunny. In map number three, we'll have to be on Fortress. Let me get there in a few moments' time. Should be a very, very close one based on what we've seen in that first half point, but Thieves have got to be better on the rotations on this map. It's kind of similar in terms of Hydro. Rotations win new games when it comes down to Fortress. We're specifically thinking about P3, the big money maker. Ultra have got to switch back on. They have been really flat over the last two maps. Nothing to speak of. Kind of got bodied over the last two. They need to step in and have a good start here in map number four. Because this one could very, very quickly get out of hand. It certainly could. Speaking though, going back, thinking about that first hard point, how different it could have been if maybe Thieves had been a little bit better on the rotations. Something that they probably will have their coaches just reminding them of here, hey, look, we cannot try and break every single time. We've got to be a little bit better on this one. We can put this series to bed. We do not have to go to a map five. Just win this hard point and move on. Get revenge for two weeks ago. And again, look, I, I mean, everyone was thinking, oh yeah, Ultra, yeah, they've been the Boogerman for LA Thieves throughout this entire season. In the 3-0 a couple of weeks ago, you'd be feeling confident, but nonetheless, LA Thieves knew two of those maps were very, very close last time around. They've taken them this time. But in terms of the matchup over Champs history, Kalinex, 24 appearances to Kenny's five. The average place and very much belongs to that man on the right-hand side of your screen. The veteran, although it's weird to say that about Kenny, watched since his career started realistically, but there is a little bit of a bias. Kenny's done this a few times. He's been to those grand finals. He's won one of them. Kleenex, he's been to one, but never managed to get that ring. And they will be digging deep. They'll be figuring this one out. We've got to play our game. We have got to stop them. Winner's bracket is the dream. Lower bracket is never in the plans. It's champs, everyone's a shock. You do not want to drop into that loser's bracket. You want to give yourself that best opportunity. And maybe this is an opportunity for the side of Toronto Ultra to get back into this one. Records, not too dissimilar. LA Thieves with the advantage in that department. But the real difference here, rotation and break, very, very close, but the whole percentage is something that is not going to be pleasant viewing for Ultra. You've got to hold your heels on this one. If you can find those rotations like you did last time, you lock in hills like P3 and, Co and so, you should be able to force a map number five. Now we're looking for it already. The first blows will come to pause. There will be LA Thieves looking for that P2 as well, and they're gonna have to break out of this one. Toronto Ultra, push back for a second. Really good start from Thieves, nightmarish for Ultra. <laughs> the a nightmare of a gunfire for Octane. A really good lock-ins coming through LA Thieves. Fantastic start. Exactly what you want, and now you're over towards the stables. If you scrap, you're just going to find a way to fight your way out. Speaking of scrap, him and Kalinex, very active in the kill feed when it comes down to this map. Third and fifth, respectively, in kills over the 10 minutes per game. It's just kill after kill after kill for Ultra. But so far, it is kill after kill after kill from Thieves. A small amount of respite for Scrap and Co as they can find a route through over towards P2. But a wonderful start for Thieves. But can they hold it? They're trying to break out. They're trying to get a little bit of way forward. Octane <laughs> just holding them down here. Ultra still don't have this rotation. They still don't have the bodies either. They are outnumbered. And that's a cruise missile off the rip for Octane. 
Starting so well for the side of Thieves. It's not what Ultra wanted. Inside can find one back, but it's been perfect so far from the LA boys. Clean X is somebody who can maybe find a breakthrough, can find one, gets traded. Ultra not quite at the races yet. It's been great hold from Thieves. 50 points and rise. Pixie not finding a kill, but oh boy, well. And eventually the toes will get in. Ultra find a way into this point, but they are still being fought. LA Thieves not giving them a second. And this rotation could prove crucial. They have to get past Raza. They need something. It's a desperation push from Ultra towards the end. They had to find these kills and do so. But Scrap has to back on down. Cannot find anything on the mid-map. Cross, LA Thieves. First one over. Scrap just walks through gate. Finds one, finds two. Where are the rest of Ultra there, though? Not close enough. But is that possibly a door, a door slightly ajar? Toronto Ultra can find a way through, but they keep running into Envoy. They are being slaughtered on this map. They eventually find a few they're kills. They've got the in. They've got the spawns as well. Octane will fall. And a breath of relief. A slight respite from the onslaught that has been thundering towards Ultra this entire time. Here comes the cruise missile, though. Is anybody in position? That's not what you want to see when you're calling the cruise in. Hit it off the wall. Yeah, okay, you get Hixie. But two of your teammates dying while that's been called is not ideal. Hixie said it's 0-9. This can't find anything at this moment in time, but he will not care. His team have control of P3, but do they for very long? Envoy's inside. Scrap! Can't find the second, but his teammate will. Hixie will find three to answer his critics immediately. With 20 seconds to go, Ultra can tie it up. They have a root out already as well. That comes down to Scrap. Finding those first two kills on the transition, just so easily walking through game. And that opens up the door for Toronto Ultra to quite happily walk through. Spawn out here for Ultra as well as we head over towards P4. There is fight. They are not going away in this one. They are a hard fight as well as Kleenex off the top row of the back. Still staying alive, trying to play his role as well. Octane will eventually find him. They are pinning Ian Ultra at the moment. It's a one point game as we head towards this. Inside now, trying to find the gun find under Kenny. Trying to find some route through. At least he was all pinned back just a little bit here though. I think that would like to keep Ultra in for just a little bit longer. But a force free for Hixie. After a 0-9 start, can he find the fifth? Not quite. Ultra trying to find a way through. Inside over towards the top rails. And Thieves spawning out. This is potential time for Ultra. They're holding. Waiting for it as well. <laughs> Those trophies have made him weak as well. Octane finds his way into it as well, but into the guns of Insight, who's still alive. Trying to make sure he can get everything done. There's Kenny. There's a... Oh, it's a wall bang! But it's not enough. Still fighting for his life. Envoy eventually gets him out of top rails. But it has been a hard-fought cannon's point. Every dog in uh, Las Vegas here in that cult. My word, Insight does so well to find a couple to just answer back to Thieves' pressure. And Ultra will keep this very, very tight. But keep an eye on Hixie here. Well, he's dead already. <laughs> he's died many, many times. 13 in a row. LA Thieves finding these kills on transition. Looking over towards the Blacksmith site. The kill's starting to run on through. You've got Kenny in a perfect position over towards Bottom Art as well. Toronto Ultra have got to clear this out. Right now they have it. LA Thieves just holding. You can see Ultra waiting for reinforcements. Not over committing towards Blacksmith. It is not an easy push for them now. Every angle is being held as they don't get it, but Scrap will find two. He opens up receiving Octane and throwing bullets towards the gate, but he's now outnumbered and gunned by Scrap on a four. He takes down every single member of LA Thieves. And they do a really good job there, Ultra. They just have somebody in towards the bottom of the It's distracting at best. But now Thieves over towards the backside. Neither one of these teams really got a real good read on exactly where everybody else is. But it doesn't matter. The gunfights fall over towards Thieves' side. It's a 30-point lead for them. And now for Ultra, you've got to find a way out of these P1 spawns. You have to get out over towards the van side. Hixie might just be the one to get them out as Kleenex and Cole will now find a route through over towards the P2 side. Kenny just surviving somehow and just slaying nearly everybody as Kleenex will find them down. Thieves in control, but for Ultra, crucially, you do have some men out. Now you see a little bit of a pinch developing as well. They've got players coming up both angles. Well, inside winning a gunfight against Raza. They win. Scrap <laughs> continues to make sure they do not fall out of this game. Every time they need him, he is there. It's 13 to 14. The game remains close from big kills. They know that Draza is behind, though they did. But the gunfight falls Draza's way anyway. He knows they have to search for him. The rest of the thieves just trying to create that chaos over towards P1 to try and get a hold of it as Draza now will stay alive. We'll get the spawns for his teammates. Good job from him. 20 seconds to go now. Over towards P1. Ultra need a decent, decent rotation here. Looking like they have that control to 30 point lead. Inside alone though. Trying to make sure he can stay. He needs reinforcements. He needs those angles cut down for him as well. He's looking too many different things as well, but that will be broken. And LA Thieves in prime position. Let's find out how they are feeling though. It's an LA Thieves. Listen in.
Close right now. 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 Close right that's Fox, that's Fox. That's Fox, that's Fox. Top Doctor, dub, 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 Charlie out. I look at that, I got it. Flag, 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 flag. Flag, Toby. We'll get the flag. Uh, yeah, I'll be safe. There's one in the back. Flag, flag, flag. Yeah, flag, flag, flag. Open me. Yeah, I'm trying to help you. It opened already. It opened. Play your kills. It opened. Nice, you're good. Play your kills. Nice, you're good. I'm telling this gun. That's fine. Tell us. Hey, that's one in the back. Let's go. There's one in the back. Okay, just get this up. Get this up. This is going to be maps. This is going to be maps. Maps, maps. Get this one. He might hit this egg. Yeah. Open, 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 open. Yeah, watch out. Yeah, let's go. We're going right they're probably still hey, yeah, no, no, what's this one on Toby? I'm trying to hold for a second. I'll see okay, let's triple right, bro. Let's triple right. Yeah, they have a trophy top circle. I think he's up there. They have a trophy top circle. He is. He's up right. Toby's up there. I'm watching right. Okay, let's see. Toby should be behind you. Dead. Nice. I'm watching. Oh, we didn't need it. I'm so worried. I'll jump. I'll jump. Okay, jump. Go, go, go. Close. Two left. 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 I got one. Hey, I'm on the box. Fast, fast, fast. Fast, fast, fast. This guy's boss. Pull, 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 pull. Fast as well. Pull, 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 pull. Slow down, slow down. We have a streak or no? They spawn there. They spawn there. No streak. They spawn there. And a Thieves feeling the pressure as they try to up the comms, they try to get back into this. But the rotation from Ultra is everything they could have dreamed for. They must hold this down against LA Thieves and an on-fire Octane. Scrub is making the pressure on in the middle of that. Finds three on his own, completely shuts Thieves down. He's really stepping it up. We're talking about Octane when we were listening to listening. 29 and 15. Scrap is trying to match him as best he can, but the pressure's still coming in. Over towards P3 side. It's three piece after three piece from the main ARs on the teams. Ultra though, this is something they absolutely needed. We were talking about how it felt like game number one, but this time around, Ultra haven't been able to find a rotation. The first time they do it, it's a full 60. And Hexy gets to the reload and he will fall as well. And now Scrap trying to hold it. Already Octane's crossed that 30-point threshold. 31 kills so far for him. A lot of game left to go as well. It's the first time Ultra into the lead. They found a lot of good pressure around this rail side. Cannot find the kill there if you're Kleenex inside though. It was so big for them here last time, but Envoy can hold it down this time. Draza will get dealt with Ultra. Fight for the back foot, but the snapper from inside. Can they find a route through? Thieves still towards the back. And they found the kill as well. Octane is Guns! Insight! Turns up on a five streak! Everybody falls! And now they have control. They have the lead. They must hold this for a time. They were not good on Blacksmith last time around either. This time around, though, they will have a cruise missile in the back pocket of Jamie Craven, who just does not stop killing everybody from thieves that he keeps finding. Five streak for scrap, seven for insight. It's been pretty much 90 uncontested points from Toronto Ultra. As we head over towards the Blacksmith now, it was very, very messy. Now the team really got a good hold of it. Can it be Thieves this time around to find themselves back into that one? But this time, Ultra have got two cruise missiles. They will, and they will use at least one of these to try and break it if they can get in position. They're already finding the kill, so they might not need it. Okay, still alive, falls to inside in the end. Who continues to accelerate into this game? Nobody going to be on the point as both teams just throw haymakers at each other across this entire map. Eventually, LA Thieves clean house and get on. Hellishly entertaining from both these two teams is just child after child after child. The square up on Fortress that we thought it would be has been entertaining so far. Resurgence from Ultra will find themselves in a 20 point lead as we're heading over towards the Blacksmith now. Nobody wants to get on this point. Nobody they knows there's ARs everywhere, ready to strike as well. But it will be LA Thieves. They've got the scrap time. It will not be a recommit from Ultra on it. They want P1, they want P2, and they want this map. Making sure they stay alive over towards the back side here. They do not want to spawn over towards the P1 side. And now this is where you can use the artillery you have gained, you have deserved. The game is tied as we head into a third rotation of hills, with the kills starting to come through from Ultra. This cruise missile won't be needed. They find the kills where needed. Kenny, inside of Art, may just be the one to break them out. Well, they're relying on as well as Scrap. Start locking down the doors, battering the hatches. Eventually will fall to Octane, who gets his own two. He says, hold on, come on through, teammates. Let's clear the path, but no! Shut down as well, they are back in the spawn once again. Ultra can just about win it, but not if envoy has got anything to say about it. Finds two in a row. Ultra can just about, just about win it here at P1. Thieves gonna find a breakthrough, he's gonna find a rotation over towards the P2 side. Hixie is not slowing down now, though. Envoy goes to the chow, he's weak, Hixie here as well, and will fall. Wins. LA Thieves will not lose onto this point as well. The spawns have been flipped. <laughs> The shoe is now on the other foot as Ultra will have to break and find their way over to P2. LA Thieves are spawning them in. They're keeping them in as well. P2 locked in for Thieves. 
It's a 30 point lead for the side of Ultra. They do still have that cruise missile to help them out here. Draza and Kodo, these kills are massive. Over towards the gate side, there's a huge gunfight. Octane, he's staying alive as long as he can, as are the rest of these. But Hixie will find Octane. 20 seconds away from Ultra, sending a storm at number five. They have a little bit of positioning. The sky may open, that cruise missile may come through. There it is, insight, deliverance from on high. Can he find the kills he wants? He's already contested, oh boy, finds two. Insight will get Kenny, and they are in. They are still there. Ultra will send this to a map five in five seconds. Draza will go down. There will be a contest. There will be very little else for LA Thieves. And a map five between these two Titans will break our main stage. Oh, and Scrap is letting everybody know about that one. A statement performance once again from the rookie. And all Ultra needed was one good rotation, and they are screaming back into the hard point. And from there, it's Scrappy, it's messy. But every single moment that Ultra needed to go their way did. First rotation was so poor from them, they'd be disappointed in that, but they will not care one ounce. Map number four goes their way. We promised the banger, we've got it. Map number five incoming. Well, what other way could it end? I hope those of you who got your Thursday tickets are entertained, because I certainly am. And I just want to say, it was literally the Scrap and Octane show. It was every single time Scrap would find three, Octane's like, yeah, okay, three back immediately. Look at the damage from Scrap in 4,400. Envoy is right alongside him. But it really did feel like the AR battle, didn't it? It felt like the moments that turned the game in Ultra's favor was where Scrap was finding those, those kills everywhere, left, right, and center. Bear in mind, actually, I want to give a shout out to Hixie, who was 0-9 yeah. at one stage. Yeah, I was say. The massive regain to still just keep it even from that stage on. When he started stepping up, he actually found himself a huge gunfight against Octane over towards the P2 side. And an embassy search and destroy to close it. Ah, I don't, I don't mind if you do, you know, I'm looking forward to this one. What a game this has been between these two teams. Decided on embassy. It's certainly real well. We're going to a break to catch our breath for more action right after this. LA Thieves and Toronto Ultra will settle the score on a map five at Champs. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in just a few minutes.
Signed with Scrap from the Toronto Ultra ahead of their first match of Champs 2023. First of all, how are you feeling about heading up against the 100 Thieves? Oh, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm always feeling good. We're always having a good time in the Toronto camp. Um, and yeah, you know, we put a lot of work into this and we're going to come out and show what we can do. Well, I love to hear that. And Scrap, there's a lot of eyes on you, especially as well your teammate as well, two rookies mm -hmm. in the mix here. You guys have already won a major, so you've got that out the way. Champs is now here. How are you guys feeling? How's prep been going to lift that final trophy? Yeah, you know, practice is we put everything in this past three weeks. Um, you know, champs is everything. You got to win the big one, no matter if no one cares about the majors, everyone cares about champs. And, you know, we're feeling good. Now, lastly, on stats, on paper, it seems like you got 100 Thieves number. Do you guys feel that way going into this match? Uh, you know, we know Thieves is a really good team. They all are individually uh, super talented. Um, you know, it's a hard team to beat. But, uh, you know, no matter who we play against, we're feeling always good. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a fun one. I love that so much. Thank you so much, Scrap, and best of luck. Of course. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Champs. It is a monster of a game we have seen so far, Ton. <laughs> a monster indeed. As we head into a map number five, the crowd's been getting loud in between the break. We just heard from Scrap speaking to Lottie that feeling confident up against this LED side. He will be now, maybe not when they were <laughs> two to one down, but heading into a map number five. It's what we all wanted. It's what we all thought may well happen. These two teams so well matched. Search and destroy though, map number two. Let's not get it twisted, was dominant from Thieves. They will want to repeat the same again as we head over towards the embassy. Well, let's see how this ends, how it goes. Who walks in to the winner's bracket? Who falls into lower? Look at number towards the stats. I mean, Ember, you've got to talk about how good he has been in this series. Phenomenal for the team. But which way does this one go? It's a hard one to call both these two squads. Matching up well. And if Scrap's going to shoot like that, Toronto Ultra have got a hellishly good chance. Not only Thieves have got aggressive on this defensive side, now they're going to be punished for it. Scrap is just working away. Envoy will deal with him. It's now a two versus three in favor of Ultra. And oh, oh my goodness, wait a second. He gets the trade with his own nade. Octane has to learn in a one versus two. It's a good start from Ultra. Will it be a good end to the round? That is the key. Octane staying alive. Ultra with those numbers is going to make a difference in terms of their planning. Third in the league when it turns to getting these bombs down, they like to do it. And on this attack, they have found it in round number one. Can Octane do anything about this spots inside out? Knows exactly where he's going to be playing. But the information is there for Ultra. Oh, and it's actually in a good position over that. Oh, what's the heading? Octane finds so many rounds, but it's not enough to get a kill. 26 seconds. These players will play their lives. Hexy will get the kill in the end. And Octane must be so mad. He's done so much damage that round. I'd love to see his damage for one round there because that was absurd. Insight apparently built of stronger stuff, as is Hexy. But this was what started things off. The first blood from Scrap finding the head of Draza, who is so influential for the team of LA Thieves on this one. Scrap with the second one, but Draza over the air at 1.56. He needs to be there for the team from the get go. He gets blooded. Ultra find the round. And now we'll see what LA Thieves can do on their attack. They're looking for it as well. A little bit patient from us, but they do get a little bit of B control. Insight's just going to try to stay alive here, but look at this aggression. Hixi has found a crack in the defense, and all of a sudden he's in a good position to shut this down. The shots are there, though, but Octane, there to cover. Hixi will get rid of Envoy, but the bomb is crucially down for the LA Thieves. 3v3 retake, and have to come in from Ultra. Scrap may be the catalyst they need, though. Has dead silence. He has a bet waiting for him as well. They've called it. He backs off. He's not giving him an easy kill. Not an easy kill. It's a man of fight at the same time. It's now Kenny alone. A one versus three. Is he the player on top? A player behind the player on bomb. Can get none of them. Ultra. Two to zero up now in the S&D. Huge kills coming in over towards the bomb site. We were concentrating on Scrap for Yachtin, which is the crucial kill in the end. But Ultra just posted themselves up and waited for anybody to come in for a peek. They find the kills, they find the round. Kind of disappointed with that one, but yeah, if Octane maybe stays alive towards the back, it comes down to small moments. But Ultra, already one step further than they were in map number two. There's two rounds to the good from them. 
It's run a four and one over stage five where they will take their final game in a round 11 against space. So they've been great on embassy as of recent and have found some way through over towards the B side. But can the answer back draws it? The man of the moment when it comes down, MC cannot find the second, but in a dangerous position. Completely changed up as well. Scrap has a bad they're running through as well. Clinics will find Draza. It's chaos now. The battle lines are blurred. Everybody is everywhere. LA Thieves are outnumbered. This next kill could be the round. I don't think anyone has information where they need it and it is not there for Octane. As Kleenex will find them. Kenny though, does he get any good timing here onto Scrap? Absolutely not. That bomb goes down, Ultra staring down the barrel of a 3-0 to zero lead. Be dominant so far, Scrap is running the show. And LA Thieves are yet to wake up in map number 5 yet. They are, and I will give credit though as well. Ultra, the complete change up. Scrap no longer sniping, goes for the aggressive push, gets through, they almost get punished. Tiny bit of cod timing works out, but it works out beautifully. And now, Ultra commanding position. And what's the switch up that Thieves need to do here? First Bloods are something that has really come their way quite often, but it hasn't been there yet, and it really hasn't. Now for Ultra, is the aggression going to pay off this time around? It's a change around from them as well, as now Thieves trying to make their way through. Hixie with the first blood. Hixie surviving oh! and continue to slay. Finds the second. It's another round where Thieves are at a disadvantage. Octane has to get out of there. 15 life points remaining. A strong Breeze would have knocked him down. They don't have anything. No bomb, no positioning. No idea what these players are. Insight might have been seen by Draza, but he definitely saw him. Time ticking. On the side of Thieves now, 50 seconds to go and Kleenex just in a wonderful position to continue his spree, as do Ultra with the rounds. It's four in a row for the Toronto side, who are breezing through Thieves right now. And after that last s and I was worried for Ultra coming into this one. But it's a whole different ball game. The LA Thieves, an adjustment is more than necessary. They will have to figure this out. They cannot let two more rounds slip, but they must win six of their own. Kleenex on a five streak as well. Here comes the push, Ultra going super aggressive, but caught first blood for Kenny. It's been read by the Thieves. And they're very much buttered up here as they headed over. The health will be regening now. Bomb going down, Envoy. Prime position to do something about this, and he may well start to move there as well. Yeah, okay, Scrap starting to move round. Doesn't cover off the bases where Thieves are sitting. This would take something for Scrap to win this round. Not going to happen. Thieves will get themselves onto the board. And it's just the aggression from Kenny. Catches so many of them across, the not just finding the kill, finding the info. He just seen a lot of bodies. And LA Thieves can just sit back. Try and find the picks, they knew a lot of Ultra. But around that site, they find the round and a much needed one at that. Just managed to break down the walls. Ultra had a strategy. That strategy only lasted about five seconds until Kenny got the first blood. But something to smile about for LA Thieves. Ultra fans, they want to keep going though. And here at Champs, everything on the line. Last match of the day. One team moves forward, one team moves down. And that was one of the first examples we've seen of some of the heavy advantageous stats from some of these two teams. Plant percentage is there for Ultra quite a lot, but LA Thieves, one of the best teams that we've taken over towards the B side, and there's the first blood. Draws it with a three spree, starting to wake up, but is it going to be too late? This bomb will go down. Are Thieves going to be in a good enough position to deal with the pressure that will come in from Ultra? He already finds one as well. Draws up, it's going to be up top. This is prime position, everybody's going to know he's here, and he guns Hicks, he gets away! Will he get the second? Ooh. Still alive! Scrap eventually guns him as well, down to a two versus two. But they will have to find these players. Kenny and Octane combining into a 5-1, Kenny for the clutch! A one versus two, oh, he doesn't get the kill on the wing side! Scrap on the watch! Kenny finds it! 19 seconds, a 1v1! And here we go, Kenny Did looking, he see him? Did he see him? guessing, going for inside, dumps up! Finds the kill! Off the bomb! And oh my goodness! LA Thieves bombed down, four players up, prime positions over the map. Die to Ultra. Kenny just did not finish his dinner on that kill on the 
the guy who was over towards the bomb site. If he kills inside there, he gets away in the orange. Scraps top embassy. The, the round is probably gone. But he doesn't find the kill. There's so well to find Scrap. Insight was so close to defusing it, but sees Kenny, hops off it, guns him. Ultra, 5-1 to the good here. In the map five, that promised so much, but it's been so one-sided. Thieves need a huge comeback now. Scrap has brought out the old boomstick once again. Devastating first two rounds. I haven't seen it like since. But already pressure for the both teams. Have everything up, but Scrap will fall to Draza. And so will he get the second. Kleenex goes down as well. Envoy finds the third. LA Thieves says this is not ending like this. Impressive play from Thieves once again. They find a route through over towards the back side, which just allows everybody else from Thieves to take a step back. Don't need to be too aggressive, but draws a gun to one up top embassy. And he says, yeah, that guy on the bomb, nobody covering him. Pops his head over, finds the second. But is the resurgence too little? Is it too late? On Thieves now, 5-2 down, a long, long way to go. Before you put this into the realms of possibility, Ultra will still be feeling supremely confident here. In a really good spot, they've been commanding. Now Thieves on the attacking side, can you get across the beat? Uncontested, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> a trophy to the head is not where it's supposed to be. It needs to be on the floor, there's the first blood. And Ultra have taken this map control away from them. Hicks, he's staying alive. But Thieves will have to do this now from the back foot. But what's plan B? What's plan B for Thieves? Hixie trying to stay alive, Kleenex with another. This might be the game. It just might be, they're looking for it as well as Ultra. They can feel it with their blood singing. The hymns of victory are ricocheting around the arena. Only Octane can do something in a one versus four. But much like the darkness at dawn, they are banished to the lower bracket. Scrap letting them know a repeat of just a little while ago as well. Ultra move forward and chance. LA Thieves move down. Standout performance after standout performance. Tron Ultra again. Just too much for Thieves in this matchup. A game five that was just so dominant. Both the search and destroyers have kind of went the same way, but in opposite directions. And the aggression from Ultra over and over and over again. That man will get a lot of plaudits for this series, absolutely. But Hixie in those moments, how many of these times did he find it in that mid alley? Did he find himself behind? Causing issue, left, right, and center. A big, big win for Ultra there, up against Thieves. We drop into the loser's bracket. What a game to end Thursday. Two, two titans of the CDL, but Ultra once again come out on top. And a lot of work from the rookies. Rookies a term to describe a player on their very first journey, their first steps into the pro league. But some players take steps and some players stride. And that's exactly what we have just seen. <laughs> and, and, and I, I want to talk about it again though. Thieves, the first bloods have been coming through time and time and time again. And how often they convert them every single time on map number two. They had the majority there. They do not make it count. Five first bloods, two rounds. It's not good enough. We need to do better. It certainly is not how they wanted that game to end, but Ultra, not too worried, not going away from it. It is not a two, three, and five for the LA Thieves. It is just a two and a three. Hard point made the difference as we moved on to Embassy. But it was beautiful in the end, Ultra. Showing it was not a fluke last time. No, absolutely not. But it was close games last time as well. Yes, okay, it was a three to zero. But this time around, maps two and three that were very, very close last time went over towards the Thieves, but Ultra proved they have that steal. They have that determination and close it in five. Really good game. Honestly, Ultra will be looking at some of the mistakes yeah. that they went through and seeing themselves what they can fix. LSL or SD, don't want to see that again. They cut bodies, but they will care very, very little. A good win in map number five in the end. Certainly is. All right, well, it's over to our monster winner's spotlight. It's going to be scrapped with Blaze. All right, Las Vegas, give it up one more time for the Toronto Ultra as they move through the bracket. Scrap, what a series, okay? You guys absolutely deflated this crowd. Talk to me about, like, just how do you feel right now getting that first series out the way? It's a big one, you know. I came out, I, didn't, I knew we were expecting the Thieves fans to be a boon, but, you know, they're a bunch of, you know, shitters that just sit here and watch me play. So, you know, it is what it is. 
And uh, yeah, it was a good one. It was a good series right there, going all the way down to the wire. Now, one of the turning points in here for me, it, it seemed like it was maps four and maps five, all right? You and Hixie was turning up right there. Talk to me about the keys to success on those last two maps that you guys were down. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, the second map, third map, you know, it's a CeeLo, kind of shoot me in my back, you know, not really gunfights. You know, fourth map, you have to beat me in a gunfight. Fifth map, it's my play spot, you know, Woo! snipers coming out. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's just a master class overall. It was a master class, okay, coming out with that dub. Now, I'm gonna let you get going here so you can get ready for day number two, but any words out there to the Toronto Ultra fans that were supporting you guys last event and supporting you here now at Champs? Yeah, shout out all the fans here, my family, my girl, everyone's here. Uh, everyone back home in Canada, I appreciate it. And y'all, let's come win this shit, let's get this fucking ring. All right, much love to Scrap here. That's gonna do it for us on the stage. Chris, close us out. Rookies ready for the ring. Scrap, letting the crowd know that Toronto is here to cause a splash. Welcome back in, everybody. We got Clayster, we've got Alley, we've got Nameless, and what a banger. We started with a five-game series that was a reverse sweep. This one taking us the distance. Clayster, your LA Thieves almost got it done in four. Yeah, I'm the only one up here, unfortunately, that called that one wrong. <laughs> Three and one. I got four Hold and O's that. next to me. Uh, the Thieves let me down, man. Thieves let me down. The Thieves did look good, though, at the start yes. of this matchup. It, before Toronto turned it around, let's focus in on some of the highlights here. What did we see from the Ultra? Because they were down in the series count 2-1, Allie. I mean, it's just composure. I feel like throughout this entire series, once they lost that LSL control, where typically I feel like Toronto was probably very comfortable heading into that map number three, to then go into that fortress and as scrappy as it was until the end, to be able to pull out the W by chaining that P1 into P2. I made a tweet about it earlier. I was like, Hixie might be nagged, but some of the kills he's getting right. are literally game changing to push that game number five. And then obviously that opening snipe from Scrap just kind of set the tone. Yeah, when you talk about this series, it comes down to that game number four, that fortress yeah. hard point. Uh, you know, if you're Toronto Ultra, you got outslayed. Hixie started 0-9, and, and you're still able to come out with the victory. And honestly, they should have won by more points. You know, there are a couple situations that they even threw away. It comes down to the Money Hills. Once again, that P3 rotation, Toronto's able to get both of those, locking them down for a ton of points, 120 on that hill. And then when you get down to the wire there, they're making plays. Insight was able to pick up a streak, slam it down on P2. They get the victory. We go into a game five embassy search destroy where ultra had full confidence round number one scrap pulls out the sniper and chows the biggest ego chow that you can have with the sniper in this game is on that cross from the offensive side and he hits it and from there we knew they were going to be playing ultra confident throughout game five you saw the clutch finish for toronto ultra they get it done in five and tomorrow well their reward is against atlanta we'll see what they do there in the winner's bracket for now though we got to revisit the final scum play of the day this one coming from the man scrap as he is fighting for the Rookie of the Year award. He's Ooh. making plays like this, baby. Ooh. Snipe after snipe. He's got one of the biggest big boy toys out there, Clayster, but the man can get it done with any weapon. Oh. When he's stepping into the cross chow from the offensive yeah. side and getting a first blood in the game five of Kot Champs, that is when you know he is feeling himself. Yeah, they did a great job there, like eliminating mid-map as well on top of that. Once he gets that kill, it sort of slows Steve's down from making that type of play. Then you had a Phoenix in bathroom the entire time for the rest of the game. Super difficult to deal with. All right, I, I do want to get a final thought here because, Clayster, you have always been known as the hype man on your team. The guy who gets the whole squad celebrating after your W. What do you think of Scrap's performance tonight? I love it, man. I, like I've said on, on the desk before, I love his energy. I love his attitude. I love the way he really backs up his smack talk. Not a lot of people can do that. Smack talk before the match, smack talk in the middle, and smack talk at the end. You got to do all three, you know? He's going to try and do it for four days, and I'm going to be cheering him on every step of the way. Allie, though, let's revisit the whole day, starting with the first matchup. It was Rocker taking on the Subliners, and Rocker, they jumped out to a 2-0 start here, putting the Subliners on notice. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, instead of Minnesota Rocker handing a reverse sweep, they get one-handed to them. I was very much impressed by the map one and two, by Attach yes. and Minnesota Rocker, because what's funny, heading into this series, Attach is actually typically a player that has a small dip when it comes to online versus his land. So to see him turn up the way that he did in that series was a very, very good change for the Minnesota Rocker. The problem though, New York Subliners, I mean, that Elisilo was master class. And then they are able to push that momentum into Hydro, one of their best maps. And personally, like I said earlier, I didn't really agree with letting that map number four through this series on the Minnesota Rocker side. But again, it's not the end of them. We'll see them tomorrow. 
Minnesota Rocker are going to be playing for top six, trying to stay alive in that elimination matchup. They will be taking on Boston, another squad that fell today against Optic. But let's keep it rolling here. Talking about this Atlanta squad that came in with the number one seed. You had to play Surge. You know you always play him tight. Well, Atlanta gets it done in four today, Nameless. Yeah, honestly, you know, in the beginning of that series, we had the back-to-back -back embassies. We were talking about it. Like, we kind of like that when you think of Seattle Surge. But it just came out completely lifeless. Uh, nobody was really doing much on the squad. They're able to get that Asilo control victory, but then we get to a Fortress Hardpoint where they had a 90-point lead and then got trapped and blew it in that game. So uh, Seattle Surge, that's been the story of these guys for the last couple of months. Now they get sent down to the loser's bracket. Do they have the confidence? Can they build momentum and make a run? I'm not sure if I believe. Atlanta phase with a 3-1. Go ahead. What do you think about the Seattle squad? I was just thinking to that point, I think it might be a composure problem for Seattle Surge. The fact that they were up in that game number four and they had such a large lead and the second Atlanta phase fought back into it, that's not the first time we've seen that happen. And even on that same exact map, Atlanta phase had mounted an insane comeback against the Seattle Surge. So I think if they take anything away from this series and heading into that elimination start tomorrow is not losing composure when a couple things don't go your way. Way. The game is not over until it is over. Slasher with Atlanta phase looking to make another world championship run with the number one seed, and they are chased by the number two seed, Optic Texas, breezing past Boston Breach, but Breach able to cause a little bit of ruckus along the way. They bring in Snoop A and they get four game series out of this best of five. What did you see in this showdown? Optic did what they needed to do against Boston. I told you they had to come out here and have a good performance against Boston with this new roster, CDL debut, Snoopy, and they really did that. It got a little shaky there. There were some moments where obviously Boston fought back, but Optic came here, they took care of business, they moved on. And to talk on the other side of things for Boston Breach, I think it went kind of as expected. Snoopy came in, he did his thing, and he did it pretty well, but he was just another high engagement player. He was just another really good slayer for the Boston Breach. I think there might be a severe lack of of leadership and comms when it comes to this team. And they've gone back to being a search and destroy team once again. We're talking about a Boston Breach team that when they were finding success, they were doing it in the response. Now with all of these changes, sure, you win that map number two, you can take that back with you, Beans going 13 and six. But when you're now losing controls in an 0-3 fashion, when that used to be your lockup game mode, there's only so much you can do with Boston Breach. I do want to credit Breach. They came in, they knew they were making an interesting pick by putting the Challengers player on the big stage during champs they were celebrating the one map win dens came by he held up a one since they're telling the team i'm proud of you boys it's your first match you're playing optic you played against all the fans on the planet tomorrow it can't be harder than it was today nameless yeah 100 percent uh i think you're happy with snoopy rising the occasion that that's not easy to do man you're playing in front of hundreds of thousands of viewers a packed arena going up against the biggest fan base in call of duty and he rose to the occasion he had some big plays early on in that map number one and then also if you go back and watch that search and story the man was sent out first in every single round clearly the plan was to bait him so we'll see if boston makes some adjustments in the lower bracket we'll take a look at the schedule because boston they're playing bright and early both elimination battles are going to be happening at the start of the day you can see 12 o'clock surge versus thieves 1 30 pacific will be breach versus rocker and when you look at the top of the screen clayster i want to get your thoughts we have four teams powering into that winner's bracket round two who was most impressive on day one these are some banger matches, first of all. I can't wait to see how these pan out, but if I had to pick two, one coming from each side, I gotta go phase in New York. Phase in New York, both teams playing tomorrow. You can catch them at these times. Lock it in and let your friends know because this is gonna be another epic day of the Call of Duty Championship Week in 2023. It's time to wrap up day one as we say goodbye to the in-house crowd here in Las Vegas. And I gotta get your final thoughts starting at the end this time, Nameless. What do you take away from the first day of champs? Man, people are coming to play. The championship caliber teams have been on point today. Teams have, make, have made a lot of improvements. But also, I had a great time today, man, with yes. you guys. It was really fun. Clay, awesome to have you up here, man, to get that insight. It's been vibey. Well, you're not retiring, right? No. Yeah, no, he's still no, playing. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to play. Right? No, still I'm trying, trying to, play. to convince him. Yeah, to we've been trying has all been trying. <laughs> Allie, final thoughts on day number one. Vegas, thank you so much for showing out as much as you did. And only day number one of four. We almost had it looked like a full packed house, and I can't wait for tomorrow. All right, Clay, your turn, buddy.
not only did the players show up today, but the crowd showed up as well. It was almost a full arena in here on the first day of Call of Duty Championships, and that is just so awesome to see. We felt the vibes back here. I can't wait to see what it sounds like this weekend. Peace, love, and positivity, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. That is day number one. We got three more all live coming at you from Vegas this weekend. I love you, 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 Landlords without the pot to call the kettles black. Hello, I know you feelin' mellow. You thinkin' life is gon' be cinematic as these cellos. But that's just a rumble for the build up like a bellow. If they gon' hit the floor, time to let go.